he doesn't have time for them, let them all attack at once. He's an assassin who's in the service of the Righteous Heavenly Alliance, Zhang Hajin. He's too cocky for someone who only killed a couple of their guys. They attacked him, shouted at him that they'd grant him wishes. Maybe he doesn't even remember how many he's killed. Just kills his pursuers over and over again. People were shouting that they have only one enemy. They can't let him get away. Zhang Hajin, it's time for you to die. Do they want him dead, he thought. When the freedom he'd finally found after thirty years was right in front of him, bastards, they're the ones who should die. He'll kill everyone if he has to in order to find freedom. They all looked at him and couldn't understand how this was possible. He was one of the ten strongest martial artists in the world. Chan is the best assassin in the world. They call him the king of assassins, but he's so tired. People were running and shouting that these were his last minutes of life. After him, he's already at his limit. Looking at all this, Chan thought that there was no end to them. He couldn't believe there was still so much left, and it was after so many battles that his blade had dulled. Did they hate the thought of his freedom so much? Chan asked them not to stand in his way or he would destroy them all. They disobeyed and fought him. Zhang Hajin knew that he could be the world's best assassin, the so-called king of assassins. But he's just an ordinary hunting dog of the head of the Celestial Alliance. A soulless and bloodthirsty demon. He killed following orders. What could he possibly know about life? Even the afterlife curses him. He has to save himself. All this time he's only existed for those Alns bastards. And now he was almost free, free of their damn chains. Shit, we gotta get ready, Chan. There is a secret place nearby where he can take elixirs and herbs to heal and restore his energy. Zhang will finally be free. Accidentally falling to the ground, he thought about how he would soon go insane from hunger, even before he started healing his wounds. Zhang couldn't believe that in seven days, he had only eaten a couple pieces of boiled beef. He's really hungry. Such a strong stealth technique that even he, the world's best assassin, didn't notice him being attacked. This martial art is so powerful that one can cut down an entire forest with just a sword aura. This man is undoubtedly the strongest warrior in the southern central plains. Chan understood why the Righteous Heavenly Alliance was after him, but he didn't expect the Steel Blood Fortress elite and the eight elite warriors of the Steel King to intervene. Did he really think that Murim, recognizing someone like him as one of the ten strongest martial artists, if he could kill a man exhausted from battles with hundreds of masters? Zhang Hajin said he'll chop him into pieces even though his strength is almost gone. When he finished with him, he sensed someone else was watching. And he said that maybe he would finish watching the show and come out. Suddenly, the demon queen comes out. She is still honored to still be a part of Chan's memories. After all, it's been six years. After following his footsteps, the servant told the first elder of the righteous heavenly alliance, Chong Iliaran, that these were all the corpses of the Steel Blood Fortress Masters. Who would have thought that he would go through their inevitable nets and kill so many Steel Blood Fortress Masters? The Elder ordered them to follow the Demon Queen's dead energy, that's where Zhang Hajin would be. Demon Queen Kwok Sojio. She uses rejuvenation techniques to maintain her beauty, but she's actually in her sixties. By the look on her face, you'd think she wouldn't hurt a fly. But in reality, She's a fucking maniac who can't go a night without taking someone's life. The best killers and troops of the Steel Blood Fortress came after him, so they also attracted this crazy woman. Will they use any method to catch him? Damn. He still has an ace up his sleeve, though. Quok said she was very disappointed. Pointing a sword at a lady he has a special relationship with. Chan yelled stop talking nonsense. The girl doubts he's strong enough for even one punch. Maybe she should give him an easier option. Zhang asked why she shouldn't check to see if he'd be enough. Why would he be afraid of a 60-year-old woman who can only scratch her tongue? She said if he called her grandma one more time, she'd yank his spine out, no matter how much he begged her for mercy. Chan realized that he wasn't scared, she had become more sensitive in the time they hadn't seen each other, and called her granny again. Kwok believes that the Righteous Celestial Alliance raised him to be their best assassin. No wonder the Steel Blood Fortress asked her to do so. Its core energy is disgustingly pure. It definitely belongs to the Great Nine Sects. It's so unbelievable. 
She knows that they were going to take him alive, but how did he manage to kill all those masters? Chan has undoubtedly mastered the skills of the nine sects and even the hidden mastery. Now it all makes sense to him, why she stopped and talked all that nonsense, though she usually prefers talk to bloodshed. She wanted to find out the martial arts of the nine sects and dirt on the righteous heavenly alliance. The girl said Zhang was really good. She thought he was a dumb thug who could only wring necks, but as it turned out, he had brains. But she, the demon queen, doesn't need the secrets of the steel blood fortress at all. It seems like Zhang has figured her out. She really doesn't care about the strength of the steel bloodline or the righteous heavenly alliance. She only wants to obtain the mastery of the nine sects. If Chan tells her everything, she'll let him live. Why are there so many treacherous creatures in the Great Lakes? It's not good for him. He's on the verge of death. Kwok asked, was it all about the blood parasite? Zhang Hajin wondered what she was even talking about. Such an end awaits all those who betray the righteous heavenly alliance. The bloody parasite in his body does not let him forget about himself and executes him in case of betrayal. He saved his life, and he denied his favor. His life and death are in the hands of the ruler of the righteous heavenly alliance. Zhang Hajin, can never betray the righteous heavenly alliance. Once Kwok gets rid of him, all the monsters linking him to the alliance will collapse. All he has to do is reveal the technique to her. She studied the demonic arts of the god of death. So she knows about poisons and toxins. Quack can get rid of the parasite in his body with her demonic powers. The girl can give him freedom, he just needs to teach her the art of the nine sects. With a smile on her face, Chan asked, did she think the only reason he was being pursued by the alliance was because he had escaped from them? Chan is one of the ten strongest martial artists. He learned how to get rid of the blood parasite years ago, but he needed to reach the highest level to break through the inevitable nets, and training took quite some time. He thought he was close. Enough of this nonsense. Zhang doesn't believe she'll let him live if he teaches her a skill. Those bastards took thirty years of his life. He won't let some old woman fool him again. If she decided to run away now, at least she could save her worthless life. She clearly hadn't expected to hear such words from him. How can he have the nerve to say that when he can barely stand on his own two feet? She's not as worthless as he is. Quok never let those who insulted her live. It's not like he's going to give her mastery, that's what her eyes tell her. The only thing he can give her is pain. Die, you fucking old woman. Then you die too, you useless asshole. During the fight, Quok pierced Chan's arm with her large nails. His strength was running out. Suddenly, the first elder appeared. He didn't rush towards them to protect Zhang Hajin. He just wanted revenge. They ruthlessly cut off all his limbs. Each of them had his own reason for revenge, which they carried out. Looking at Chan with her scary eyes, she said that he looked prettier without his limbs. But he should have his head torn off too, so that he would never be able to speak again. Finally, and is this cheesy moment the last thing he'll see? After all, Chan just wanted to live an ordinary life. Like he was just an ordinary man and an ordinary person. If only he had a second chance. The main sanctuary of the heavenly demon divine cult. Maybe there's some small chance. The divine teachings are undeniable. All demons will fall before him. Greetings to the fourth young master of the divine cult. The man came with the news. The third young gentleman finally showed a pulse. Soryang will die tonight. The fourth master said things are going better than he expected. He said yes, he had killed everyone on the other side. Then we should rest, but not for long. The leader said they should remain undetected. What's that on his arm? Chan asked his comrade friend. Is that a bird figurine? Did he carve it himself? Looking at Hajin, the boy asked if he was tired of living like this. He's gonna get out of here, no matter what it takes. He was going to spend the rest of his life as a free bird. He was going to go to a village where he could breathe in the scent of fresh grass instead of the rotting smell of blood. Chan wants to go with him too, to this village with fresh grass. The guy answered him that he can't, even if he doesn't even think about it. Suddenly the boy collapsed in front of Hajin. He looked at the lying bloody body of his friend. A man saved his life, 
and he withdrew his favor in an attempt to escape. This is the end that awaits all who betray the righteous celestial alliance. A bloody parasite will judge your treachery, we must tear his head off too. So he can never speak again. Before his eyes, there was the old woman's horrible face. When he woke up, he thought it was just a dream. But he had just been beheaded by a crazy old woman, hadn't he? What is this place where he is, anyway? This room looks very expensive. He sensed something. Anhua entered the room with the young master. When she looked towards the bed, she saw that the gentleman was not there. He asked does she know what will happen if she makes a sound? Who is she? Isn't she from the Fortress of Steel Blood by any chance? The girl told the young master that it was her, his servant Anhua. And why is he behaving like that? Is there something wrong with him? What young master? Zhang asked me to stop this nonsense and tell him the truth. Brought it in, the girl was very surprised. She said that he had been here for a long time. The master had been unconscious for the past six months, as he had been badly affected by the qi blockage, and had only woken up two nights ago. What the hell is going on? How could he lose consciousness, he's dead. Threatening the maid, he asked her to stop fooling him and tell him the truth. The girl replied that it was true, she had brought him some food so he could eat when he woke up. Seeing himself in the mirror, he asked who the son of a bitch was? What's that? What was even going on, this was clearly not a dream. But what was this, reincarnation, or his past life? How could this even happen? How could such a place exist in Murima? Who are all these people? When the man saw him, he knelt down on his knee and said that the divine teachings were undeniable. All the demons fell at his feet. He congratulations on your recovery, third young master. If it's a divine cult in Murima, is it a demon cult? What's going on, what happened to it? The supreme head of the court of elders of the heavenly demon divine cult Mutum salutes the demon lord. The demon lord asked the supreme head of the court of elders what brought him here today. He replied that he had a report. The third young master regained consciousness. However, due to the exhaustion of his body, he had lost all his strength. The man asked the demon lord what he was going to do next with the third young master. The lord ordered, until the closing ceremony comes in three months, let him not come to him with reports. The supreme head purely hopes that the demon lord will fulfill the great will. Heavenly demon divine cult so-called thousand-year demonic cult, the oldest and most ruthless demonic power of this generation. It was created several thousand years ago by Master Murima. In terms of combat power, they are the strongest in that. All of Murim would be alarmed by the mere fact of this cult's existence, for it is a symbol of chaos. In terms of numbers, the Righteous Heaven Alliance and Steel Blood Fortress surpass them. The world dubbed the Righteous Heavens, the remaining blood, and the heavenly demon as the mighty triad. Among them, the heavenly demon had more power than war and pandemonium. Such was the most ruthless demonic power. So how did he end up here? Did he really get a second life? But why, why is this a demonic cult? No, he needs to calm down. He needs to understand the situation and think about his next move. He thinks the hidden technique is still too much. The strongest of the seven disciples of the demon cult, the third young master woke up. The carnage will begin again. Be careful. Don't get carried away or you'll get killed. It's a miracle to wake up six months after blocking the chi, the man heard that he had lost all his martial skill. If there's still some skill left, then he's really a monstrous demon as they call him. Since that monstrous demon has awakened, it will squeeze all the juices out of some people. We must be careful not to get on the young master's nerves. The man thought of what a scoundrel he was. An asshole. A monstrous demon, how did he live? Whatever it is, he's sure it's a demon cult. To escape from here, you need a detailed plan. The hidden technique had been given too much trouble last night, even though he'd only used it for an hour. Honestly, it's great to be alive. But his body's like an eighty-year-old man's. First, we have to rebuild it. Okay, let's see. He knew it, a total of seven extraordinary meridians are tangled. He'll fix that little rotten clog. Find amidst the chaos the truth that burns in the void and bursts through the channels of life. Parade the turbidity with thought, 
and the world will reward you. The temperature in the room rose. And the air became very humid. With limitless technique and he will expel the darkened energy from his body. In his past life, using some martial arts from the nine sects, he had refined his own boundless technique. He had no status, so this technique became his own salvation, which helped him a lot. Is that his limit? Well, at least one small goal accomplished. By the way, it's so quiet, it's kind of confusing. It's been quite some time since he woke up. No one but the healer has come to see him. The healer said he recovers pretty quickly. He should take care of himself until they visit him again. Just that young girl, trembling with fear. Young master, here are your medicines. That bastard was called a monstrous demon, so he sure was a scumbag with a mean temper. Until this place is sorted out, he can't act rashly, Zhang Hajin. Three months later. It's been three months since he ate it and still nothing happened? The man said that more than that, he's only recovering faster. Didn't he say that the more tracked a skill was, the more likely it would be to die from it? Yes, he did say that, but it's weird. Sarian, he always exceeds his expectations. The fourth young master of the heavenly demon Hong Iman divine cult. What do they do now? The man asked when Rin is coming. He thinks she'll be outside the main temple at noon. Hong asked, has it been six months since she returned? The man replied that's right. Then something interesting is about to happen. Let her continue to observe and report. Well, that's better. For the past three months, he had been doing everything he could to bring that horrible body back to normal. Thanks to that, the remnants of the darkened and demonic energy were gone. A maid came to the young gentleman and told him that here was his medicine. Lifting the bowl, the young lord saw the bloody parasite. In fear, he threw it away and it shattered. Do you really think you can escape from the righteous heavenly alliance? Arrogant fool. I made you the world's best assassin and you betrayed me. Even if you die, you still can't escape from the alliance. Bloody vermin again? The young master woke up to someone calling him. Young master, are you all right? Anhua asked. When he looked into the bowl, it was empty, a hallucination. The new life he had always dreamed of. He didn't know if he could be free. The guy overheard a conversation from behind the door, someone asking if he was there or not. The maid said, yes, he's there, but he's not. That demonic cult bastard. He heard Anva's words from outside the door about what she should tell the young master. A girl came through the door saying that it had been a long time. Who she was, he couldn't remember her. The girl said something about him looking better than she thought. What? Think of a way out of this situation, Zhang Hajin. She asked, would he leave her standing like that? She'd have a cup of tea. At times like this, first, run. Saying he had somewhere urgent to be, the third young gentleman just took off and ran. On his way out, he was met by two tall men who would not let him pass. As it turned out, it was the girl's order. She said they're going to have a serious conversation with the third young gentleman. She doesn't know how long it will take, so don't let anyone in here. The girl told him to sit down. Don't they have something to discuss? Zhang replied that he didn't wipe his sweat while he was recovering his body. He asked him to please wait until he changed his clothes. Okay, she'll wait. But it would be nice if he didn't have any other plans. Even just by looking at her, he knew she was insane. He has no choice. He asked Anva to follow him. He asks who she is. The guy says he had a headache after he woke up, so he thinks there's a memory lapse. Look at the young gentleman, the girl asked is he going to die. He thought why would he die? He hasn't been awake long. Her name is Hungayan. She is a demon, affiliated with and working for the Religious Inner Enlightenment Center. She is the daughter of the Joxa family of the demon cult. She is strong enough to be called the most talented disciple, is excellent at her job, and is also a heroine recognized by the head of the demonic cult. She's also the younger sister of the fourth young master. Zhang asked Anhua why the girl had come to see him, what was their relationship? The maid replied that she didn't know such details. But, they had met a lot during the month, so they have some kind of special relationship. Okay, 
he thanked the girl for telling him and asked if she was okay. Her face was very swollen, so the master told her to go rest. Master? Is he really crazy? Back to the girl, he said he wasn't thinking and was rude. She said it was okay. He asked her what brought her here. The girl couldn't understand why he was so calm. So different from himself in the past. It was as if he had lost the sparkle in his eyes. So it was true that he had lost his martial prowess after coming out of the Chi Lock. Hung Gaian said there's no need to hide things from each other and she knows it well, so it's better to get straight to the point. Showing two papers in her hands, she said, here's the contract with their stamps on it. He remembers, right? If one of them breaches the terms of the contract, or a situation arises where they have to cancel it, the penalty will be tripled. She has invested almost 1,000 nannies in this miracle cure. On top of that, the sum of other things is just over 2,000, but she will deduct these little things, for they are close. For young gentleman's little sister supported him with money and medication? What the hell was this brat thinking? A total of 6,000 non. She asked to be given the money right away. If that is not possible, let him sign a contract that says when he will pay the full amount. Using the fact that Saryen survived the Chi Lock, she made herself look like a victim, cancelled the contract, and now wants her money back. He wanted to build a reputation, and afterward increase his fortune, but is she going to ignore the fact that he was bedridden? This girl does bad things you shouldn't do. Well, okay. He can pay her that much. What? Just like that? The guy asked Anva to prepare brushes, paper and ink. All right, young master, he doesn't care if it's the girl doing something bad, it has nothing to do with him. He doesn't care if it's the girl doing something bad, it's none of his business. As the third young master, he is too careless in drawing up the contract. He wasn't smart before, but isn't it too thoughtless? The girl said there was something else. If he couldn't pay, he'd have to come running at her beck and call like a faithful dog. Is she going to treat him like a dog? The girl is starting to get on his nerves. Suryong asked if that's all. Hung Yiren said that the contract will be cancelled when she receives the full amount. Until then, they should respect each other, right? You want him to respect her by giving such a pact? What? Master asked Anhua to bring the commander of the royal guard. The girl was surprised. Why is he calling the commander? As he approached, the commander began to say to the feminine teachings are undeniable. He is in front of him. Greeting the third young gentleman, he asked how he could be of service. The guy asked me to get the wagon ready. He had somewhere to be. The man replied he knows this is not the place to talk, but now his body is. Syrian says he's going to the demon lord. Prepare the carriage and notify the lord's palace. Tell him the third apprentice wishes to see his master. The commander said he understood. He'll send a message to the demon lord's palace. He'll prepare the wagon as soon as he gets permission. The third young master. What's she doing? He should fight back too. The man offered to see if the demon lord would recognize this contract as fair. Third young lord, is he saying that they should both die now? What does he want the Lord to say? The gentleman asked if there was a problem. She said that if he found out that they had made a pact, he would get one too. If he finds out, Dominus will not go unpunished. And he could be banished since he's lost his fighting prowess. But that's what will happen to him. Everyone in this world knows her family surprisingly, this excuse will not work in every case. For him, the worst outcome is expulsion, and no one will release her from her imprisonment. For his daughter's poor upbringing, Jox's family, of course, will be deprived of everything. He said he'd better go. It was time for a walk. The girl asked him to wait and asked him if he wanted to be the head. A head with a body like that? Ridiculous. Coming here knowing he doesn't stand a chance. Well, I'll see you at the demon lord's palace. Hung Yiren asked what she should do. The guy asked what was she talking about. What should she do to stop him from going to the demon lord? He replied that she needed to break that contract, with her own hands. Hajin, aren't you tired of killing? I'm going to get out of here, whatever it takes. 
I'm going to go to the country where I can breathe in the scent of fresh grass instead of that musky smell of blood. Is this everything? Yes. We've searched every corner, but we haven't found a bug. They betrayed the alliance, committed treason. There must be others, search the neighborhood. Wait, listen to me. They told us to eliminate those who betrayed the alliance. They said they were traitors. I really didn't know. Is killing people just a job for you? Taking other people's lives? Spilling blood every day? Zhang Hajin, do you know anything about life? There's no way I know anything. I'll curse you even from beyond the grave. Your life will be the death of those you killed. The commander knelt down and congratulated the demon lord for completing the great work. He asked the commander, the man said the third man asked to see him. The man said that's right. He just sent a wagon to the third young master's house. So he will arrive at the palace soon. Turning to the first royal guard, he ordered him to escort him to the demonic justice pavilion. The guard answered well, my lord, is it still winter? He still can't get used to this chaotic aura checking his pulse. It seems that in the past few days, the damaged blood vessels had recovered even more. And not just his blood vessels. Although he had been taking herbs and undergoing acupuncture, his ability to recover was already quite strong. Apologizing, the healer said that he was just quite surprised at his regenerative ability as well. The healer told the third master that he would no longer need acupuncture. Instead, he would take nutritious food and supreme healing potions to regain his strength. The master said he would like to know something. The healer replied that he could ask. What is a supreme healing potion? He had never heard of such a thing. The man replied that it was a decoction of five herbs that help restore energy. The man replied that it was a decoction of five herbs that help restore energy. It helps replenish energy. Whatever it's called, it's medicine. And if it did have healing properties, he'd get better a lot faster. Katya said she'd be back in two days, and to hope for his speedy recovery. Well, Mr. believes there may be something wrong with his feeling. What a horrible neighborhood. A demon lord. Apparently, he's finally going to meet him. The lord wonders what kind of man he is. There is no one in all of Kanko Murim who is not interested in the lord. It's obvious, for he may be the strongest man on this earth. Although he never showed his full power, he was always considered one of the most powerful people in the world. Their meeting could be dangerous for the lord. He doesn't know much about the demonic cult. Maybe you should have been more careful. He just couldn't stand it. To be reborn just to become someone's dog. If that hung Yirin, the daughter of the Joxa family or whatever she was, hadn't shoved that absurd contract in his face. A maid entered the room, and told the young master that they had been contacted by the demon lord's palace. The carriage is ready, so we need to prepare him for the upcoming meeting. Since things had turned out that way, he figured he could face him, couldn't he? Get out of the carriage, the gentleman was immediately approached by a clerk and said that the demon lord invites him to the demon justice pavilion, follow him. Looking at the long staircase leading somewhere, the lord thought, what the hell is this demonic justice pavilion? It really is the center of a demonic cult. Lots of guards. Reminiscent of the time when he fell into the inevitable net of the righteous heavenly alliance and steel blood fortress. High-ranking masters are mentored throughout the area. This place is like he's fallen into a dragon's pool or a tiger's den. One mistake and he's dead. The man said they're on sight, weren't they talking about the demonic justice pavilion? No, you can't show fear. You have to act like he knows everything. The question of survival in a demonic cult depends on his every move. The man mentally told himself to pull himself together, after all, he was going to see the demon lord. Looking around, he thought it was winter, but spring is blooming. Is he asleep? It can't be. Then it's an illusion, isn't it? Well, there's no other explanation, because it's cold outside. He wanted to leave Kanho and live in a place with lots and lots of greenery. It's definitely his dream place, but, what a believable technique. Here, he sharply heard a stern over here. He was frightened, for a moment ago this pavilion had not been there. There's someone there, his legs are walking on their own. It's like he's under a spell. 
Step 1, Life, Step 2, Death. Is this how the third one imagined the pavilion of demonic justice? His killer king instincts tell him it's dangerous here. But he can't back down now. If he wants to escape the demonic cult and start a new life, he must face the demon lord. Will he finally meet the demon god? The great heavenly demon. Demon Lord Li Chong San. The man asked if the third young gentleman had entered? He was told yes. Was there something bothering him? He replied that in the entire reign of the Lord, there had only been two occasions when an outsider had entered the demonic justice pavilion. It first happened about twenty-five years ago when the overlord took on his first disciple. Is he talking about his first disciple? Is he talking about the first young master? He replied that no, the first young master became a ward exactly twenty years ago. Is he saying that there was another ward before the first young master? That's right, the unknown disciple that loomed in the shadows died here in this pavilion. His skin was torn to shreds. As if wild beasts had torn him to shreds, so, the demon lord. He said that if the overlord wanted to kill him, he wouldn't have brought him here. Then who was the second? The general strategist. The man with absolute power who oversaw both small and large matters. The only one who had risen so high because of his, not martial arts. He was the second who entered the demonic justice pavilion. Yes, he came out with his head held high. Today, the pavilion opened its gates for the third time. I wonder if the third young gentleman will make it out alive. The divine teachings are undeniable. All demons will fall at your feet. Saryen saluted the demon lord. The lord ordered him to get up. So this is the demon lord, Li Zhong San. Yeah, he doesn't look like the grand demon master and lord of everything. As long as he doesn't emit any qi, it's like saying that all those statements are false. He can feel all of his proud greatness. He is the kind of person who has no reason to be locked up, being one of the strongest masters. He is the world's most powerful god of martial arts. He's so powerful, they say he's half immortal and lives in a whole other dimension. But why hasn't he even tried to become a tyrant? Holding out a bowl of alcohol to him, the overlord ordered him to take it. He asked Saryen what he wanted, well, you see. Why the hell is he procrastinating? He was one of the ten strongest masters himself. Is he seriously just going to stand there like he's not mine? The overlord asked if he wanted to keep the cult. Somebody said yes. Wait, did it honestly work? The lord ordered him to pour more alcohol. The guy couldn't understand his emotions. He can't even guess what he's thinking. The lord said the lord is very vague. Says he wants to get out for a while or cut all ties with the cult, he doesn't like being his student. The guy said no, that's not what he meant. Or has he already given up because his body's so exhausted? Is this the limit of his abilities? What a disappointment. Damn, he's in trouble. The guy said he's not trying to break away from the cult completely. It hasn't been long since he recovered. Plus, he's lost all his skills. If that's the case, I gotta say something. He really wants to get back in shape, but it's not as easy as he thought. So he thought it would be better if he could get some fresh air. That's what he wanted to ask him today. Yes, that's right, it is. Great, that's pretty believable. Seeing that the overlord was angry, he thought he had to make an excuse. I mean, what he's trying to say is, that he requested a meeting with him just to get permission to go out? Shit. He was too careless. If you think about it, it's really funny. The reason he wanted to see the lord of everything, the heavenly demon divine cult lord was only because he needed permission to go out? This was not the time to ponder something else. Zhang Hajin, hurry up and think of an answer. The guy said he wanted to see him because it's been a while. Doesn't seem like a bad reaction. The guy said that also, although his body is in such a state, he, as a disciple, has his duty. He would not be able to pay for a hundredth of his kindness to him, he had no way to thank the Lord, so he felt. He tries to put on a show and evoke emotion from the Lord. The cup in the Lord's hands crumbled like ashes. The duties of an apprentice? If he knew of the duty, 
he would not appear before him in such a body. Or had the overlord been underestimating him all this time? In a body like this, maybe? The demon god's eyes, does he really know it's not Saryen in this body? It was as if the demon lord was looking straight into his soul. What excuse can I make this time? He wasn't caught. The guy was slightly upset by his words, although the disciple who had just recovered from the chi blockage had come to pay his respects, and he says the guy doesn't know about his duty? Is he the weird one? What's he missing? The Lord said he'd send someone within three days. Until then, he can go. So what about his request? Is he allowed to go out or not? Is he allowed to do what he wants to do? Just tell me how hard it is. Looking at everything around, the overlord said the demonic justice pavilion with clear skies and green meadows, it had been a long time since he had seen such a thing. Pouring alcohol into the cup, the lord said it was his reward for his hard work. The servant replied that he was honored. He asked what was going on with the third. He said he was recovering at home. That's it? Yeah, that's it. He seems pretty good. Ten years ago, the overlord took him in thinking he was a dragon. He was disappointed to discover it was nothing but a poisonous snake. But when he looked at him again today, he held a magic pearl in his mouth. As he walked further away from evil, he also knew death. In the demonic justice pavilion, evil is judged. The judged object is presented by the demon lord, and the decision is made by the lord and education. The pavilion embodies the hearts of those who enter, and exposes them as well as the subconscious. What if the object I liked was a demon lord? At that moment, as the overlord wills, the demonic formations of the pavilion will attack. Barely do they harbor a desire to kill, will be destroyed in such a torturous way. The technique of education can reveal true intentions. It belongs to the highest level that only a demon lord can control. The chairman asked about the lonely bamboo grove being well taken care of? The man said yes, a representative of the elders' court comes every other day. On average there are up to five victims there per month, but luckily there have been no deaths in the last four months. The ruler said to order the elders to recall their man for a while. He would send the third to the grove, a lonely bamboo grove? The governor said so, the perfect place to get some fresh air. The demon lord is a pervert. He just wanted to get out. Why did he shove him in the middle of nowhere? What had he done wrong to send him alone to such an evil place? Standing in the middle of that very grove, he shouted out Demon Lord, you asshole. From behind someone apologized for the impertinence, and told the young gentleman that these were very dangerous statements. The man repeated that any foul or rude language about the Demon Lord was considered a serious offense, followed by immediate death penalty. No exceptions, even for young lords and ladies. The young master said you should have listened more carefully. He didn't defile the demon lord. Geez, is he some kind of imperial person or something? Why can't he say mean things behind his back? Well, he believes to these gloomy and sullen idiots of the demonic cult he would be above the emperor. Instead, they think he's the real god. As he was saying, the guy asked is this elder from here? He said yes. That's right, his servant, Ma Dongpil, the third head of the heavenly demon divine cult's court of elders. He is honored to serve as the Lord's personal guard. He doesn't care about his honor or anything, he just wants him off his back. The elder says he swears to devote himself to service and will protect the third young master at the cost of his own life. Beautiful view, bottom line, result one. He can't get out of here. No matter how hard he tries, he can't leave this place. He was screaming that he hated them, the idiots of the demonic cult. He just wanted out, did they need to exile him to this place so badly? Okay, not that it was easy to begin with, but he wouldn't waste any more time with useless thoughts. Why did he want to leave the demonic cult in the first place? It was all because he had a bad feeling when he realized that he had been reborn as the third young master of the heavenly demon divine cult. At some point he will have to leave this place. But right now that is impossible. Then for now, the reality is that he has no choice but to be the third young master, Saryen. But to survive in this body, he'll need strength. He'll have to get stronger. Otherwise, he won't make it. The heavenly demon divine cult thoroughly adheres to the ideology of survival of the fittest, 
more than any other groups in Murim. This is not a place where he can quietly wait to be destroyed and thrown out. Eventually, one will have to take the path of martial arts, and whether it brings him life or death, he will no longer resort to petty tricks. He will use force and walk out with his head held high. At that moment, a servant came out from behind a tree and scared the young gentleman. He said his food was ready. He could follow him. The young gentleman began to resent him. He told him to stay out of the way. But they've been here for two days. He hasn't even had a sip of water, let alone food. The servant is just worried about his health. It's been two days already asked Mr. But he doesn't have to scare him every time, stop doing that. To begin, he will use limitless technique and put body and soul in order. The movement of qi in boundless technique is different from ordinary qi. A third level of strength cultivation, boundless technique could be categorized into five levels. In his past life as an assassin king, he had reached the peak of the fourth level of strength. In boundless technique, the unity of martial arts and body is far more important than enlightenment. But this weakened body, even with qi blocking, is at the peak of the third level of strength and is on the verge of going to the fourth level. Could it be that this child, Syrian, is a genius? Moreover the purification technique came into effect with itself. This technique purifies the air by absorbing the turbid qi energy nearby with the body. The air is purified and the absorbed turbid qi becomes part of the internalized power with the overwhelming ability of the boundless technique. When the air nearby becomes clean, the effect of assimilation increases, which speeds up its growth. At this rate, he'll be able to return to his former strength much faster than he thought. Well, then, let's go to the fourth level of strength. The body was completely healed. The torn blood pathways and vital organs have become much stronger than they should be at his age. This made life in the bamboo grove much easier than expected. Even the hair became darker. It is said that hair loses color when qi is blocked. First of all, he ate well, since Donpil is an excellent cook. Also, he slept very well. Also, he can use the abilities from his past life as an assassin again. When he was an assassin king, he gained the ability of hypersensitivity. This ability manifested with itself due to frequent encounters with death, as well as the experience from surviving being an assassin. And the martial art that enhances supersensitivity is the heavenly net six force technique. First form omniscient eye. This martial art greatly enhances the five senses to the limit, surpassing any beast. He could clearly feel the terrain without even turning his head. He hated himself for having adapted so well to such a place. The monsters will become more active as the sun goes down. The servants offered to go back to their shelter. He had finally built up a foundation for normal martial arts practice. If he corralled the experience and knowledge he gained as an assassin king into this certain body, he could become strong again in no time. Great, thanks to boundless technique, he was able to recover to some extent. He decided to see if he could fly. Two of his skills had returned. The boundless body recovery technique and the heavenly net six force sense sharpening technique. All that was left was the dark shadow chi, obtained by combining the selected arcane skills of the ten great schools. These three skills became the core martial arts that made him a legend, the king of assassins Chan Hajin. He'll be stronger again in no time. Wait. But, is he allowed to study the dark shadows? It's the heavenly demon divine cult. And he's the third young master Syrian, not Zhang Hajin. He's sure there was some demonic art he used to study, but which one? When the third young master returned, he decided to ask Donpil a question. He replied that the gentleman could ask and would be only too happy to help. The young master asked among him and his brothers is there anyone who has not studied demonic arts? or anyone who has studied the non-demonic arts. Donpil said he didn't understand the question and apologized. Is that really unimaginable? Like he said, what would happen if he did not study the demonic arts? The man replied I wonder if that is possible, but if the young gentleman and us don't study them, he dared to say that the demon lord would be quite displeased. The master ordered Dalpil to go to the library and use his powers. In order to bring all the secret texts about demonic arts, anything that can take. Secret texts about the demonic arts? Is that what the young master asked for? 
Doppel told Master that's exactly what it is. The third young gentleman? He probably already knows everything, so why? Maybe he's trying to push himself in some way with their help, apologizing in advance to the master, for such a disrespectful question, but as a guardian, called to protect the target, he decided to dare to ask it, despite the familiarity. Did the third young master lose his memory after blocking the chi? Master doesn't know, could he really have forgotten everything? The third young master was talented from the beginning, but greedy and arrogant. A real tyrant who didn't show the slightest bit of consideration to his subordinates. But after he was restored, he became a different person. He is very different from his old self. His actions and words, sometimes he even seems puzzled. Even his servant said he's changed. He also managed to come out alive from the demonic justice pavilion after the demon lord trial. And a report from Ma Dongpil. The master said he understood why the head of the third squad asked such a question. But don't let him worry so much. The man he serves now is not easy, he is one of the seven candidates, he could be the next successor of the demonic cult. Who knows if he's joking or if he's really lost his memory. But don't let him ask any more questions. That's one of the many reasons why it's so hard to protect the heirs. That's why the master chose him. Handing Donpil the key, the master said that as he knows, the loan time is three days. Let him mix them with others and take three to four secret texts. One more thing, the master asked if he had explained to the young master the essence of the lone bamboo grove. He replied that he hadn't yet, he was going to do it today. He knows how dangerous it is out there, doesn't he? He's sure Dong Pai will be fine but make sure he tells him everything as soon as possible. This is his task of the utmost importance. I would like to know what the overlord saw in the third young master to send him to the bamboo grove, lone bamboo grove. A demonic forest that existed even before the heavenly demon divine cult settled on hundreds of thousands of mountains. A killer who took the lives of countless demonic people in 1000 years. When there was only the first all-powerful heavenly demon, and the divine cult didn't have much power, he helped the cult become one of the greatest I moment schools. To those who are destined, he gives a gift, and others are dragged into death pits. This was the second time the demon lord had tested the third young master. He had received a positive evaluation at the demon justice pavilion. Curious what will happen in the bamboo grove? 1, 2, 3, 4, 17. Why did he bring him so many secret texts? Dalpal said it's not very much. He only took the best ones, so it's pretty small. Does he really have to master the demonic arts now? No, if he views the demonic arts as inferior and divine, he will not see their true nature. He must look at them without prejudice. The man told the young gentleman that he had something to tell him. The gentleman replied what is good. Three texts out of seventeen will have to be returned in three days. In three days, why? Because those three, from the secret texts of the ten greatest demonic arts of their school. As he already knows, they are only available to the first, second, and third young masters. The ten greatest demonic arts belong to the highest level in the heavenly demon divine cult. If you successfully learn even one, you can look down on the world for how brilliant it is. Everyone in the divine cult knows about them, so if he doesn't remember even that, the master asked why he was looking at him like that? Asking for forgiveness, he said he was rude to see his new side, but he doesn't really remember any of these texts. Turning to Dongpil, the master said that he knew that the master had completely lost all his skill after awakening from the qi blockage. His heart and mind are not the same as before. And strictly speaking, they were exiled to this lonely bamboo grove. He needs to try something, he's desperate. He needs to learn again all the arts he has forgotten. So he asked for help, right now he's his only hope. He needs to stretch, so if at dawn he could grab some weapons from the cult. What the? Why is he crying? He said he would support the young master with his life. What's the matter with him? Let him stop, he's burdening him. In about ten days they'll be more active. It doesn't look like they're moving and the barrier is growing, so I'm sure they'll be fine. This is the safest place in the bamboo grove. The young gentleman concentrated on reading the secret texts. 
he must make sure nothing would disturb his peace. We must get the weapons the young master asked for as soon as possible. We must not let our guard down, no matter what. Chong Hajin's dark shadow chi was not widespread, but was one of the greatest Murim techniques. It wasn't as powerful as the secret techniques of the ten greatest schools. But its depth and purity were considered the best in those times. The demonic arts were different from the rest. They favored destruction, concentrated on results rather than stability, on attack rather than defense, put true power before opportunity. It's all very similar to the methods of the assassins, the ten greatest demonic arts. They are certainly incredible. But in his current state, he wouldn't be able to study them all. What can he do to improve Chi Dark Shadows with these arts? True demonic art? He thinks it might work. True demonic art is one of the major demonic arts. Ranks right up there with the art of destruction, which is the basis for some of the ten greatest demonic arts. It is also more advanced than some of the ten greatest arts. When it comes to the ability of demonic chi to adapt, it can be said to be one of the sources of demonic cult techniques. Limitless technique best to apply when the head is full of thoughts. Is Dongpil back? Are they watching him now? We have to be careful. Even though he seems naive, he hasn't completely let his guard down on him yet. That's enough for today. Hearing a rustle, the young lord noticed some sort of creature attacking him from behind. What the hell, it could have been dangerous. What, that thing broke through the wall, how did it do that? Six legs, wings the size of a man, and three heads. What the hell is that? The giant chicken looks like a mutant of great King Yen Luo. Seriously, he just doesn't have the words to describe this place anymore. Why is she so fast? Looking at the basket of weapons, Dompil thought this weapon should be enough, right? The third young master is used to using swords, and as a swordsman he is good enough to create his own style. Who knows, maybe he'll remember everything once he picks up a weapon. Though judging by how violent he was, I'm not sure if it's in his best interest to get his memory back. But that's not how it's going to turn out, is it? No, you don't have to think about it. He's just guarding three young masters. You can't get emotional. Dongpil smelled a strong odor of blood. Young master. To what rooster do they even use the art of sound? It's an unusual mutant, it's gonna be tough. Shit. If only it had a weapon. What can we use instead? Does he think he can get it with the same attack? Taking a piece of sharp bamboo, he jumped on the chicken and tried to kill it with it. Hell, not yet. That hurts, you brainless chicken. Now he realizes he can't punch through her feathers with just brute force, can he? He never thought he'd use it on an animal. But he thinks he has no choice. I'll have to give it a try. Technique of the Heavenly Network of Six Forces Second Form Supervision the second form of the technique of the heavenly network of six forces, supervision allows you to accelerate the thought process with the help of chi. Which, in turn, visually slows down everything around you. The young master found the chicken's weak spot. It turned out to be the heart, which was almost freely available. Taking a sharp stick of bamboo, he aimed and stabbed it straight into the heart. At this moment, Donpo returned, the smell of blood he smelled was from this very chicken. Running up to the young gentleman, he asked if he was all right. The guy asked him not to make a fuss. Azure Lotus? Is that the name of this chicken? Looking at the young lord, Donpo said that the wounds should be treated first. The lord replied that it was not his blood. Aside from a couple of scratches, the young master was not seriously injured. The Azure Lotus is as dangerous as a leopard. Donpil asked the gentleman, did he defeat him himself? The lad replied, does he see anyone else here but him? The master asked if they had a large cauldron. The man said of course, but why would he need it? He said to pour water in it and put bamboo shoots in it, let it simmer. He's in charge of dinner tonight. Also, he said he was waiting for an explanation. How does the guy know about this bird? What kind of place is Bamboo Grove and all that? The lone Bamboo Grove existed even before the heavenly demon divine cult. It is a natural demonic forest of the deepest spiritual chi even compared to any known mountains. There is something special about this forest. 
Deep spiritual qi does not spread throughout the entire area, but cycles only within the bamboo forest. Therefore, as time passes, its concentration only becomes stronger. Because of this, both the qi of the tree and the earth are strengthened, making bamboo trees especially thick and strong. But they seem to have a short life cycle, don't they? This bamboo grows much faster than normal. That's how the forest works, and some of the trees here have strange powers. Do they have medicinal properties or something? To be more precise, they would be both poison and medicine. Their qi is so deep that they must be processed dozens of times before being used on the human body. More than half of the demonic cult's potions are made from the bamboo trees of a lone bamboo grove. Does that mean it's possible to mass produce the drug? Ask the gentleman. The man said it was impossible. Most trees that have any healing properties at all grow in the thick of the forest. The problem is the spiritual monsters and creatures that live there. Is he talking about things like this? Donpil said exactly what it was. The azure lotus is the weakest of them all. Weak? Is he saying there are stronger ones? Azure lotus, the weakest species in the forest. Moreover, some of the mid-level ghostly creatures are just as strong as the top-level masters. They stop in the forest twice a year to obtain sacred bamboo along with the guards and other high-ranking ones from the top. The thickest lonely bamboo grove is dangerous even for them. The city bamboo garden is considered the safest place. He didn't even think that Azure Lotus would be roaming around here. Apologized for not being able to protect the Lord because of his insolence. Built a fence around this garden, but also erected octagonal walls on the outside. Being his protector, he's done more than enough, so don't let him worry. The master said that's enough, let him take a plate first. Perfectly cooked. Who would have thought he could cook and eat that rooster? Looking at the man, the gentleman asked, doesn't he eat this? Even though he looks like this, he must have a weak stomach, right? It might not compare to bamboo shoots, but it's still healthy. He liked it so much that he ate the whole plate and went to the gentleman and asked for more. You see, it's delicious. So this place is that dangerous? Demon Lord Li Jiangsan sent him here. He must learn the demonic arts as soon as possible. The octagonal structures were perfectly built. Although they were erected in abnormal dimensions, they still fulfill their function, said Mr. He recognized the man's work. The master said there was nothing to recognize. He can see it over there. The attendant asked, did the gentleman happen to have studied the structures before? He replied that he had not, it just happened. Building an entirely different doctrine from martial arts. Here I'm going to pretend like I know something just by reading a little bit about it. What kind of man is the third young gentleman? The more one knows him, the more questions he has for him. He read over ten secret texts of demonic arts in three days. The man asked is he done with it yet? The gentleman said yes he can take it away, and he easily defeated the azure lotus, although he hadn't fully recovered yet. He may seem carefree and breezy, but when he's serious, he forms such an aura around him that it's hard to approach. Besides, when he lost his martial prowess after blocking the chi, he didn't seem that upset. Surely there must be something he doesn't know, he's decided to study the demonic arts. But there's no rush. It's his first time. If he wants to become stronger in the shortest possible time, he can't throw Qi Dark Shadows, for it's the closest thing to him. The Dark Shadow Qi is not even past one generation, a new martial art that he created by combining the secret techniques of the Ten Great Schools while he was the King of Assassins. On the other hand, the true demonic art is the foundation of all demonic arts. Depending on how he learns it, there will be a difference in the nature, character and quality of chi. What if he could make up for the lack of the foundation of his chi dark shadow with true demonic art? If you spill a drop of ink into a bowl of pure water, all that water will become dirty. Art is like ink. Especially true demonic art, which is the precursor to all demonic teachings nurtured by the divine heavenly demon cult. There is nothing more suitable to unleash young martial prowess in a chi dark shadow that has not lived for a single generation. Coming to a demonic cult with chi dark shadow it must be fate, let's begin. 
True Demonic Art and the Chi of the Dark Shadow. Let's see if the foundation of demonic arts and the secret techniques of the ten great schools can merge together. Donpil thought about the fact that it had already been twelve days since he had locked himself in the room. Was told not to disturb him under any circumstances. What is he doing there? They say opposites always attract. Compatibility is sacred. This new martial art he created is far more destructive than the dark shadow chi. It will become more stable than the true art. Done, he felt the demonic energy flowing through his body for the first time. This was a new martial skill he hadn't mastered before. Standing on the street, the employee didn't understand where this demonic energy was coming from. It would be called the demonic art of dark shadows. Donpil said it could have been dangerous. It was too risky to go on. His legs were weakened. He thought it would be wise to return to the bamboo garden today. The master said that he had heard of creatures called Shin Shin, that they lived in herds. Master asked, isn't it too small to call ourselves a herd? As he listened, Donpil heard a sound. It's a herd of Shin Shin. There are too many of them, the man motioned for the gentleman to retreat. Master told Mr. Ma not to worry. Dongpil is right. He's been fighting those bastards all day, so his chi has already reached its limit. But there is no time to waste, he must hone his new skill and get out of here. Fighting at the edge of his abilities. He will become stronger. The demonic art of dark shadow. Go Donpil, don't take a step back, we must defeat them. Wait, what did he just say? The third young master is hunting a herd of azure lotus and shinsin in a lonely bamboo grove? The man replied that yes, that's right. How interesting. If he were to study the black dragon, it would be hard for him to avoid the creepy creature's cries. Blood flame is harsh, and heaven's grasp is too heavy. It doesn't suit him. Red phoenix is best, but if he has a sighted eye, he won't take it. The master hoped he had given him three secret texts of the demonic arts. The man said yes, blood flame, capture the heavens, and red phoenix. In his current state, it would be hard to deal with the red phoenix as this art could be poisonous to the body after blocking the chi. Master admits that he has studied something else. Did he give him more texts from the secret library? The man apologized to the lord, he had visited the secret library without his permission. The Lord asked him to stand up, and told him that he had every right to go there without his knowledge. The man replied that he had not reported to him. The Lord asked if he regretted giving the third young master access to it. The man replied that he did not. The Lord asked if he could take full responsibility for it. He said yes. In that case, the overlord respects his decision. Yes, my Lord. The man asked him if he knew why a child's battle was more frightening than an adult's, because kids don't know when to stop. That's why it's scary. They think honor is honor, whatever it is. When the child realizes where the line with pure ignorance lies in armed combat, then he becomes a man, shouted the master. Hey, bodyguard, don't let your guard down, said the gentleman. These Shinsen want to take one quantity. The continuous use of the dark shadow demonic art is very smooth. He thinks at this rate, he can even try to reach the heart of the grove. At one point, another monster appears out of nowhere. He's very fast. Move aside, Mr. Ma. The man didn't have time to dodge, and he was hit with his hooves. Where did he come from? A horse? No, you can't underestimate him like that chicken. Donpil had been constantly fighting these creepers for the past few days and was able to strengthen his chi decently, but the monster still took him down with a single blow. This thing was far more powerful than any they had met before. What an unthinkable urge to kill. Then he's got to go full force from the start. What? So, that wasn't top speed, huh? Okay, let's do it again, you can't fool him twice. Why isn't his body moving? Looking at his right arm, the gentleman saw it was broken. Shit, if this keeps up, he won't be able to land a single punch on him. Just when he thought everything was going according to plan, this happens. You can't let your guard down in these woods. Donpil decided to lure the monster to him, he shouted to come here, his enemy is here. No, Donpil. He won't be able to handle him alone. Let's see how this fight ends 
the man kept shouting. After running after Dongpil, she fell into a trap with sharp bamboo that the man had lured her into. When the man looked at it, he thought he was dead. But then the horse opened his eyes. What a tenacious bastard! How dare he wound the young master's precious body! He must punish him by cutting off his head. But I think they'll postpone it until better times. First we have to save the young master. Young master, I'll carry you. The gentleman said not to. Just let him help me up. He broke his arm, not his leg. Eight months later. Heavenly Demon Divine Cult of the Elder Court. It was hard, said the first head of the Elder Court, Lee Gunsan. I'll go this time, so sit down and rest. Second head of the Elder Court, Ji Yang. Thank you, but don't. Said the Elder if they change the guards, the object of the guard will be uncomfortable. He will go again in an hour. But why did the patriarch from the Demon Sword family decide to stop by today? I have no idea. He's a very important person, maybe he wants to discuss something with the cult leader. Well, he's heard a rumor. It's said that they're trying to make the eldest son from the Demon Sword family one of the Demon Lord's disciples. One of his disciples, saying as he said, it might not be true, but considering that two of his pupils are from seven families, it's quite likely. In the matter of loyalty, none is more prominent than the Demon Sword family. Trusts, then should consider a special approach. Also they are considered one of the strongest faculties with decent troops. But will the overlord accept another apprentice? He has seven already, no one knows that. It all depends on the lord's decision. True, but it's likely to be the same number. What's he talking about? And the third young master. Having survived the Qi blockage, he had lost his martial prowess. And now he is in a lonely bamboo grove. It would not be an exaggeration to say that he is very far from victory. It's a dangerous situation. You already know that bamboo grove is an extremely dangerous place. After all, they don't even know when the third young master will return. If the overlord does not give his permission, he will probably be locked there forever. Stop it now. If anyone hears it. That's why they sent the third head there. Of all of them, he's the most prepared for the lone bamboo grove. He was sent there on Master Elder's orders. They know how much he values the third head, don't they? A clerk knocked on the door and asked the first head what was the matter. The man replied that the third head had come to see him. Dongpil is here. Invite him in now. Entering the room, the man said that the third chapter of Ma Dongpil welcomed them. What's the evil intent to kill? Is this the third chapter of Ma Dongpil? He has a bloodlust so intense it can't be hidden. What the hell happened in a lonely bamboo grove in the last eight months? Yes, thank you, chapter one. But why does he need cave conifer tea leaves? The man replied that he was just following the young master's orders, he told him to bring them. You work so hard, Donpil. The harder he works, the better off the young master will be. He must be patient. The elders wanted to have tea and a chat with him, but the man asked him to forgive him. Well, it can't be helped if he's busy. It must be hard, but I'm sure he's doing a great job. Let him be careful. And you take care of yourself. The man asked the elder did he feel it too? No matter how much he thought about it, the bloodlust coming from Dongpil was not normal. The elders are sure it just means he's living in extreme conditions. It's a shame, but at least he looks healthy. Dongpil will be fine, right? If it's the third head he knows, he'll come back much stronger. That's what he believes. He feels light, he thinks, he's much better than he was eight months ago. The grueling experience in the lonely bamboo grove had elevated his skills to the next level. Something just moved. Is it a beast? Its footsteps were heavy and measured, it's definitely not a Shinshin. He's getting closer. As soon as he shows himself, he'll cut him down. What's the question mark he's back already? The master said he could take his time and talk to his companions. He thought the young master would stay in the city's bamboo garden while he was gone. Did he catch another lush? What if you'd been hurt? The young gentleman said he was bored, he saw a horse wandering around. The young master couldn't let him leave. After their last battles, 
the mere sight of them pissed him off. So, the young master told Dongpil that they're having horse meat for dinner. Have him wash the pot when he comes back. Then, the man asked the young gentleman to remove the splint from his right arm. It just looks like it's already completely healed. He must have used it too much in the last few months. Life was so good during that time. Who would have thought he could defeat Alusha single-handedly? And no one would believe he survived the Qi lockdown. But this place is full of creatures that even the best masters can't defeat. He can't just keep watching, for he must guard it. Walking up to the young gentleman, the man asked if he was done. He had scared him again. What was he going to say this time? The young master, the man knows he's strong, but he promised him, not to go to dangerous places alone. The young gentleman asked what he should do then. Time was running out. Time? What's he talking about? This place is dangerous now, no, to be more precise, it will become dangerous. What is he trying to say? It's all rather mysterious. High concentration of spiritual chi not only produces bamboo and creates monsters, but also changes people's bodies. Although they put a lot of effort, but under normal circumstances, you can't achieve such a result in eight months. That's why it's dangerous. An excess is as deadly as a deficiency. Bamboo and critters may have adapted to the local environment, but the same can't be said for humans. He asked Donpil what he thought, how long did it take this arm to recover? So it was completely fine. The bones were broken and displaced, so it should have taken at least two months, right? But everything healed in just one week, and those wounds he got in the battle with Lu Xu went away in about two hours. He thinks that's normal. When the skin tears, the body heals the wound. But what if this process is greatly accelerated? What do you think will happen if the body continues to heal even after the wound heals? It will explode. This is the environment of a lonely bamboo grove. It's good to a certain extent. But the human body can't take it. Are you saying that the healing powers of the bamboo grove are getting stronger? More specifically, spiritual chi in about two or three months, it will become so powerful that they won't be able to bear it. They have to get out of here before then, unless of course he wants to explode and die. But, Donpil told the lord that they could not return home without the lord's permission. The demon lord only told him to go to the bamboo grove. He did not stipulate a time frame for his return and stay there. He thinks the lord has been suffering deprivation for eight months for a demon lord? Isn't that what this was about? First of all, he granted his request. This place is perfect for getting some fresh air. Is it normal to interpret it that way? If they fell about two more creatures, they would reach the heart of the bamboo grove, where they had never been before. That's where the chapters grow the spiritual bamboo. He should get it for the next three months. He can't sleep since Sarian is still alive. The fourth young master of the Heavenly Demon Heavenly Demon Cult's Divine Cult, Hong Iman. Why did the masters tell him about this? If they don't reach the pinnacle of demonic arts, they won't last three months there. That's what the lonely bamboo grove is like. What is he trying to tell him after such a sudden challenge? That's right. Didn't he say he wanted to test Junior, a heavenly demon living in the heavens beyond the clouds, whose existence cannot be comprehended by the human mind? He doesn't care that his disciples are at each other's throats. It's as if he wants to convey to them that in order to be his heir, they need to overcome this. What kind of world is the master looking at? If he can see what he sees. The Lord believes the third is doing a good job. What, Syrian, that bastard? He barely survived the qi blockage, even the medicine didn't work. Had he now become strong enough to survive in a solitary bamboo grove? How is that possible? The overlord said he plans to summon him soon. Does that mean that everything he went through to get rid of him was for nothing? Ser Yen, this time when he comes back, the guy threatened to kill him, and there's nothing stopping him from doing so. Here's what you asked for. He managed to get five bags of herbs for the blur and his special assignment, Cave Pine Tea. He didn't find out until he got here, but it seems the scent of this tea can repel monsters. It was rather unpleasant to constantly encounter Azure Lotus and Shinsin, so he decided it would be best to avoid them. There might be a bunch of these herbs growing on the weeping mountain of the cult in the Yunnan part, but why does he need herbs to remove the clouding? 
Everything has its uses, they look great. Good job. Can he bring more next time? To be honest, the man can't give him a clear answer. Is that so? The headmaster didn't understand what was wrong. This month, the apothecary at the court of the demon lord explores the ratio of the highest healing decoction of these herbs. It's the main ingredient, so it'll take at least two months to get more. Wait, a supreme healing potion? The herbs to remove the clouding will be used to prepare it? Yes, my lord. Young master, this is a supreme healing potion, drink it all the way. Didn't the healer make him drink the decoction for three whole months immediately after he woke up? Herbs to remove clouding are able to cure the body of any clouding, their names speak for themselves. And they gave it to a patient who almost died from chi blockage symptoms? These herbs are too powerful and attack even demonic energy. They can be administered to a healthy person, but for a sick person their effect can be fatal. Anyone with even the slightest medical knowledge would not prescribe such a decoction. The young gentleman asked Dongpil if he had ever heard of a silk clarifying needle. The man replied that of course he had. It is a type of acupuncture that is used to tense muscles to make the body feel balanced when the muscles are too weak. He had done this a couple times before going out on some missions after warming up his body with circulating arts. This procedure is not too complicated and as far as he remembered it had a good effect. They gave a supreme healing decoction containing herbs to eliminate opacity to a body that was in the most exhausted state possible, and applied a silk clarifying needle on a body that was already strained? Who would do such a thing? The Lord doubts that a healer would do such a thing on his own. There must be at least a high-ranking official or one of his apprentices behind it. What if it was an apprentice? She's a demon who works at a center for religious inner enlightenment, and is also a member of the Joxa family, one of the seven families of the demonic cult. And she is the younger sister four of the young master? Younger sister four came to see him as soon as he woke up. Fucking young lord four, how dare he try to kill his older brother even if it was to fight for the throne. The healer told the young master that he had prepared cave pine tea. Please drink it before it gets cold. The man turned to Xinhua and asked if he knew, what is the hardest way to get into a cult? Does he mean the lonely bamboo grove? The lonely bamboo grove is impregnable. Even those of high rank cannot enter it without the teacher's permission. His question is not whether they can enter it themselves, but can they put their eyes and ears there? Wouldn't the military branch be the most suitable in such a case? He had heard that the strategist general's control over the organization was so strong that even the elders couldn't touch them. No, it's pretty easy to infiltrate. The general strategist who oversees the military is considered the genius of this century. At any rate, he would turn the tide, find out who had infiltrated the troops, and determine who was involved in the power struggle. So he would never stop anyone from infiltrating the troops. Not everyone will dare to do it, that's all if they can figure out his intent. Then the most loyal outcome would be a trial by the elders. This organization is far from anything else. It exists only to protect the demon lord and the cult. It is different from other organizations that can change position depending on who is involved. Touching them is tantamount to challenging the demon lord himself. That's why no one pays attention to them, because they are untouchable. No, he was the one who wasn't paying attention to them. That was his mistake. The healer replied he wasn't sure he understood. Syrian, that son of a bitch, is still alive. What, how? He was exiled to a lonely bamboo grove over eight months ago. He had heard they had sent someone experienced and talented to accompany him. If he faced them first, he would surely be able to kill Syrian. No, even if that were the case, it's impossible. Even the masters from the elders must be on guard in this place. Before he went to the lonely bamboo grove, his body was in good shape. But it was still like a civilian who hadn't mastered martial arts. What kind of sorcery did he use to survive with such a body for eight whole months in a lonely bamboo grove? The fourth young lord ordered the healer to gather his men, and prepare enough weapons. Not the poison-blocking chi, not the demonic forest couldn't kill that bastard. Today is the last day that Master expects things to happen. The physician asked if he'd be personally involved. Personally, of course not. 
he doesn't think this battle should turn into a dogfight. There are those who will dance to his tune. So the men you ordered to gather are those who harbored a desire for revenge against Syrian even before the Chi was blocked. They will only put swords in their hands. It is not up to them to decide if they will seek out Saryen with the weapons they have received. Isn't that how the master treats them, leaving them to do whatever they want and throwing them into a real hell? He thinks it's brilliant. Young master. What do you mean he wants to go to the heart right now? He told him they don't have much time left. He just let him stay here. Why don't you just calm down for starters? You don't even know what kind of critters are out there. Would it make a difference if I did? Whatever danger lurks out there, it won't change the fact that they're running out of time. And he's not going to give up the spiritual bamboo. If he returns to the cult at this rate, who knows what the fourth master will do to him? Donpil said he would ask the teacher about who lives there and how to prepare to meet them. The young master repeated, there was no difference whether they knew it or not. Why do you think the demon lord sent high-ranking representatives to gather spiritual bamboo? If it was possible to prepare, he would send any demonic person. The reason he doesn't do that is because it makes sense to send someone with the same power as them. And this, is another reason not to go there. You've become incredibly strong, young master, but he's still not even close to the elder level. No, Donpil is right. He can't compare to the nine great demon elders, the strongest in the cult, but he has a talent they don't have. The art of dark shadow and the phantom of the dark god, also the hidden technique of the king of assassins, John Hajin. When he lived as an assassin during the war, he couldn't leave the stealthy technique. In the past eight months, he had no occasion to use this technique in the grove. After all, for him, it's a training ground, not a battlefield. But the heart of the lonely bamboo grove is full of secrets. It's no longer a training ring, a struggle between life and death, a place where he must accomplish his goal by doing whatever will be necessary. But since he has transformed Chi Dark Shadows into demonic art, he can't use the Phantom of the Dark God, no matter how much he wants to. That was why he needed herbs to remove the opacity. He needed to suppress the demonic energy somehow in order to activate the Dark God Phantom. Once he took these herbs, he would have half an hour. Judging from the size of the lone bamboo grove, thirty minutes would be more than enough time to reach her heart. He ordered the man to wait here and said he'd be back soon. No, young master, Donpil said he wouldn't let him. The young master told Dongpil to step back. That's an order. The man replied that he can't follow such an order. If he wanted to go himself, he would have to kill him first. The master said he could escort him to the entrance of the heart. But he would not allow him to go any further. The guy told Dalpil to wait, this is where he last hunted the Lusha. He thinks this is the entrance to the heart. Young master, something stinks in here, said the clerk. It's like something rotting. My god, young master, look at this. There are monster corpses. They all died after the blood vomit. There's a lot of them. I think there are a couple of critters here they haven't seen before. Isn't that a leopard? It looks like a menji. This animal occupies a leading position in the hierarchy of a lonely bamboo grove. He has heard that they don't leave the heart of the grove unless absolutely necessary, so this is cause for concern. They are the second in spiritual chi mastery in this place. Even the elders haven't seen this monster, who would have thought that they would meet it like this. Second? Then who's first? Tired for sure, must be the creature right over there. They call it the divided serpent. Is that a snake with two tails? Yes, even though it's the first time he's seen it, there's no doubt about it. Is it the strongest monster in a lonely bamboo grove? Is it a small thing? From what the man knows, yes. But it doesn't look that powerful, it doesn't even seem to be poisonous. And even though this snake is the strongest, it will just end up being another corpse like me the others. But these freaks, their condition is too strange. Looking at the pile of corpses of these monsters, it looks like something has struck them. But there are no wounds on the carcasses, and the spiritual bamboo growing near the heart of the grove should bloom and be thicker. But it is all dried up and withered. Who would do such a thing? It's like they sucked the life out of everything in the neighborhood. Fresh breeze, young master, what are you looking at? 
What's gotten into him, it's just a breeze, what's that strange feeling? It's blowing straight from there. From the heart of a lonely bamboo grove, the young master turned to Dongpil and said that he would go from here alone. He should wait here, not follow him, no matter what happened. Why did he come to him again? I thought there was no reason for us to meet again. My lord has ordered the first guardian to be summoned. The divine teachings are undeniable. All demons have fallen at your feet. The first cult guardian has arrived as you requested. The Lord asked the first guard as he practiced in seclusion, were there any guards that went to the heart of the lonely bamboo grove? The guard said there was no such thing. If there had been such a high-profile incident, he would have reported it to him immediately. So he was saying that the third went with the third head. Yes, my Lord. My Lord heard that he was quite a good child. Yes, he is young but he is already one of the ten strongest masters in the Council of Elders. He has talent, experience, and is quite simple. So he thought he'd be perfect to serve the third young master. Eight months, even if the third head could achieve the opportunity, there's still a limit to his growth. So it's the third, what day is today? The guardian replied that it's one day before the full moon. Is that why you decided to show yourself, third, is he really so blinded by greed that he'll go straight to his death, or maybe through sheer dumb luck it will come down the mountainside, what the hell is it? And what's up with that terrifying chi wind? It's getting stronger with each step closer to my heart. At this rate, it'll be hard for him to even walk straight. Unbelievable, he had never felt this kind of chi before. Wait a minute, it wasn't that long ago that he felt something like this. Yes, it's like that. When he first met Li Zhong San, the aura was so striking that it reminded him of death at that moment. A wind that has no purpose, and the power contained within it. It poses the same danger as Li Chong San, but there is a reward, exactly like meeting him. Even though he had surrounded himself with demonic energy, he was still receiving internal damage. No, he can't take it much longer. How strong is the creature inside that he can't even handle his demonic energy? He thought that there was nothing else left to do. With the herbs to remove the opacity, he would suppress the demonic energy and use the hidden technique. The effects of the herbs spread throughout his body. The demonic energy that had surrounded him just a second ago to protect him dissipated. He's relieved now. The wind passes through his body. It's the phantom of the dark god of dark shadow art, a hidden technique used by the world's best king, Chan Hajin, at the height of his glory. Did something happen? The wind and demonic energy are weakening. Young master, he's disappeared. Great, no more pressure. If it continues like this, he'll reach the heart of the grove before the effects of the herbs wear off. Lone bamboo grove, show him what you hide in your heart. Stumbling over a rock, he fell. Shit, that shouldn't have happened. There's no way he tripped over a rock using the dark god phantom. Who the hell is this sneaky asshole? It was a little fox. Wait, Dolpin said that the deeper he went into the lonely bamboo grove, the more powerful creatures they would meet there. So this little guy is considered the most ferocious in the entire grove? Given the peculiarities of where he is now, you shouldn't judge by appearances you can't let your guard down, but he's so cute, you want to pet him. I almost fell for it. He almost had him, like a nine-tailed fox. We've got to pack up and keep going. When he gets back, he'll try to wake him up. It's smaller than he thought. Or is he lost? Did he get to the end so fast? A little disappointing. So this is the spiritual bamboo he was looking for and he found it so easily, his spiritual chi, unbelievable. Yes, he can feel it. It's most intense here. The strongest spiritual bamboo in the entire lonely bamboo grove grows here. If he cleansed just three pieces now, he would become the strongest master of internal energy. No, no three, damn it. You can't be so greedy, his body is not strong enough to take that much chi. That's right, he's reached his goal, so he'll take one. Any more would just be greed. Although it was a pity, looking to the side, he saw a bamboo shoot. Why is it there alone? His spiritual chi is so pure. He can get it without the purification technique. 
He will only take one bamboo trunk, so he can take that too, smells good, and is easy to chew. But why couldn't he feel anything? It was clearly filled with spiritual chi, he should have already felt a ton of chi flowing into him. Except for the warmth in his chest, there was nothing like that anymore. Well, then we'll have to cut down some real spiritual bamboo. He drew his sword and struck the bamboo with it, why didn't it work? Is his sword too weak? Of course, the spiritual bamboo here is quite different, right? He's pissed off about ordinary bamboo. He'll cut it down, whatever it takes. That's what he's here for. Let the blade follow the mind's desire, and let its aura move like a body. There it is. The blade of the moon, and it's strong enough to use as a weapon, very strong. How much spiritual chi is there in such bamboo that it has become as hard as steel? The more he learns about this place, the more amazing it seems. When he looked to the side, he saw the little fox there and was frightened. What the, it's that foxy, right? When he woke up? No. How long has he been here? The ruler knows distracted by the spiritual bamboozle, but he should have noticed that Foxy had come. Do you want something from me? Don't let your guard down, Zhang Hajin. It may be cute, but it's still a creature from a lonely bamboo grove. There's no bloodlust, but you have to be on your guard. No, his hypersensitivity says it's fine. He's so small, so he thinks his attacks won't hurt much if he does decide to attack. The young master thought he could pet him a little. But it was not to be, the fox bit his fingers. He really got him. Of course, because the famous John Hajin. His spiritual chi is amazing. Yes, it's very strong, it wasn't easy to cut it down. The young master said he even had to use his sword aura. The cut is unnaturally smooth. What an amazing sword aura. Would he be able to do the same even if he had the best blade? The young master said he was tired of all this. But he was interrupted by Donpil, asking what about the little fox? Did he follow him all the way here? What a weird little kid. He found him sleeping in the center of the grove. The young gentleman said he almost bit off his finger when he wanted to pet him. What? The bite mark is gone. Is it because of spiritual chi? How dare he bite the young master? He can't forgive him so easily, because he hurt you. Now he even attacks animals. The master ordered him to calm down, and come over to him. It's too big to carry back, so they'll clean it right here. The man said okay, he'll help the master. Limitless technique. It's always interesting to watch. In an instant, all impurities disappeared and the air nearby became clean. This means not only that he has a unique technique, but also that he has a deep understanding of qi techniques. The more one observes the gentleman, the less he reminds him of a young man of twenty that he is like a skilled fighter who has lived for decades. Now the sap of this spiritual bamboo is the best elixir. Well done, young master. The gentleman said it's not a problem. Let him drink first. What? How dare I consume something so precious? Isn't he tired of being so compliant yet? That's different, it would only be right if he drank it. He did everything without Donpil's help. Is he really going to be like this until the end? They're on good terms, so let him not be so cold and drink faster. Donpil had saved the Lord quite a few times, and then fully deserved it. In fact, it should be embarrassing for him. Master has to give everything to him but only gives him half. A man stuck in such a lousy place because of a gentleman. You did a good job. That's what I'm saying. Donpil said he would protect the master until his last day of service. No danger will touch him either, unless it's over the corpse of a servant. The young master asked can he finally stop and just drink it? Even after his duty is over, he will never forget the favor, for the rest of his days he will remember it. He, Ma Dongpil, is obliged to return to the court of elders, once they leave this place, but in his heart he is always, just drink it already, please. Swallow. The master wants to see him swallow. The gentleman heard something coming. Excuse me? What's going on? How would the gentleman know? All the creatures of the lonely bamboo grove, gathering around them. Looking at Dongpil, the gentleman asked if he had memorized the layout of the area. 
The man replied that of course, what a diligent boy. All right, let's hurry up. Then his gaze fell on the fox cub who was sleeping nicely curled up in a ball, he's still here. Is he asleep despite all this chaos? The Lord can't just leave this little guy behind after following him around so much. Picking up the fox cub, the boy threw it into Donpil's hands, and ordered him to hold it in his arms and run away. In the meantime, he would stop them. All right, come to me, assholes. The man yelled at the gentleman to go ahead while he blocked their way. But the young gentleman said that when he says something, you should just listen to him. Hitting him, Donpil flew aside a few meters along with the fox cub. Such a powerful punch, an incredible martial art, triple heaven expanding strike. His absolute assassin king technique that had to be hidden for the duration of practicing demonic arts. Right now, one could not be restricted from using such martial arts as he did for the sake of training. The master of the lonely bamboo grove has left the spiritual land and gone, he doesn't understand. The third? It's clear now. Mr. Believes that was the reason. He's changed since the Qi blockage. To be more precise, it was as if he had become a completely different person. His essence that the Lord saw in the demonic justice pavilion was death. Third, have you been to the afterlife? The man is glad he called him to the pavilion of demonic justice. In front of the third young master's eyes, a cheetah appeared. It's pretty big, is he the head of the grove or something? They attack when they say hello to him. Quick. The Lord really doesn't like this fucking forest now. Well, then, jump in the rapture. I'll blow your head off, you bastard. If you combine the demonic arts, a foot technique like the climbing jump can also be a great attack. Master was a little disappointed. Thought he was one of the strongest in the lone bamboo grove. Stop pretending and let him go. The master doesn't have time to deal with him. I can't believe he's getting faster. Are these overgrown cats sick of living and want to die? This attack was insanely powerful. If he took another attack like this, he would go straight to King Yan's afterlife. The Lord said he's tasted every creature here once, but they think he won't do the same to them. The power of his demonic arts felt different. It was because of the spiritual bamboo. The spiritual chi obtained from him has not yet fully transformed into demonic energy. The spiritual chi reduces the strength of the demonic energy and thus weakens his demonic arts. On top of that, those monsters keep coming. He has no more herbs left to remove the clouding, so he can't use the stealth technique. Damn, a few more behind me. They seem to attack instinctively, for no reason, but they aren't as strong as the supreme masters. If he takes too long, he'll end up dead. They won't even let him think. Damn it. He can't keep hitting those things until they pass out. If he just keeps beating them one by one, he'll take forever. There's more of them, then he has no choice. It's useless to fight them one by one. He has to take them all down at once to get out of here. If his demonic arts are weakened, all he has to do is increase his demonic energy. He'll kill them all, you fucking cats. A blast of rock. From his blow, all the creatures were thrown back by the shockwave. Dongpil finally ran out of the bamboo grove with the fox cub in his arms. Looking around, he felt that the forest had just shaken. Is it possible the young master did it? What's going on in there? How is he alone in there? Where's the exit? Sir is definitely going in the direction he came from. Shit, is it because he's moving too slow? After using such a strong demonic art, it was as if his legs had gotten a ton heavier. We've got to get out of here as soon as we can. Otherwise we might run into other creatures. This bamboo has no moisture at all. No, help. All the plants here are like this. What's wrong with them? It was exactly the same at the entrance to the depths of the lonely bamboo grove. There were a bunch of monster corpses lying there, but didn't he come from here? Looking around, the lord spotted a detached serpent the same one he had seen before. He'll break his hands. His sword will rust. It's a good weapon. How did he do that? The detached serpent is known for causing drought. Is all that bamboo and sap because of him? Who was it true that weaned serpents are stronger than Menji? You filthy worm. Get off me. 
master couldn't push him away because his hands were tied. Then, at some point, the snake's head was pierced by a sword. It was his protector, Donpil, who ran to his aid. The man is glad the Lord didn't get a serious temple. Can you stand up? Do you think I'm all right? And his sword scared the Lord to death. The guy told him to get out of here. How could the guardian leave his master? He said he'd watch him until he got out of this place. That noise, they got here faster than I thought. Shit, there's more of them. They've been chasing him this long. A young gentleman asked Donpil how far to the exit. Someone said about two kilometers. It's too much to run away. They'll catch up with them for sure. He'll have to end up here if he wants to get out. This time he said he'd stay and hold them off while the young master left. The guy told Dongpil to cut the crap, they'll leave here together. Even if one of them stays behind to buy time, there are still too many of them, there's no way to get rid of the tail. There's only one way to go. They kill them all here, or they die. There's no other choice, they have to do it. The master suddenly remembered his last words. Zhang Hajin, do you know what life is? No, I don't. He's always existed as someone else's tool. That's why he wants to live so badly. He will become so strong that no one will dare touch him. This time he's going to live free. Gonna scratch me in the same place he scratched me last time? Rude bastards. He needs another blow to regain consciousness, yes? He won't die in a place like this. Rock blast. When he approached the young gentleman, the guardian asked him if he was all right. He replied that he couldn't even stand properly. Could the guardian carry him on his back? He told the young master it would be difficult. He's definitely going to be the bait this time. He needs to get out soon. Mister got a second chance after that horrible death. He can't afford to die like that. Young master, there is no time, he needs to run to where the guardian came from. Then, out of nowhere, the very same fox appeared next to them. You could see from the animals that they were all frightened. Why is he here again? Lightning flashed from the fox's eyes straight into the sky. It was followed by a huge explosion. Waking up, the young master didn't understand what had happened. Had he died again? No, it hurts, so I must be alive. Did he do something? Hey, get off me. What, he's going to eat me? Get off. Dongpil, do something, protector, get up and help him at last, the capital of the divine cult of the heavenly demon. Greetings demon lord, long live the heavenly demon divine cult. They are moved to tears by the blessing of the sacred god, so the expected expenditure for the upcoming Mara festival is 57,000 nannies. This is 12,000 nannies more than last year, special forces are on duty now, so there should be a lot fewer visitors. Despite this, the man wonders how costs have risen so much. He would like to hear an explanation, a master of religious inner enlightenment. Master said that she would make it clear. It was confirmed that four of the seven seven demonic cult families would come along with the key year. The seven demonic cult families were the illustrious protectors of the school who had protected the school for hundreds of years. Therefore, she believes it is only fair to show them the respect and generosity of the cult. Religious Inner Enlightenment of the Divine Cult of the Heavenly Demon Seo Yangshim. History shows that the respect of the cult still reigns to this day and will still 1,000 years later. If the heads of families attend the ancestral feast, they will be honored by heavenly spirits that will be personally created by the Demon Lord. The cult's respect and generosity are expressed by the Lord, not by money. Thus, he orders them to reduce their expected expenditures. Seo Yangshim said she understood. The girl didn't consider the matter deeply enough. Apologizing for her imperfections, she will submit a new report tomorrow before lunch. The clerk said it's all progress reports from internal and external chapters. I think the first one is still practicing. He hasn't left the third hall of guardian demons yet, let the second one begin. Yes, master. Second young master of the heavenly demon divine cult, Guang Pyeong. The master asked him if he was going to return to training? Martial arts had already become an integral part of his daily life. He felt that there was no point in doing closed training until it was time, 
come the next stage of change. So confident in his martial arts in front of a demon lord, how daring. There is no need to teach those who know where they are. Let them do as they please. To hear this from one who judges martial arts so strictly, a real blessing. Except for the first young gentleman who is still isolated, the second might be a better candidate. Yes, master. He's not what he was a couple days ago. He must be working hard. Thank you. But it's getting late. If he wants to surpass others, he needs to immerse himself even more in training. But even so, it'll be hard to achieve mastery. The guy said he'll keep that in mind. Teacher also always told me to dedicate myself. Right now he should not focus on martial arts, but on finding supporters. You just have to keep doing what you've been doing. Yes, Lord. Five young mistress of the heavenly demon divine cult, Ju Soyoung. There's a limit to how much martial arts can enhance your talents. After the meeting, walk with the master here. Pick one of the ten great demonic arts. The girl said she would never forget his gratitude. He just praised her. Should he change his plan? When the sixth returns? Supposedly, he'll attend the Mara festival with the patriarch. It seems to my lord that she's neglecting her health, junior. I'm sorry, master. Seventh young master of the heavenly demon divine cult, J. Yeoman. Cults are no place for spoiled children. She wouldn't be in this state if she was stronger. The Lord ordered her to work harder. Then he asked her if she was afraid of death. The girl said no, master. He had never taught any of them to rest. If they really wanted to get stronger, let them go beyond their limits. Third, he's late. Tell him to come in. Third young master Saryen takes out the call of the sacred god. He had recovered, but they heard he had lost his martial arts. Has Syrian made it out of the lonely bamboo grove yet? Greetings, my lord. It's been a long time, demon lord. What a powerful and violent demonic energy. How much had he trained during this time that he had become so seething with demonic energy? This is the highest praise ever given by a lord. Everyone was surprised. The demon lord asked how he liked the lonely bamboo grove? A good place to get some fresh air, the gentleman replied that it was surprisingly quite fresh. I think I've experienced enough weird stuff to last a lifetime. Why does he say to go with him? Did the guy answer too harshly? It's not like he went to that grove and came back as he ordered. The Lord ordered the first guard to take care of the others. He replied that he would obey. Meeting adjourned. All dismissed. He's not going to send me to an even worse place since he survived in a lonely bamboo grove, is he? It must be hard for her. I'll have to recompile the expenses. No, it's okay. It's gonna be hard on them too. It's what has to be done. By the way, General Strategist didn't attend the meeting today. Did she happen to know the reason? The girl replied that no. After all, he is constantly busy, though she doesn't think it's about the Mara festival. She's heard that the northern traditional schools have recently embarked on a very interesting endeavor. She thinks it's probably because of that. Wherever they were from, he'd never met a sane person who complained about being a member of the traditional grid. Most likely they were doing something pointless again. It must not be easy for a general strategist. Be that as it may, what happened to the third young master? It was the first time the man had ever seen a demon lord give such a high evaluation. The elder had heard that he had survived the chi blockage, but he couldn't tell from him that anything had happened at all. Saryen just came back alive, but he also caught everyone's attention. What did the overlord see in that bastard? I should have killed him when he was weakened from the chi blockage, the gazebo again? Such a cozy garden doesn't fit the demonic cult at all. The Lord ordered him to sit down. He survived after eight months in that hellish lonely bamboo grove. Don't be afraid. I did as he said, so I've done absolutely nothing wrong. Holding out the cup to him, the overlord poured him alcohol. When was the last time he drank it? He still needs to learn the Black Dragon Mountain movement technique. What? What kind of technique is that? He can't even ask in this environment. What the hell is he talking about? 
Master can't even have a drink, it's too uncomfortable. You've added something to your true demonic skills. What? He saw my fighting skills? Looks like a martial art of the Buddhist school. Can he tell that just by looking at me? The overlord knows he's strong, but can he really see through martial arts? Maybe he's angry because I changed the true demonic arts without asking? What's he gonna do now? He'll be sent to a place far worse than a lonely bamboo grove. Good job, I'm impressed. He praised him it's not easy to create a martial arts technique higher in level than the ten greatest demonic arts. It's difficult, but, that's right, it took some thinking. He was embarrassed at his lord's unexpected praise. The demon lord asked how he came to the art of Buddhism. The guy replied that he had tried many things, but found that it was most suitable for becoming stronger. Really? Yeah, the results are pretty good. He wasn't thinking ahead before. Now what? I agree, the demonic arts may lack power and influence, but as a foundation it's our cult's best technique. If Saryan had given it some more thought, he wouldn't have had to combine demonic arts with other arts. He placed the flower bed where the tree should grow. Pull yourself together, old man. Didn't he say the kid was excellent? Why is he reprimanding him now? But it's okay, he's made excellent progress and he can go. I beg your pardon? He poured me a drink and now he wants me to leave. Why the hell did he even ask me here in the first place? Chattering about his martial arts. Couldn't you just send a letter? Well, if he stays, the Lord might start asking about stuff. Better get out of here, Syrian said he would go then. Pointing to the bottle, the overlord said that this he could take with him. It's a reward for a job well done. Who would have thought he would add the art of Buddhism to create a new one? It struck him again, it's not like he could have known about the difficulties of the high demon. It's just a coincidence. Third, will you ever surprise me again? If so, this winter will be interesting. He can't breathe next to the Lord. And the more he thinks about it, the scarier it seems. He's the master, and he gives me a half-empty bottle of liquor instead of a full one. Wait, it's the drink of the six heavenly spirits. Donpol knows it's a question mark that tastes pretty good. The guard asked him if he knew about the drink of the six celestial spirits? Only the most respected cult masters can drink it. The demon lord gave it to you personally? Yes, but what's the big deal? The drink of the six demons is the high-class alcohol of the cult, it was and is enjoyed by all the lords. It is a special drink that is given to people who have done great deeds. Just the chance to drink it is already the highest part and glory. Plus, it's made by the demon lord himself. You can't buy that for any money. And he's a real fan. Yeah, yeah, got it. Let's have a drink together when we get back, the head gentleman said. No, once Donpil escorts him to the residence, his service will be over. He must return to the court of elders. He was honored to work for the Lord, so the man doesn't want to try it? Well, I guess I'll just drink it myself. Wait. Young master, please, let me think, said the elder. He's finally back. It's great to see this place again after all this time. How did he get here? Well, I'm the one who brought him out of the woods, so I'll take care of him. The young master said this is their home now. Let's clean up and rest in a warm bed. He hasn't seen Anva for a long time, if she meets him. What is it? What's that ominous aura? Someone's been here. Judging from the smell, they left a while ago and headed this way. How dare they hide in his residence? Who are these people, young master? Are you back? Master replied that yes, he's home. The divine teachings are undeniable. All demons have fallen at your feet. Greetings to the third young master Anhua, is this really necessary? The girl heard something bad happen to him in the lonely bamboo grove, she must have been waiting for him and he didn't even remember her. The gentleman replied that he was fine and the girl seemed to have lost weight. She said she's fine. She's just a girl happy to see him safe and sound. Even though he's been gone for eight months, it's still as clean as ever. Yes, Anhua came in every day to clean up so that he could come back any day and feel comfortable. If Anhua is fine, then they're just watching. 
Young master, I still need to heat some water, since I just heard you were back. It won't take long, do you want to eat first? The gentleman said no, he would like to wash his face first. He couldn't wait to wash off all the dirt of the lonely bamboo grove. Okay, she would let him know when it was ready. It's great, all the tension's gone. But he can't ignore someone else's presence, the one who kept an eye on him during the meeting. The person who caused the blockage of his chi, the fourth young master, Hong Yimin. It would be busy again, first we have to figure out how the heavenly demon divine cult works. Now does he know that the demon lord is in charge? With so much information, he has no control. He can't guess how the overlord will act, so he's out of the question. We need to find out who we can turn to for help. Then he will draw them to his side and gain the right to enter and leave the cult at will. That way, someday he can leave here and be free. At least there's good news, because he's the third apprentice of the great demon lord. No one can know what he's planning, but his high status should serve him well. He will climb the social ladder and then have fun. The healer told the young gentleman that he should smoke less for the sake of his own health. He's hardly taken a cigarette lately. He'll quit when the time is right. Thank you for your concern. The physician said it was good. Could he ask why the Lord withdrew the men from the third young Lord's residence? For the young gentleman can be understood, but this time he can't see the reason for his actions. He just keeps smoking instead of finishing what he started. The young master replied that he didn't know. I'm sorry. He didn't know how Syrian would react, that's why he had to order them back. But he'd already anticipated what his reaction would be and planned it all out, right? Yes, he thought he knew, but he was wrong. Did the young master admit he was wrong? What's he talking about? He saw Syrian at the meeting today. For the first time since the Chi Lock incident, he's changed a lot, and he's much better. The master doesn't know what happened in the lonely bamboo grove, but he seems to have regained his skill. However, that wasn't the reason he'd stepped away from the plan. He looked like the Sarian he had always known, but it felt like he was looking at a completely different person. Like he had become someone else. His gaze was directed at the young gentleman, as if he knew everything he had done. Master didn't do it because he's regained his skill and gotten a little stronger. He just needs to rethink everything he thinks about him. Lies, he is lying now. He is clearly puzzled by the third young gentleman's changes. The master asked what the subordinates were doing after his orders. The healer replied that he complained of deviation from plans. And asked what he should do. Hong Iman ordered to give them some coins. They're obsessed with money, just like Sarian, so it'll be fine, as long as they get it. It's not a good idea to attack Sarian now. Then what should he do? Donpil, why so late? I thought I was going to starve to death. I'm sorry. Looking at the full table, the guardian asked what's all this? The head gentleman replied that Anhua had prepared all this, let her sit down quickly. The girl asked the young master if he was sure she could sit here with them. Shouldn't she eat after him? Syrian asked what was wrong with her and ordered her to stop talking nonsense and just enjoy the delicious food. Master said they'll all eat together. They can begin. After pouring the drink into glasses, they began to eat and drink. After a while, the drink ran out. Donpil, you're a little drunk. Should we stop? The man replied that he was completely sober. Anhua, can you serve more drinks? After the girl left, the young master decided to talk to Donpil. Donpil, let me ask you something before the drinks arrive. The guard replied that he could ask. The gentleman wants to meet someone who knows all about work and connections in the organization. Does he have someone in mind? Donpil said there are a couple. He had heard that the chief strategist general in the military had a lot of information about it, but it would be difficult to meet him. Okay, so who else can he talk to? The master of religious inner enlightenment. The young fourth gentleman asked the healer to send May a letter to the master of religious inner enlightenment, Seo Yangshim. Have him say that he invites her to dinner tomorrow for a talk. The healer told the young master that it could be dangerous to mess with her spontaneously like this. Knowing her character, one would assume that she would try to avoid interfering in a conflict between students. He may enrage her if he hastily asks for her cooperation. 
If she lives an enemy in the person of a master of religious inner enlightenment, she will greatly harm herself. He knows, but he has to take his chances. Now that the lynx has turned into a snake, he needs to change weapons. Last night, the young master drank so much. What an unusual night it was. Wow, he's incredible. As expected, not everyone can be a demon lord's apprentice. A cult organization? So he's talking about personal relationships? General Stratek is an expert in this. After all, he is the head of the army of the strongest group of the cult. However, it's hard to arrange a meeting with him if he's not a overlord especially lately. He's heard he's very busy right now so it'll be hard to meet him. They, the court of elders are pretty good too. After all, they are the ones who protect the demon lord and the cult. They, the very best organizations of the heavenly demon divine cult. Okay, we're clear. Is there anyone else who knows the details of the relationship? Yongshim. The master of religious inner enlightenment is definitely good at it. She's in charge of the internal circulation of the cult's money, so she has a huge influence. Since she's in charge of finances, she likely has a wealth of information about human relationships. But he doesn't think she'll just tell him anything. Because it's illegal to disseminate information containing personal opinions. But why is he asking? Young master, maybe you. At that moment, Anhua brought drinks. So the master of religious inner enlightenment, Seo Yansum. Just like Dongpil said, it won't be easy to deal with her. Whoever is at the head of the department in charge of finance has a lot of authority. If he approaches it recklessly, things could go wrong. But, the fourth one openly sends his subordinates to him even in the cult. He was wrong to think that he would return to a safe life once he left the lonely bamboo grove. Whether he's in the cult or outside of it, there will be those who will hunt him down. He needs people who have his back and are on his side. In his past life, he had learned what happens when you fight alone, without friends. Looking at the gentleman, she wondered if she'd ever even finish cleaning this place. Sir is tired. Is it because he has a lot of thoughts in his head? What a mess. He shouldn't leave so many traces. Young master, Donpil is here to see you. As the man ran in, he greeted the Lord and saw from the footsteps that he had been practicing. This is the sword the Lord spoke of. It should be similar in length to the one he used earlier. It was just a slight swing. Great. Brought him a pretty nice piece. Well, then he's going. Donpil asked where he was going. The master replied that it was time he was going to build his future. What, what's he talking about? Looking towards Donpil, the gentleman offered to join them if he wasn't busy. The pavilion of high class, the pavilion of the spring flower. You are here, master of religious inner enlightenment. Greetings for young master. Please, come in. He asked for the best dishes, but he doesn't know if she'll like them. The spring flower pavilion is under her management. She knows very well how good the food is here, he realized. He didn't know that he had invited the owner of this place here and was playing the role of host. The girl asked, why did he call her here? The master replied that there was no special reason. He just wanted to treat her since she always works so hard for the cult. C.O. Yansim. She is the woman who lived for a decade on the battlefield of divine cult and rose through the ranks to become a master of religious inner enlightenment. There is a lot of confidence in her and she knows her worth. You have to tread carefully. It is not easy to arrange a meeting with her as the chief strategist. Mistress said the services are gone, so she's listening. Why did he really want to see her? The young gentleman said he needed her help. He asked her to give him her hand. Insert. The girl thanked him for the drinks and said see you later. He asked if his request made her uncomfortable. The girl said that's not the problem. She doesn't take sides when it comes to candidates. But why would she say that? She doesn't know about the other organizations, but she can't take such action. Her department runs the internal affairs of the entire cult. If they don't stay neutral, the cult will be shaken. Although she is a master of the inner enlightenment department, it is only one of many cult organizations. What an arrogant statement right in front of the air. She thinks he knows that. Very unexpected. The master said it seems the master is mistaken. 
he is only asking her to reach out to him, not to join him. The girl replied that she didn't think there was much difference. Nevertheless, there was. As she said, he knows how important the Office of Internal Enlightenment is. Then he should also know that they would not support any of the candidates. However, it is not in the laws of the cult, she replied that it didn't matter. That was her expression of devotion. He guesses she'll change her mind. After saying thank you for the treat, the girl bids him farewell. I heard she needs green turtle four-leaf clover. It's a very rare plant. You won't find one even in Yunnan, where most of the cult herbs grow. One and two can be found even near the eastern seas. The young gentleman said he'd give her the clover. He didn't really need it. Turning to him, she asked how he knew, is it really important? To her, yes. Please let him answer her question. It's really important. Then should she give him something in return? He doesn't make deals where he loses something. Co Yansim said it sounded like a threat. How could he threaten her, a master of the Office of Internal Enlightenment? He just happened to be in a difficult position, so he could only hope that she would understand. For successful negotiations, one must offer something that will be useful to the other. He thinks four-leaf clover green turtles is a good example of this. What does she think? After some thought, the girl said that she would listen to him first. Let him say what he wanted. The young master said it's nothing like that. It could even be considered a friendly favor. He wished she would just give a secret order to a servant. Does she happen to know a servant named Anhua? She is working in the residence of the three young master. Please ask her to report the actions of the three for three months. Every day if she can. Is he going to do something to him? The master thought she didn't ask unanswerable questions. The girl said he was the first to ask for a hard-to-perform favor. Is it too complicated? Yes, it is. If she gets caught reporting his daily activities, does he know what will happen to Co Yansim? All she has to do is not get caught. Mistress said it's risky. It's not that risky. Just tell her to do the usual. All she'd have to do is send a short letter at the end of the day. Co said it sounded easy, but in reality, the young fourth gentleman said that even if there was a problem, the solution would be simple. What? The truth would be as empty as the tobacco smoke. So if she got rid of the pipe, no one would ever know who was smoking. The girl said it's too much for her anyway. Master. It's enough of a blatant lie. She's not lying, she just has no idea what kind of person Anhua is and to make her follow someone, then let her just send someone else. Someone she can trust. But the fourth lord, something like this, don't even say you can't do it. He knows damn well he can do anything if he wants to. He's asking one last time. Silence is a sign of agreement, right? All right, it's a deal, then it's a deal. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by a third young gentleman. How long have we been talking about this? There's nothing to drink. Patience is running out. He only has bottles of cheap wine and the cups are empty. The third lord? What's that bastard doing here? Smiling, he asked are they going to slurp slop all night in the same mug? Or would they rather drink with him? Syrian, how are you? The master said it took them a little while to find them. He wondered and wondered, and they were here all along. May the demons forgive me. Greetings, young master. The guy said she could relax. I told you not to let anyone in. The third young master told him to calm down, he wants the master of enlightenment. She's talking to me now, brother. Don't you think it's rude to barge in so suddenly? The master asked how about sharing the rest of the evening with him? Did he just ignore me? The girl apologized to the young lord, but her agreement for dinner already went to the fourth lord. So for now, their meeting is not over. Looking at him, Co Yansim couldn't figure out what he was up to. Isn't there any four-leaf clover involved? Everyone stood there wondering how he knew about it. The master said there's usually only a couple of reasons why someone might need him. First, it is necessary in case of excessive depletion of yang energy to quickly reduce the concentration of yin. Secondly, in case of malfunction of the nine yin meridians. Either way, both cases are solved without problems with common herbs. 
But there may be a situation in which four-leaf turtle clover is so necessary. Maybe there is someone among your acquaintances with blocked chi due to trying to learn how to cultivate in. The Lord doesn't know what state he's in, but unless he's on the verge of death, the clover isn't needed. If they use it, it can only make things worse. Not only will it reduce the in concentration, but also damage the yang condition. Master understands her concern, but let her believe it's not worth it. Seo Yansim couldn't believe her eyes, she didn't understand why is he so kind? Is it really the third young lord? Were you eavesdropping? I'm not sure it's right to do such a thing, for young master said. Is he mad or something? Saryen replied that he was just standing there, suddenly hearing about the clover. Do you think such behavior befits the third young lord of a demonic cult? He's not the one to talk about inappropriate behavior. Killing your brothers and sisters in order to gain sovereignty. That's inappropriate behavior? The fourth gentleman asked what it was all about. The brother replied that he was asking as if he didn't know. If he genuinely doesn't understand, he's an idiot who doesn't realize what he's doing. Don't make a fool of yourself, it looks stupid. He may understand, but don't you think you don't do that to the youngest? She wasn't even ten. The seventh princess looked rather pained at the meeting. Was the fourth lord really involved in this? The guy said he wouldn't stand for any more slander. Even from his own brother. Brother? That's a nice word to hear from a man who's trying to kill you. You will. Did you think that after what happened, everyone would keep quiet? Well, without proof, there's no point in demagoguery. Just expressing my displeasure. Said the third gentleman. So what will you do, Master of Enlightenment? I think the treaty is no longer worthwhile. Will you stay here? The girl asked what other ways are there to improve the condition of someone with blocked chi. Blood Soul Pavilion only says to observe. Doesn't she know that he's faced this problem himself and successfully solved it? Despite one asshole's attempts to kill him, the fourth master shouted at the Enlightenment master not to listen to him. She thought about the fact that if the deal is the same, there's no point in making it with a nasty person. Saying thank you for the invitation and that she would pay for herself, she turned and left. Master of Enlightenment, the third gentleman said he had to go too. When he caught up with Seo Yansim, he asked her if she minded if he only had cheap wine. The girl replied that of course not. As long as there's something to drink, it's fine. The fourth lord asked Xin Hui, how long has the third lord been eavesdropping? The healer replied that he had appeared so suddenly that they couldn't stop him. Things didn't go according to plan, said the fourth gentleman. We have no choice but to do it ourselves. How? He didn't want to be personally involved in this, but Saryen started the war, so he'll have to pay the price. Don't think of it as some kind of noble hand gesture. He's just explaining her treatments. It will take about three days, no more than that. At first it will be difficult to notice any changes. Can't say for sure because he hasn't personally seen the patient's condition, but slowly, step by step he will come back to normal in about six months. What does that mean? As he mentioned earlier, it all depends on the patient's state of mind. If his body is strong enough, he'll be back to normal in five or six months. Five to six. Not quickly, but Blood Soul Pavilion couldn't offer any methods at all. If that's the case, there's no doubt about it. She'll be honest with him. What does he want from her in return? Finally finished and Anhua did a good job today. When she heard a knock on the door, she thought it was the master. When she opened the door, she saw a healer who said that one should not open the door to anyone or else there was a chance of trouble. Anhua, don't be too nervous. I only brought you here to ask you one small favor. Here, lift your head up. I want to show you something. Do you know what this is? It is a so-called slow corrosive poisonous insect. It is a pest that takes the human body as its host. It begins to take effect two days after entering the human body. It then penetrates the host's internal organs and eats everything in its path, causing the host to die in agony. However, if you drink the antidote before the insect has time to take effect, there is no problem. Asked why is he telling her all this? So in exchange for the antidote, she will come every day and report on the activities of the third young lord, and she will do it without anyone knowing. You understand, Anhua. 
this is very serious. He said she didn't have to be afraid if she followed his orders and didn't get hurt. She could even lose her sight if an insect accidentally gets in her eye. Okay, let her open her mouth. Please save me, young master. Seo Yansim asks the Lord what he wants from her. She knows he came to her because he wants something from her. His knowledge had saved one of her people, and in gratitude, if it was in her power, she would do so. Even when he lived under the name of Chun Hajin's assassin, he saved lives. It was when he was killing the political enemy of the Righteous Heaven Alliance head. Squad Leader The man said they found two girls who are still alive. They appear to be subordinates of the dead. Did they think they wouldn't be detected if they hid? Luckily, their names aren't on the list of people to kill. They'll get good money from them. They should be thankful they weren't killed. Just let them shut their mouths or it will get worse. The man said he would make her very obedient. Enough. Their mission is over, let them let the children go. They're coming back. Let them stop with the unnecessary things. What is he talking about? Does he even know how much money they will get from selling them? Maybe his mission is over because he killed the ones that needed to be killed, but what will they get for it? Just stay out of it, Zhang Hajin. There's something else for them if he doesn't want to get involved. He killed his best friend's wife and kids without blinking an eye. And now all of a sudden he's being nice? It doesn't suit him. There's a village about 10 kilometers east of here. He doesn't even know when he can change his mind so make him hurry up and get out of his sight. He killed our family so brutally, and now he's pretending to be kind? Let him just kill them too. Did he really think they'd thank him if he saved them? He knew it was hypocrisy. Killing their family in front of them and then playing savior. Zhang Hajin, I'll curse you even in the afterlife. Go to hell. It wasn't that he was sad because he was insulted after saving them. It just seemed to him that this was all his life was supposed to be. This life he was leading, he already felt like hell. That's why he was sad. He really wanted something, but after thinking about it, he decided against it. So he wants to get something from her in return for knowledge, but instead he gives it up. Then, then, is he giving her this precious knowledge for nothing? Why is he doing her such a huge favor? The young master said it's a little difficult to explain. But a person who is experiencing a chi blockage, she must have been trying to get a four-leaf clover green turtle because it was someone important to her, right? If it was someone who hurt him, or was some piece of shit, he would demand payment. However, if it was someone that someone like her thought was valuable, he didn't think it was a bad person. What is he talking about? Knowing this, he doesn't want to make a deal using someone's life. If he can save a life without asking for any payment for it, is it too cruel of him to ask for payment? He said he hoped the patient would make a speedy recovery. What is this? Wasn't the third young lord the world's worst man? It felt like she was talking to a soft-hearted novice merchant, not the ruthless third young lord of the divine cult. She asks the young gentleman, is he serious? The girl really doesn't understand why he decided to do her such a favor. Besides, he doesn't even know the man. In this world, people can kill people they've never met, so what's wrong with saving someone they've never met? And having a drink with her made him feel better. What does he even mean by that? He didn't think she'd meet the fourth young lord. Nice to get revenge on someone who sharpened his blade behind his back. It's a given that candidates and successors will fight and betray each other. But even if someone has such thoughts, no one will say it openly. If anything else, what does he want? Otherwise he exposes all sorts of flaws to her. Cold, cruel, unforgiving. A third young lord who never settled for anything less than first place. What changed him so much? The chi lock? Or the secluded bamboo grove? Whatever it is, this new third young lord is a stranger to her. If she really wants to give something in return, please serve light meals at the restaurant more often. Isn't food management also the responsibility of the Center for Internal Enlightenment? The food is good, but there is a lot of spice. Consider those with a more delicate flavor. Young lord, just what you need, perhaps information on other young lords and ladies? Wow, she's good. As expected from a master center of inner enlightenment, what he wants to know is the information and relationships of all the cult members. Thanks to him, the girl had a good time today. 
she got a lot of help from him. Wishing the girls a good night, they left. Turning to the master of the center, the girl asked if the information she had given him fell into the wrong hands, they might be in danger. Master Center said not to be afraid, she knows this, and got something much more valuable from him. She should risk at least that. What does Donpo think about having a third round just the two of us? The man replied to the young master that it was getting late. Don't be like that, the gentleman said he knows, so he wants a drink. She thought she knew everything about the major figures of the cult. But she had just met a man who shattered that confidence. The third young lord. What will he do next? Master ordered the girl to report to her if there was any news about the third young lord. When will he finish reading all of this? Extensive documents from C.O. Yonsim, detailing the traits of the main cult figures and their secrets. Of course, he perceives this information with a degree of conventionality, as these are only subjective evaluations from one point of view. But even if even half of that is true, it's really interesting. At first glance, it looks like a vertical organizational structure in which all entities are loyal only to the orders of the demon lord. However, according to Seo Yongshim's research, this is not the case. It has recorded all the veiled squabbles in the struggle for expanding influence, all the alliances, betrayals and resentments. They, the disciples, are no exception to this struggle, although they claim to be independent of the power system of the divine cult. Humans certainly live complicated lives. Berserk Demon Squad Leader, this man sounds interesting. He will read more carefully from here on out. Young Master, are you going to eat? What, is it time already? The guy said the food tastes different from usual, it tastes a little more bland. Yes, lately they've been buying ingredients with a milder flavor. Isn't that what he was asking for? She's the kind of person who remembers even the little things. Her hair has a funny shape. The girl stood over Mr. Fox, and coaxed him to try the food. Is that what she calls him? She said yes. That's because she thinks he doesn't have a name. The young gentleman replied that it was true. They have been together for quite some time, but he gave me his name. The master asked Anva how. The girl was surprised, was she allowed to give her opinion, why not? Then, since Mr. Alice has big ears, how about bigger ears? Or, since he has a big fluffy tail, how about a bigger tail? She said both names are very nice. It doesn't matter. He'll name it himself because he's a gold leaf, but young master. How is that different from the names I suggested? No, Anfa, the name she came up with is just bad, but Goldie, it just slips off the tongue. The third lord said he's a genius at making up names. And he may not be back tonight so let them dine without him. The guy asked her not to skip dinner and make sure to eat. Anhua said okay and see you later. The young master's martial arts are somehow different. He is quick to change his strategy and is able to think outside the box. Perhaps that is why he was able to become stronger so quickly. If he can become like that too, that was amazing. Ah, second leader. The red glow of the demon guardian sword sun. Just think, you were able to destroy a boulder from such a distance using only this basic technique. Second leader of the court of guardian Gue Yang, Donpil said he was still short. It seems that he had grown a lot during his time working for the third young master. Yes, he taught him a lot. The second leader said that watching him practicing, he forgot that he had something to say to the man. The third young gentleman walked into the court of the guards. He looked for him but the man told him Don Pipe was practicing. He left immediately. Furthermore, he said that he would attend the gathering of the Berserk Demon Squad today. He told him to come if he was interested. The man immediately snapped out of his seat. Donpil, wait, young master. He shouldn't mess with a squad of demon barserkers. They're all crazy. Barserk Demon Squad. A squad whose name speaks for all the mad demons that make up its ranks. They follow a style of combat that knows no mercy, and knows no compromise or conversation. The most terrifying squad of the divine cult, they are known for never stopping until their enemy is torn to shreds. On top of that, they make no distinction between friend and foe. How long has it been since they got together? Let's get half drunk tonight. Opening the door with his foot, 
the man stepped inside. What the hell is this? Isn't there anyone here? Why are you so empty? Hey, owner. Aren't you open yet? Second in command of the Berserk Demon Squad, Chang Wan. Looking at the table, he saw the headmaster sitting there. Hey you. Didn't you hear me? Are you a high-ranking person of the sect? Well, I guess you could say that. Doesn't he know they rented the whole place today? Did you rent it, or did the landlord kick everyone out because he got scared? If there's any official notification that you rented the place today, the man swung his fist to strike, the youngest and most brutal of the divine cult squad leaders. The commander of the berserk demon squad, Yui Hongryong, squad leader. The girl asked stopping his reckless behavior and stepping back. Turning to the gentleman, she asked does he even know who they are? He replied that it would be more difficult for him not to know who they were. The young master said they're all a bunch of lunatics who don't know any manners. You want to die. He doesn't seem like a man of ordinary status, and he doesn't seem like a man who is recklessly picking fights. It's funny. You're the one picking a fight with me. Sit down if you have something to say. Yu Hong asked why she should listen to him. Well, because when he looks down at her his neck hurts. Wow. Her demonic energy is pretty good. Seeing them talking, the establishment ran up to the squad leader, and said that they couldn't do that to him. Chang Wan asked him what he just said. Let him give him thirty reasons why he should touch him. Then he'll let him live. The man said that he, is the third young master of the divine cult. When will the food be ready? They're going to fill their bellies tonight. Bring the booze. Why is the third young lord here? He thought he was suffering from a chi blockage. Right, that's the condition he was in before they left, right? That must mean he's still weak. They'll act as soon as that bastard gets on the squad leader's nerves. But he's the third young lord. He's a potential successor. What can he do with a body that has returned from the gates of hell? Even if he's a candidate for successor, he's of no use if he's weak. That's where the divine cult is. If a potential demon lord candidate is beaten up by a combat unit, he won't even be able to say anything for the sake of his reputation. Girlfriend guess he knew they were gonna have dinner here. So, she'll just cut to the chase. What does he want from her? The mister is glad she's getting straight to the point. He doesn't like to beat around the bush either. They, uh, have to surrender to the bailiff's hall which he gives them. The girl doesn't think she knows what he's talking about. Even if they turned themselves in, it would just be considered a misdemeanor and would result in self-examination or a pay cut. It wouldn't be a big deal. The criminal courtroom won't be able to put them in jail for such a crime. He came out of nowhere and now he knows so much about them. The girl repeated, she doesn't know what he's talking about. She didn't commit any crimes. Then how can a berserk demon squad spend 1,000 plus nions on squad expenses every month? They, number one in brutality, not in strength. Even the first heavenly demon army only use 800 a month, and these guys spend over a thousand? Seo Yansim Center for Internal Enlightenment manages the cult's finances, among the information she gave him were budget documents showing the number of combat troops. There was no way a small unit like hers, made up of a group of out-of-control crazy bastards who came and went, could have a bigger budget than the main cult army. That must mean that they are getting extra money from someone else besides the budget from the cult. And all where there is only one person capable of such a despicable act. The Lord assumes they just happen to somehow get money at dinner or something, if they give up he won't pass on it much. But in return, they must give him the name of the man who gave them the money. He sees that he wasn't her target from the start. That she's being treated like a chess piece in a power struggle between the young lords is a bit annoying. She doesn't know where he got the rumors from, but he has no proof. If he came to pressure her, he should have at least brought proof. So a crime without evidence isn't a crime? Is it your hobby to complicate things that don't need complicating? The third young lord is the one who made it complicated. She distributed all the money she received from the fourth young lord to the members of her squad. Due to this, the cost of maintaining the squad is quite high. Everyone realizes you can't spend like that with only a seasoned budget. 
Not all of her subordinates are in favor of taking money from unidentified sources if they investigate their spending. If this happens, the Berserk Demon Squad will either be reorganized or disbanded. Does he really want to follow through? There's no point in him stopping. The master advised her to listen to his tone. He said everything would be fine as long as they didn't surrender. What, is she going to pull out her sword? The girl said she couldn't leave cuts on someone as important as him. She's saying it's okay to bruise? Great, she fell for it. After attacking the gentleman, one of the men said he'd do him first. Did the master put too much force into the blow? He didn't mean it. The girl didn't want any violence today because it's been a while since her squad has had a party. But he keeps crossing the line. It's fast and sharp. Clearly very good. It's the first dinner of the year. She can't forgive someone who disrupts such a joyous day. Even if that person is a demon lord's apprentice. The young gentleman told her to watch what she said. He wasn't the one who ruined the dinner. It was her stupid subordinate, and her, who because of her hubris won't admit her crime. Can he really talk? Then, he should have just stayed home and rested if he had recovered from the chi blockage. Why is he messing things up around here? Does she even know how long it's been? She clearly needs to pay a lot of attention to what's going on in the cult. She doesn't give a shit that he's the third young master. He's gonna die. Sure, go ahead. Rushing to the lord, the healer tried to tell him about the third young lord. But the man replied that he knew. The situation is not looking good. The fact that he went there at all, he's probably after me. The Lord is sure he's trying to drive a wedge between the demon squad leader and him. The healer asked, should he do something about it? The Lord said not to worry, the berserk demon squad leader doesn't have a chatty tongue. Rather, she would clamp down even harder if the third young Lord hurt her pride. So it's even better that they'll fight. Whether it's Syrian or Yu Hong Ryong. Neither of them will come out of this fight unscathed. It is said that the commander of the Berserk Demon Squad has mastered the Green Jade Demon art. They're in the building. He'd heard that if you get angry, you can go blind with rage. The rumors were true. The gentleman said he didn't mind fighting and all that, but don't mess with other people's property. He thinks they can just use the fourth young lord's money as compensation. You think this is funny, you piece of shit? Damn. That was a pretty hard hit. She had gotten even stronger. Too strong for him to just defend himself. The Lord understood why the fourth young Lord gave her money. And her fighting ability is worth it. However, she didn't seem like someone who could be influenced by money. The girl said she hadn't had such an exciting fight in a long time. So why she accepted his money the gentleman couldn't understand it. Berserk Demon Squad, Attention. Our precious dinner party has been ruined because of my personal business. I'll take care of it, even if it means being sent to the bailiff's hall, so enjoy the rest of your dinner party, as expected from a divine cult of celestial demons. It's full of interesting people. What a soulful organization. Yes, that's us. Was he too na Ivan in his reasoning? He didn't think such a talented person would take dubious money from four young lord 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 can forget about manipulating her. Should he just beat her enough to get her to listen to him? What's he doing here? I told him to stay outside. This could be very dangerous. Is he distracted when I stand in front of him? Master really underestimates her. It's an energy wave, she's going to use the power of the palm again. Stopping the girl, Saren asked can she attack a little later? His name is Goldie. He's his cute little furry friend. Let's take him to safety before we continue the fight. Is he messing with me? No, wait, Goldie, get out of there as soon as you can. She might hurt you. Six Force Heavenly Net Technique, Second Technique, Hypervision. Okay, he's got him, no time to dodge. He'll block the blow with his body. Did they see that? Such is the strength of the leader of the Berserk Demon Squad. Yu Hong Run. Now that the offender has been dealt with, let's have a real party. Enjoy yourselves, and us scum. He can't forgive her. Looks like his lineage is still doing great. Someone take the third young master to his residence. Hey, young master, why don't you go home instead of lying there? Squad leader, aren't you being a little harsh? 
How will he appear in public now? How dare she hurt my friend, sweet little golden? Don't hurt animals. Donpo must get the young master out of there before the fight becomes even more violent. He took a direct hit with the demonic art of green jade. How is he still standing? She didn't hold back at all in her demonic arts. Young master. Are you okay? You need to get out of here. Master told Dongpil no, let him not stop him. He won't leave here until he destroys everyone. Dongpil asked the girl does she even know who he is? Who cares? Who are you anyway? He, the third young lord of the divine cult, he has no part in this. Let him go. She obviously didn't expect the gentleman to approach her so quickly. What was that just now? She didn't see him move at all. She has over twelve years of experience in battles where she had to fight for her life and she couldn't even react? Did she think she could get out of here alive after raising her hands on Goldie? The girl said she was being polite because he's the third young lord. But does he really want to die? Wait a minute, that's a berserk demon's divine fist. Does this crazy woman really want to take the young master's life? Approaching the lord with a blow, she had no time to strike a single blow before he repelled her. And said that her blows were slow. The girl called him a little rat. Who are you calling a rat? Who else is a rat around here but you? She could easily defeat someone like him with her divine fist of a raging demon. Someone like him? Her demon Barserk demon divine fist couldn't break through his demonic energy? He's very strong. Are the demon lord's disciples really that strong? She had never encountered one this strong in any of her battles. Would this be the end of her life? Will she die after surviving countless dangers just because of some fox? Why do these guys look at her with such pity in their eyes? It's humiliating. Does she look pathetic because she couldn't do anything? She, the commander of the Berserk Demon Squad, Yui Hong Ryong. How strange that someone with the lineage of the Yui family joined their cult. The family was destroyed after the persecution of the divine cult. Whether it's the seven families or their side, no one likes her. As long as she could survive, she didn't care how she was treated. After her family died, she joined the divine cult. She was assigned to a unit called the Barserk Demon Squad which was said to be just a group of people the divine cult didn't care about. And even there, she was ignored for being an outsider. She's not going to condescend to him just because he's an adult. On countless battlefields, she killed and killed again. That's how she survived. Then, she had a death rattle with a former squad leader, and finally rose to the position of a berserk demon squad leader. The berserk demon squad became a family for her to lead and protect. No one in the sect dared speak their name in passing. But is she gonna die in here? Wow, look at her. She pulled herself together when she was beaten, huh? The master admits she's strong. The girl said not to underestimate her. She's the leader of the berserk demon squad, Yui Hong Ryong. Her sword aura is blue, she is at the level where her sword follows her will. What a magnificent sword. Then, as a martial arts master practicing ball wielding, it would be right for him to also use his, what this sword can do. The young master understands Hung Ryong's feelings due to his hypersensitivity. They are anger, anxiety, shock, stubbornness. Could it be a sense of honor, of loss, or could it be a confession? Does she realize she's already lost? The man thought she had lost her mind, but she seemed to have some sanity left. Then as the winner, he would teach her a lesson. She doesn't understand what the young master is capable of. Let her watch carefully. The arm of the steel wall. How did she get through a steel wall? Impressive. Even though he did everything in a hurry, he still used a lot of dark shadow chi. Steel wall hand is a hand technique from the Chronicles of Myriad Realms. This skill goes against the explosive mountain punch, which increases internal strength. It's a deadly technique that turns your hand into something resembling steel to destroy anything it touches. She must be much better with swords than he expected since she was able to break through the steel wall and wound his arm. The young master shouted to her that it was amazing, but this was her end here. She had used all her strength for that sword aura and she was already barely on her feet. He said he was giving her a choice. 
Either she gives up and says she got the money from the fourth young gentleman, or gives his life for showing disrespect to a third young master and attempting to kill him, looking at him with her one eye, she shouted at him to shut her filthy mouth. The man realized that she didn't like the fact that someone had suddenly come and started telling her what to do. He drew his sword. The young master said he behaved rudely, oblivious to her fragile ego. And no more idle chatter, he would end it here and now. After saying goodbye to her he swung his sword and slashed at her black patch over her left eye. The master told her that she had behaved like a rabid dog and now she was like an obedient sheep. He asked why the evasion? She replied that she could not. Does she accept death? The Lord asked. The losers must die. That's the way it goes. All the battles she has fought have been decided by the death of one of the combatants. She had no carefree life to regret anything now on the brink of death. She knew that one day she would die by someone else's hand, like all those she had killed. And this is going to happen today? Asked the young gentleman. She said she didn't know, and there was no point in it. He lightly tickled her face with his fist and said it was for disrespect and other offenses. The girl replied not to let him think that she would be his obedient dog just because he had spared her. The master didn't intend to, he took the bait himself. He was going to use it to pressure the fourth young master, but it turned out that they fought to the death. The gentleman apologized and gave the money to the head of the establishment. It should be enough for the repairs. If he heard that she stole money from him, he would really kill her. Ta asked, does he think she's some hooligan off the street? She wouldn't do that. The young gentleman shouted that the hooligans were holy people compared to them and called her a fool. He turned to Donpil and said that it was time for them to go. They piled up and left the place. The attendant asked the commander if she was okay. Yoon Hong Ryong replied that unfortunately she wasn't. Let her clean up a bit and order drinks. There's no need to finish dinner, the guys are still waiting. She thought all young gentlemen were vile cheats, but this third one was not like that at all. How dare he even dare to call her a fool? He's an idiot himself with only brute strength. How did Syrian know? He was convinced that the transfer of the money to the commander of the raging demon squad had remained a secret. They say all secrets come to light but this secret shouldn't have come out so quickly. The only one who could know about it was that pretty girl with the big eyes, the master of enlightenment. She'd said she wouldn't get involved in the air's squabbles. But could Syrian make her change her mind? But, now it doesn't matter anymore. Pretty soon, no one will see him. And it will finally be over. His incense filled with concentrated deadly poison will send smoke into his lungs, which will paralyze his body, and he will die in agony. It's terrible that the seventh young mistress isn't better. She didn't even eat much today. It's really bad. Now she can't even sleep without that incense. The maid was ordered to light this by the bedside of the third young gentleman as he slept. The man told her not to ask too many questions. Let her run this errand. But how can she put something by the young master's bed if she doesn't even know what's there? She can't do that. In this case, after two days, the parasite in her body will take effect. If she does not take the antidote in time, she will suffer unbearably. It's not about whether or not she can. She doesn't have a choice. She has to do this if she wants to live, shouted the master. The maid asked what he had called her for. He asked for some food for the golden boy. She nodded her head and said she'd bring everything over right away. It seemed strange to the man. Anhua looked kind of tired lately. Sweetly stroking the fox cub, the lord told her to let it wait for a while. He didn't understand why he was so upset then. He was so attached to him without even realizing it. And that chi, as if they were connected to him. No, that's most likely complete nonsense. Sharing chi with a beast? How did he even think of such a thing? But, however, he's no ordinary animal. And what powers he has, he doesn't know yet. Stop looking at me like that. We're from the criminal court. Someone shouted from outside. Please open the door, third young master. Dolpin came into the room and said that the criminal court was looking for him. He asked why they wanted him. 
he replied that the commander of the Raging Demon Squad had surrendered. She made up her mind and confessed to disrespecting the third young master and attempted murder. And why did she do it? Asked the Lord. Didn't he say that he forgave her all her crimes for that blow? She replied that yes, there was such a thing. But the young master didn't understand, then why she was making all this fuss and annoying him. Was it her choice? Without thinking for a long time, she said that's probably why she's sitting here. It's a personal choice. There is no forgiveness for attempting to murder a young lord or lady. As soon as she admits she did it, her head will be chopped off. If she didn't want to live anymore, why didn't she tell him? He could have killed her back then. The commander said she could do it right now if she wanted to. The master yelled that she was really out of her mind. Let her pull herself together. The young gentleman assures me he didn't hit her on the head. There's something wrong with her. The girl said he did, and very hard. Stop talking nonsense. Let her say what she's really up to. But she has no reason to tell. It can't be like that. Could it be about the fourth young master? To keep his promise? But if she wanted to keep her mouth shut, she should have gone all the way. Why confess and make him come all the way out here? She's good, though. There's a reason she's the commander of the Raging Demon Squad. The young lord called out to the guard and ordered that the fierce demon squad leader be released right away. The guard was shocked because she had confessed to the attempted assassination. Master only taught her a lesson because he liked her. Even if she's insane, she's still a cult follower. Do you think she would try to kill a disciple of a demon lord? What would be the point? The guard stood in a stupor and didn't understand what was going on. It's all true, but what about the witnesses and the situation? The gentleman replied to him that the person involved in what happened says it is not true. What more proof do you need? The guard said he would release the commander right away. The guy asked her if she liked to drink. Let her come over when she has time. And don't forget to bring your own snacks so you don't burden his servant with work. Donpil asked the young lord why he thought the commander of the demon berserk squad did that. He replied that she did it to live. He recognized that she had taken money from the fourth young master. She can't admit to taking his money when she promised him she wouldn't, and she can't let her squad members get involved. Given her character, she would probably prefer to kill herself rather than let her subordinates be punished as well. Dongpeng didn't understand what was wrong, because back then, the master had left the place after the fight. She could just not confess and pretend that nothing happened. Too many people had witnessed the battle for that option. The restaurant was destroyed. Someone had to take responsibility and contact the criminal law department, or things would have gotten worse. Besides, besides him and the witnesses, Yui Hornryong has another threat to worry about. It's the fourth young lord, Hong Iman. She had fought him, and if the incident ended like this, the fourth young master would think that Shea had taken his side. If he spread rumors that the demon berserk squad had accepted the bribe, both she and her squad members would suffer. Therefore, confessing in the criminal law hall was the best way out for Yun Hong Ryong. That way, the fourth young master wouldn't have any suspicions, and the other witnesses would consider the incident to be over. Since she had taken all the blame, her subordinates were also safe. But the charge is to disrespect and attempt to murder the third young lord. All she has to do is say a few words and she'll be dead. Why would she risk her life? Master thought it was reckless of her too, but perhaps that was how she lived her life. Thinking that every day could be her last. She is eccentric, but is a person who takes very good care of her subordinates. I wonder if the Lord had learned all this about her. How could he have such insight at such a young age? Sometimes Dongpil feels like the young master is more mature and older than him. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door. It was Yun Hong Ryong. Someone promised her a drink, she said, holding two bags of snacks. The men were shocked at what Yun Hong had brought. Did she really do all this? Asked the young master. It looks really good. The girl said that yes, she is a very good cook. And if something is wrong, they don't have to eat it. The young master thought she was the craziest in the entire divine cult. And now she's the best chef. Despite their resentment, they finally sat down at the table. 
Yun Hong poured herself a full bowl of drink and said that drinking from a small glass didn't allow her to taste the alcohol. The master looked at it and didn't understand how it was possible. It is such a strong drink. It seemed strange to the girl why the Lord servant was standing just like that next to him. The young gentleman told Donpil if he was not going to join them, why didn't he go and rest instead of standing there? He replied that he could not do that. Who knows if the berserk demon squad leader will suddenly go crazy. This time, he'll definitely stop her. Smiling sweetly, the girl said, would an eggplant like that be able to stop her? He should know his place. The young lord replied to her that considering the state she was in now, he thought Dongpil could easily defeat her. Don't underestimate him. The girl loudly shouted that it was nonsense. She is the commander of the demon berserk squad after all. Why, then, had she, as soon as she was free, come to him at once, instead of going to rest? Would something bad happen to her if the fourth young master knew she was here? The girl replied that now was not the time to worry about her. Perhaps the lord was in more danger than she was. The fourth young lord knows how to use dirty tricks. As far as she knows, there are more people who are secretly under his control. These are people who will do anything to get paid. Meanwhile, at the fourth lord's estate, the aide asked the lord if he should contact the true demon squad leader, the one replied that there was no need for that. If the berserk demon squad leader couldn't defeat Siorian, it would be the same with the true demon squad leader. It was a bad idea to call him out. However, it was released thanks to the third young master. The fourth lord had considered the possibility that the berserk demon squad leader would betray him, but he didn't need to care about that right now. In any case, what's going on with the poison incense, he asked. The physician replied that the maid had not reported anything for two days. Then in that case the gentleman would give him another present. The fourth lord hoped that he would like it. While the third young lord was portraying himself as arrogant and all-powerful, he probably hadn't even looked inside his own house. The lord will show him what it's like to be a helpless Saurian. The fourth lord has bribed several people, and some of them are after his life, the girl said. But why would the gentleman want to know all that, because if you look at the technical side, she's one of them. Yun Hong Ryong said it was her payment, she was obligated to tell. Holding out her plate, the girl asked to fill it. After finishing his drink, the young master decided to practice a bit. She came up to Donpil and asked if she could ask him something. Is he always like this? The man warned that she had better refrain from criticizing the young master in front of her. She said she hadn't even thought about it. But then what is it about, he asked. What is she interested in? The master is just showing them how he trains. The girl said she was going to leave. He in turn offered to stay to watch if she wanted to. She was very surprised. Donpil told me that there is something that the Lord always says. There is no world more dangerous than Murim, so if this is a world where you can only survive by remaining vigilant. He will prefer to show both his strengths and weaknesses. But what's the point of that? The girl asked. The master said that in this way he keeps his guard up and does not lose his head. Sometimes he feels anxious. True freedom begins with honesty. Since his path is already set, regardless of what others see or say, he will go his own way. The girl had never met anyone like him. And she had never known that someone with such a mindset actually existed. Donpil said that age never mattered when it came to learning. Even if he wouldn't concentrate on using the sky exaltation technique right now, it would blend well with the demonic arts. The Lord originally wasn't going to do anything with the heaven-raising technique he learned as an assassin, as he wanted to focus on the demonic dark shadow art. Now it was perfect, but there was no need for him to abandon the assassin technique for the sake of studying demonic arts. It was presumptuous of him to think of such a division of martial arts. If he wants to kill, it will be an assassin technique. If not, it's a suppression technique. It all depends on who he's dealing with. By studying other martial arts, he has broadened his horizons, and now he has more opportunities to utilize martial arts. After finishing the workout, the gentleman asked the guys if they knew what helped with hangovers. The girl suggested a drink for a hangover. The young master asked the girl if she wanted to drink again. 
She said that there is a fact that hangovers can be treated with alcohol. The guy suggested Anva's hangover soup, it's the best. He hopes she's still awake. Yoon Hong Ryong didn't lose hope, and offered another drink. The young master said no. Let her go home and drink if she wanted it so badly. But unfortunately disaster struck. The girl lay on the cold floor and moaned in pain. The master was shocked by what he saw. He ran up to her and asked what was wrong with her. Anhua said she had a very bad stomachache. Taking her hand, the young lord immediately realized that she had an internal injury. Something inside Anva was being eaten alive. Shedding a tear she said she couldn't do it. Couldn't do it like they told her to do it. The master didn't know what she was talking about. Maybe she was already delirious. The girl began to cough violently. Her condition was rapidly deteriorating. The master took her in his arms and told her that he had to save her life first. All the preparations for the Mara festival are complete. Even if any small changes need to be made, they will immediately handle them without any problem. The demon lord told the man it was a good job and asked if he would like a drink. He replied that it would be an honor. The demon lord said it was a very good fengjiu drink. The man thanked him and asked what about the third one. He hadn't heard from him since the incident with the berserk demon squad leader. The lord hadn't asked about what he was doing. The man didn't immediately understand what the gentleman wanted to know. He asked about his changes, that was all for now. Told that nothing was currently known about the third young gentleman. The gentleman replied that it was good. He wondered, not that the jackal had chosen the third, but the other way around? Or maybe it was just fate. The jackal, unlike other creatures brought into reality from the imagination of the man who created the secluded bamboo grove. The jackal, a real mystical creature that repeats the cycle of life and death. When he leaves his old body and returns to his newborn state, it absorbs all the life force from the environment. Because of this, it is considered one of the most evil creatures in the world. But there is another real reason why the jackal is considered evil. The fact is that wherever the jackal appears, there is bound to be a war in that country. Because of the legend that the jackal absorbs life force and causes wars, it is considered the worst scourge on earth. The third lord sat next to Anhua and thought. This was a poisonous energy. Undoubtedly, she belonged to the poisonous insects. Her internal injuries were not serious enough to be life-threatening yet. However, as a young maid without any combat skills, she wouldn't be able to last long with this poisonous energy in her. He needs to destroy the poisonous insect. He would have to use the boundless technique purification technique first to maximize the healing power of its body. He noticed that Anhua seemed preoccupied for the past few days, could it be because of that? Poisonous insects cause you to lose your mind. He's well aware of that. The third lord didn't understand who could do such a cruel and despicable thing to a young servant girl. The guy saw it come out. A poisonous insect with slow corrosion. They weren't just trying to hurt her. It is a poisonous insect that is used to threaten human life in order to enslave them. It's kind of like a blood parasite. Whoever did this must have been trying to intimidate Anhua into hurting the lord. There is only one person who could have pursued him in such a despicable way. Yoon Hong Ryong thought it was the fourth young master, Hong Iman. Dongpil asked what she meant. Does she mean that Anhua is a spy infiltrated by the fourth young master? The girl replied that she didn't know about it, but it was incense, she had seen the same thing in the fourth young lord's residence. The fact that it was found in the servant's possession means something. Since she was struck by a poisonous insect, perhaps she was threatened? She must have known her life was in danger, but still disobeyed the order. The third young lord has a very loyal servant. Dongpil asked, why would a fourth young master do such a thing? The girl asked, is he really part of a divine cult? There is only one reason. Yun Hong Ryong said it's a struggle for the succession. If all the other disciples disappeared, the last one left would naturally become the demon lord. The young master asked Xin Hua, is he worried about how the young lord would react? The man replied that he was. He told him not to worry, because he is always prepared for the worst. The man doesn't know what worst-case scenario he has in mind. But if it happens, the responsibility for it will fall on him, so please let him refuse it. Let him stop worrying needlessly. 
it's not going to happen. He made plans for every possible action Siorian could take. In any case, it was about time he did something about it. Xin Hui said that he had placed people around the third young lord's residence. He was sure that soon, before he could say anything, they heard an explosion. The third young lord shouted to Hong Iman to come out immediately. Enough of him hiding like a bug. He said it was very rude behavior on the part of the guest. Isn't he ashamed of himself? As a young lord of a divine cult, he should behave with dignity and grace. The third young lord asked, dignified and graceful? The fourth lord asked, what had brought him there? And with such an amused expression on his face, the guy punched him and he flew off to the side. The fourth lord said that he was a little nervous because he had heard that he had become a different person after waking up from the chi blockage. But it seems that those were false rumors. He turned out to be the same old bully, acting rashly and carelessly. The third lord told him to stop talking nonsense. He's going to cut off his dirty hand that does such tricks. The fourth master said fine, he started this fight, so don't let him expect to be treated with respect just because he's Hyun Nim. Eight months ago he was no different from a corpse, and now he's so arrogant. She'll find out where that arrogance comes from. The third master wondered, is this the demonic art of the Ziaxa family? It is fast, the strength of this demonic art lies in its speed. But its strength is not very significant. However, his footwork technique is very good. This level of footwork technique at his age? The guy thought that there was a reason he had become the demon lord's disciple. However, that was nothing compared to him. The fourth master said that he used a completely unique foot technique. But that didn't mean anything to him. Third master thought that his movements were as obvious as ever. The guy noticed his fingernails. As it turned out, there was poison under them. He hit the third lord with all his might and shouted for him to die. The fourth young master injected the poison directly into his body. If he uses demonic energy to burn the poison, he will burn his organs as well. He will be in so much pain that he will want to die, but that's the only thing he can do if he wants to live. Become a cripple like before, and live like a corpse again. But then the fourth master saw that he was moving. Spreading out all the slivers, the guy asked, did he really think he could defeat him with such poison? Did he realize that the third young lord had neutralized the snake king's demonic art snake venom? That's impossible. The boy thought he was able to perform tasks even with broken limbs and holes in his stomach. To withstand that much poison was nothing. The fourth master wondered, what is this chi wave? It wasn't just a powerful demonic energy. This feeling of alienation and terror is what he expected to experience from meeting the great nine demonic elders. Perhaps he had reached the highest stage of a demon? The black guards of the criminal law hall appeared abruptly. After introducing himself, the seventh captain said that the young master would have to go to the criminal law hall with them. The third master didn't understand how they had gotten there so quickly. It was as if someone knew this was going to happen. The fourth gentleman was told too. Shin Wei thought that it was him. This little rat knew that the situation would not be in the fourth young lord's favor and had prepared in advance. Approaching the man, the third young lord told him that this was the same poisonous insect he had fed Anva. He had taken it with him because he wanted it back so badly. He'd have to worry about swallowing it, since the guy would shove it deep into his mouth. The fourth master shouted to see Orion to stop it immediately. He said that's right, the fourth young master he serves has a poison, so he'll have an antidote for that. He'll recover in a few days and come back with another poison in his hands. Then he would do such senseless things. He just took that poisonous insect and stuck it in his ear. After that, he said he was done and they could go to the criminal law room. But could they hang on to the ropes? he has sensitive skin. The criminal law ass of a celestial demon divine cult. Are they done with the interrogation, where is the man taking him? It's not in the direction of the prison where Yui Horn Ryung was held. The poison he suppressed with demonic energy began to spread. Hong Yuamun used martial arts related to poison. The incense he used was definitely some sort of hallucinogen with a dash of poison. He probably practiced his martial arts by fighting imaginary opponents in these hallucinations. Is this how the Chalks family trains? 
He had indeed heard that there were many strange techniques in the demonic arts, but this was a rather unique approach. It'll take him a while to really understand it. The man told the third young gentleman that they were in position. The boy sensed the presence of two people behind the door. One of them is definitely Hong Iman. However, the other was very vague, dull but soft. Hard but soft. There was a very unpleasant energy. He wanted to look at their faces first. The man asked, Is he here? The guy asked him a counter question. Is he the master of the criminal law hall? Guo Gu replied that yes, he is the master of the criminal law hall. As for the first impression, he looks like the most ordinary person. However, everything is not as it seems. His appearance is ordinary. He also doesn't sense anything unique about his energy. But that's why he feels the man is an unusual person. Guo Gu said that in any case, the guy had traveled a long way there, so let him sit down. Isn't he tired after the interrogation? A third young gentleman replied that he could not sit there. The man asked why, what was wrong? He said there must be some reason why he had called them both there. He doesn't know what it is, but he has no intention of communicating with a man who hides his inner self. The guy said it was definitely a unique mask. All blackguards wear masks, but he didn't feel any ambiguity. But he's not like the others. Guogu asked, how is he different from everyone else? The third master replied that this was his real face, but he was wearing a mask. It's ten, no, a hundred times thicker than the masks worn by black guards. Isn't it obvious, he's hiding himself? The fourth gentleman didn't understand what they were talking about. Guo Gu said he was very impressed. It was the mystical art of bone reduction. The man said he was the third person to notice it. What does he think now? Satisfied? The guy wondered, is this the real master of the criminal law room? He wondered how he had survived eight months in a secluded bamboo grove. It seems his unrivaled perception played a big part. The guy said it was nothing. The third master suggested just getting to the point. Looking at Siorian, did he think he'd seen the true face of the master of the criminal law hall? Guo Gu said he would get to the point. He called them there because of the conflict between them. The guy said the interrogation is over, the incident is over. What else is hard to talk about? He would like them both to promise that from now on there would be no more conflicts. The fourth master said that he never wanted any conflict. And even if that was what he wanted, who was he to tell him what to do? He's the demon lord's apprentice. He has no reason to obey anyone's orders except the demon lord himself. Gu 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 replied that he was right, he had no authority to impose anything on him. Likewise, they have no authority to subjugate others. Nevertheless, he tried to use money to control the commander of the combat unit. Hitting his fist on the table, Guo Gu said that there was no need to deny it. The evidence is more than enough. He is sure that the fourth master knows better than anyone else that the world is not so straightforward, where everything flows according to superficial things like position, status, and relationships. The guy asked if the master of the criminal courtroom was threatening him. The man said that's right. The criminal law hall upholds the laws of the cult along with the guardian court, but they are different in nature. The court of the guardians focuses on communication and reception. In other words, they have no choice but to act passively, but they're different. They are an organization that actively protects the cult. They impose punishments as they see fit, as well as administering judgment in major cases. Of course that doesn't mean he has the right to impose anything on the two of them, but as someone who actively defends the cult, he could give them both an experience they never had before. He asked the third young gentleman what he would say to that. The guy asked what it was about. About not creating more conflict? He said okay, it's no big deal. He tells them just in case, but he's not kidding. The third master asks who would want to make an enemy in the criminal law room? It's certainly not him. He doesn't want to go to war with anyone either. It's better to live in peace. Anyway, he said it was delicious. He'd never tasted anything like it. Asking what is it called? Guo Gu said he made it himself. The third master replied that he is indeed skillful. 
Did he have any intention of selling it? The man replied that if he wanted to, he could send him some bottles to his house. The boy said that we would look for something to send in return. Guogu said that no matter what, what about the fourth young master? With anger in his eyes, he stood up and shouted out that he would never forget this humiliation. The third young gentleman asked the fourth to at least close the door on his way out. The master of the criminal law hall has said everything he wants to say. Was there anything else the third master wanted to talk to him about? After thanking him for the drink, he said there was one more thing he wanted to talk about. He realizes how good his mystical bone reduction arts are, but was there a reason he used them to meet them? He doesn't seem like the type to test people or prank them. He has to answer her if he doesn't want to. The third gentleman said that in that case, it had been a very long time since Go Gu had encountered someone so hard to read. And he had a familiar scent, maybe it was him too. The young gentleman was told that the carriage was ready. He replied that he had something to think about, so he would go back alone. The fourth master didn't understand how a simple master of the criminal law hall could threaten the young lord of the divine cult. He's mistaken if he thinks the fourth lord will let it go. Siorian will be receiving a return gift soon enough. He'll make sure no one gets in his way. He will act slowly and precisely. That's when someone said look at that bloodlust in his eyes. He seems to be ready to kill someone right now. The fourth lord didn't immediately realize who it was. Then he saw the third young lord who suggested that he come over and have a drink together. He said the criminal law hall master is a bit annoying, but is certainly good at making alcohol. The fourth young gentleman wondered what the guy was planning. Was he going to do something there on the grounds of the criminal law hall? The third master told him not to worry, he just offered him a drink to celebrate his release from interrogation. He doesn't know when it started, but he's so annoyed by the occasion his voice. Has it been since he took away the master of the Inner Enlightenment Center that night? That's when all his plans started to go awry. The fourth gentleman asked what he wanted to talk about. The third gentleman replied that it was nothing in particular. It just seemed to him that they had never had a normal conversation. They talked a lot, at least as children. The third master asked, did they really? That after they grew up, they never had a proper conversation? The third master asked if he intended to continue to behave in this way. Why does he want to make life difficult for himself? The fourth young gentleman said he's not asking because he really wants to know, is he? Isn't that obvious? All seven of them, siblings, must fight one day. No, as soon as they became disciples of the demon lord, they immediately became enemies. That's when the fight started. Why is he even asking about it? The third lord replied that of course they should fight, but there was no need to kill, was there? He left him just to have a conversation. The third young master just wanted to hear what he thought at the moment. He replied that he would realize it when he looked at the kings of this country. The fate of the kings who failed to become emperors was that they lived miserable lives. Better to be dead. It's different for them. To avoid a similar fate, one must kill even one's own siblings to become a ruler. The third lord asked, is that what he is afraid of? Does he want power, or does he kill because he is afraid of being killed? He loses his appetite, if he called a fourth just to ask such questions, he leaves. The third young master meant what the criminal law hall master said. He doesn't want to live a life full of battles and chaos. What is he going to do? Is he going to try to kill him again? The fourth asked, what if his answer was yes? Then the third lord would leave it to chance. However, things will not go the way he wants them to. What would his answer be after that? If there's no point in lying, he'll respond the same way. One day, he'll kill him for sure. For thought it was another ambush. He won't fall for it twice. The fourth master himself said he would kill him one day, did he think the guy would let him go after hearing such an answer? He'll kill him right here and now. Both young lords left. The fourth young lord is not going to heed his warning. The cult won't be swayed by incidents created by someone like him. But he doesn't know how the third young lord will act. Then the captain of the third guard knocked on the door. He said it was urgent. The master asked what was wrong. 
he replied that apparently the third and fourth young lords were fighting. Since the third lord attacked first, he allowed the fourth lord to make the next attack. The fourth lord asked how dare Siorian underestimate him. The guy replied that his martial arts technique certainly takes time to train. That's why he can't react properly to an ambush attack. The third young master is asking to be killed himself. He made a mistake. He will kill him. He said the fourth lord is pretty self-made. How is he going to kill someone with that technique? As expected of a disciple of Li Chongsan. He is definitely stronger than the commander of the berserk demon squad. The guy is confident that he could kill Yui Hong Ryong within ten moves. Not that he can't beat him. But the poison from earlier is getting in his way. He can't finish this fight until he deals with it. The fourth young gentleman called the guy a bastard. He replied that his tone was very disrespectful. Li Xianshan shouted that as if he deserved respect. He would just destroy his calmness. The guy said he should be faster. How is he going to do anything if he's so slow? The fourth gentleman lost sight of him. The guy said he's right in front of him. He's only gonna show him once, so let him open his eyes wide. What footwork should be? Does he understand it now? The technique of elevating the heavens. The fourth master didn't understand how, for he couldn't see the movements at all. The third young lord said that it was enough. The dynamics between the divine nine heavens compression steps, heaven exaltation technique, and demonic dark shadow art are quite good. He was sure of it, but he hadn't had a chance to check in a real situation. Now he was definitely sure. The fourth master said he was an arrogant bastard, how could he use him to test his martial arts? Don't let him expect his death to be peaceful. The third lord said it was useless. This kind of attack won't work on him. Doesn't he realize that, even seeing his footwork? The fourth lord said that Siorian hadn't changed at all, he still looked down on him. He always looked down on everyone, he never had a chance to look up. As soon as he did so, the fourth master attacked. It was the largest form of the poisonous snake shadow palm. Then, he would be able to dodge it as well. Why don't he try working with his legs? The poison of the poison palm would be absorbed into the wounds he had inflicted on his torso earlier. He won't survive it, because he poured all the deadly poison into him. Now let him die fighting the poison. The poison penetrates his skin and hurts even if he holds his breath. To think he was hiding such a monstrous technique. He needs to get out of this as soon as possible. Just then, the third young gentleman heard himself being asked for help. It was Anhua, how did she get there? She said she felt her body burning. She asked him to save her. She's recovering from a serious injury. She shouldn't move around yet. It's the fourth young master pretending to be Anhua. He didn't realize what now. A secret demon queen? How did she end up here? She said that now that he had no arms and legs, it was time to do his head. He didn't realize what had happened. The fourth master said how pathetic. Let him look at himself struggling in the illusion of the poisonous palm of the serpent's shadow. Guy said it's a pity he's the only spectator. His arrogance always gets him into trouble. He would kill him right here, just as the third lord had promised him. He might come back and become a nuisance if he didn't take care to kill him here. The fourth young master didn't understand how he got rid of his illusions. He had completely surrendered to it. The third young master said that looking at his face was like being thrown into cold water. He asked, is this the secret martial arts technique he's been hiding all this time? It is as insidious and evil as its master. Did he really think he could achieve power with such a milky trickery? The third lord had completely destroyed his poisonous snake shadow palm from his body. This was all thanks to the poison he had sent him earlier. When he was an assassin, he trained his resilience to never succumb to poison. Because of this, he was able to quickly leave the illusion of the fourth young lord. He is grateful for all the training he went through to disarm the blood parasite. The fourth didn't know what he was talking about. He must be at the level of the demonic elders to be able to disarm his poisonous snake shadow palm. Even then, it couldn't be done so quickly. The third young gentleman replied that it had taken a little longer than he had expected, but it wasn't really an accomplishment worth mentioning. 
However, it did create more problems for him than he expected. The kid would show him what the real demonic arts were all about, a true revelation of the demonic art of the dark shadow. Underground Prison, Spirit Gate Guardian The ninth technique of the resilient disaster blade of the first form of the six successive infernal winds. The fourth young master didn't realize what it was, he didn't even swing his sword. He just stands there, but the fourth young master's body is torn to pieces. He tears the energy barrier of his demonic snake king art as if it were just a piece of paper. He doesn't even move. The guy asked the goddamn body to move. Let him run and decapitate the damn bastard. The third master said he was done for, a triple blow cutting through the heavens. The third master asked if he wanted to say any last words? Of course not, what would he say? This is what it means to die. Human lives dissipate senselessly like the smoke from the tobacco he smokes all the time. Taking out his sword, the third lord told him goodbye. That's when his sword was stopped by some formless energy. Criminal law hall master that the third young lord had agreed not to cause any more trouble. He couldn't look at it anymore, let go of the sword now. The boy wondered, an object capturing the void? A skill that allows you to control the movement of an object without touching it. This is a skill that requires advanced knowledge of martial arts. The third young gentleman replied that he couldn't stand the foul taste in his mouth. Why should he be nice to someone who could have killed him? The master of the criminal law hall is so nasty. Guo Gu replied that because they are still in their territory. Even if they are young lords, he can't agree to have them fight there. The third master asked, he doesn't seem to know his place. He wants them to tremble with fear in front of the criminal law room, regardless of their status. The third lord said he didn't want to do it. What now? Guo Gu saw that he had broken the internal energy chain in just one attack. The man asked if they intended to confront the criminal law hall and could take responsibility for it. The third young lord replied that this was something they should accept. He is fast, his demonic energy level is comparable to that of the highest peak but his demonic art skills are not up to it. But this skill was different from the others. Its speed and movements were on par with Guagu. The Ninefold Elastic Disaster Blade Technique The second form of the final endless path, he saw the blade-wielding technique. Ruthless energy, it was very hot. If he reacted a little slower, he would have burned to the ground. Guagu had used up too much internal energy. If he used a stronger demonic art next time, he wouldn't survive it. The man didn't understand why there wasn't another attack. An experienced man like him would not miss such a chance. This was when the criminal law hall master realized that he had not been his target from the beginning. Before he could even shout, the third lord had pierced the body of the fourth young lord with his sword. He's thought about it and thinks the fourth lord should lose everything he has. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth blocking chi for blocking chi, despair for despair. He destroyed the poison core that was higher than his energy core. His muscles became small and weak. It's because he maintained his muscles using mystic arts instead of training his body. It's a restriction for raising his martial prowess using only illusions. He won't die immediately, but he'll be bedridden for several years. Of course, even if he manages to recover, he will have to start martial arts training from the beginning. Third master will send him some medicine and acupuncture needles. Backup arrived at the hall master's house. A third young gentleman raised his hands and said he could arrest him. The guy asked if the man would say anything. Would he at least take it all off before talking? His wrists don't feel as good in them. He's not going to run away anyway. Guogu said that the third master is currently in detention. This means that he is a criminal, even if only temporarily. Therefore, the man of course cannot fulfill this request. The criminal law hall master said he didn't know how the third master heard it, but that's what he meant when he said it would be complicated. The third master said he was so narrow-minded. Whether as a criminal law hall master or as a private person, he doesn't want to conflict within the cult. That's why he became a mediator, isn't that right? Guogu replied that is correct. Siorayan asked, now there won't be any more conflict is that right or is he wrong? It takes more than one person to create a conflict, but Hongyuaman is incapacitated right now. 
so his suggestion is no longer valid. Either way, the situation now is what he wanted it to be. So why does he say it's more complicated now? Watching this, Guo Gu was surprised, he had broken the forbidden sea iron so easily. The third young lord told the man that if he didn't respect him, he would have escaped from there before he even put those handcuffs on him. Methinks he did his best to be patient, given his status as the third young master. Guo Gu asked what he would do if he wasn't released. The guy replied that he didn't think the man liked to prolong conversations with meaningless theoretical situations, but apparently he was wrong. Now could he leave? The master of the criminal law hall said he'd keep an eye on him. He said sure, but don't let him get in the way, he doesn't want to antagonize the criminal law hall. The man replied that he was really confident. He had not yet been named as a successor, but was just one of many candidates. Guo Gu thought, what a complex person, and dangerous on top of that. The third young lord's martial arts were more powerful and more brutal than the demon cult's martial arts, and this sword technique definitely belonged to the orthodox faction. How could the third young lord, could he be the same as Guo Gu? The third master ate like a madman. Yun Hong Ryong told him to take his time, no one would steal it from him. She asked if he had been fed in the criminal law hall. The third young gentleman said they only served stale rice and wild vegetables. He couldn't eat that. Donpil asked, is it finished then? The boy replied that, for now, yes. Will there be retribution from the fourth young lord or the higher officials? He said that Hong Yuaman has become crippled and can't even move. The top leadership turns away when it comes to the fight between candidates, so he doesn't think anything will happen. Now that things are somewhat settled, they should all go back to their organizations. Especially Dongpil, he's been with him too long. He's not just a regular member of the Court of Guardians, he's the third leader. He better get back to work. Squad leader Yui needs to return to duty as well. The girl said that's exactly what she was doing. She didn't need him to say anything. The third lord replied that then they should continue to do it as before. I said he was so heartless. Did he really have to leave so indifferently? The girl asked Dongpil, was he upset too? He said he wasn't. Then what was wrong with his facial expression? Dongpil replied that it was just very much like the young master was saying goodbye to them for the last time. When he went outside, the boy saw Anhua. He said he was already back and asked if it was normal for her to move around. Falling to her knees, the girl began to thank the third young master for her rescue. She was glad that he had returned safely. The king of the demonic cult asked the man how the fourth man was doing. The man replied that he was in very bad shape. His energy core is destroyed and the poison is taking over his body. He is hanging on by his physical strength, but even if he is lucky, he can hardly avoid being crippled. The king asked that he had managed to survive, what was the likelihood of recovery? The man replied that the doctors of the Blood Spirit Pavilion had concluded that it was basically impossible. Even if they were able to heal the poison and internal injuries, the energy core would be too badly damaged for it to return to its former state. The demon king thought the third lord would kill him, but he actually let him live? Why did the third change his mind at that moment? Did he want the fourth to suffer the same fate? A face-to-face -face meeting with the master of the Center of Inner Enlightenment, a fight with the commander of the Berserk Demon Squad, and now a fight in the criminal law hall as well. The third had created more chaos in the past few days than was possible for one person. But what's important is that in all this chaos, he managed to achieve his goals. This is how one side in the struggle for the succession collapses. The son of the patriarch Zha Exe, who had as much talent as any other child. When did it start that intelligence became a vice and a bright personality a mask? The fourth had become as cunning as a poisonous viper, like all those who had inherited the true blood of the Xia family. But that was fine. It didn't matter what a person's personality was as long as their talents flourished. The problem was that Hong Yumun didn't pay proper attention to his talents. He did the bare minimum. He was strong for his age, but nothing more. That's why he lost. But the third one is completely different. There was a time when he was like the fourth, but after awakening from the qi blockage, 
he began to strive to do more, not less. It was a big but significant difference that decided the outcome of their duel. The strongest showed himself, Anhua shouted to the third young master that they had a visitor. The center master said that it had been a long time and asked how the third young master was doing. The guy asked what brought her there. He wondered what this time, since there was nothing unresolved between them anymore. She said she'd like to ask him a favor. Could he come to her house, if he had time? The third didn't immediately understand what she meant. The master said that it was a martial arts method he had taught her. It's only been a short time, but there's already a difference. It's a very mystical martial art. He was surprised, because for most people, it's not easy. They must be very talented. She herself had chosen this child as her successor. The third asked if it was normal for her to say that to him. It's not something she should let anyone know about, but he doesn't care, does he? The guy said it was true, but does she trust him too much? She doesn't trust people, she trusts situations. And judging by the situation then and now, she doesn't think they'll ever be enemies. The third master asked, since her successor's recovery was going well, why did she need him in the residence? Master replied that it was also because of the child. She makes all final decisions in the center of inner enlightenment, but the child is responsible for commanding and carrying out the decisions. So now her hands and feet are practically tied. If this situation lasted for more than a month, the cult would suffer serious losses. The third lord thought it was not good, so that the master of the inner enlightenment center, who has a strong ego and knows better than anyone else how this cult works, asked him for help. Un Sim will do anything to try to convince him if it's for the sake of the center of inner enlightenment. She's very difficult to deal with. It's like she's saying with her eyes that she'll accept no as an answer. The third young master replied that it would be better if they agreed then, right? He was sure she would feel burdened if he just unilaterally helped her. The master replied that she would be grateful for that. He'll get something too, so he said there's no need for gratitude. Unshim asked if there was something he wanted to get in return. The third lord replied that that was the problem. There is nothing that comes to his mind. Anyway, what he wants is not money or fame. It's freedom, not something someone else could do for him. He asked the master if the center of inner enlightenment manages the cult's livelihood, right? She said that's correct. And all the goods that are distributed in the cult come from outside. He asked many more questions, all of which were answered in the affirmative. They are going out for important things, in that regard, in about two weeks. Grabbing her hand, he said he would make sure her successor is fully recovered in two weeks. This is his chance to escape from the demonic cult. Donpo recalled the third lord's words that everything had been sorted out to some extent and they should return to their own organizations. He wasn't just an ordinary member of the guardian court, he was the third leader. He better get back to work. He's right, Donpil is so used to being around the young master that he's barely paid attention to his work. He's sure he'll see the young master again. A man came up to the guy, apologized and said that the first supervisor wanted to see him. Donpil replied that he would be there soon. The leader is swamped with business, so he'll get right to the point. As Donpil knows, the demon army commander's escort will arrive in three days. His duties have changed. He was aware that the Center of Internal Enlightenment sent out members of their sect every three months to deliver important goods, right? This month just so happens to be that month. Donpil asked, should he go to accompany the cult members in charge of the delivery? The first leader said that with the upcoming Mara festival, things in the cult were rather chaotic. The supervisor doesn't think anything will happen, but given the situation, they can't let them go alone. Donpil asked when? The supervisor replied that in two weeks. All the important details are written there. Let him burn it after memorizing its contents. He promised the master that he would successfully complete any assignment he gave him. The third young master asked, is that her? The leader replied that her name is Ju Hua. She is as skilled in doing her job as she is in martial arts. She was known as a genius when she joined the cult. She is simply in charge of a part of the center, but also has a supervisory role that no one knows about. The center of inner enlightenment practically stopped after she fell into this state, 
which speaks to how many responsibilities she had and how well she handled them. She looks about his age. But she's in charge of a large organization like the Center of Internal Enlightenment. In addition, albeit partially, she had deciphered the boundless technique in just a few days and had used it enough to notice improvements. At first he said he would take a look at her condition. Young Shim was surprised at how amazing the demonic energy was. He uses it only a little, but the quality of the energy is excellent. She didn't understand how that was possible. It's easy to relate her limitless technique to his because she's already partially mastered it. Now if he just takes out the toxic energy and it comes out through the blood. Ten days later. The day before the two weeks expired, Ju Hua finally woke up. Master couldn't believe her eyes. Did Young Sim tell the young master that what he was asking for was for her to discreetly guide the cult leader into the shipping department? She asked, does the third lord even realize how ridiculous a request this is? He replied that he didn't know, but she herself had said it was not a favor, but a bargain. Master asked, then why don't they just get this favor over with? As she knows, the ship has already sailed. Why else would he be trying so hard to treat her successor? Master shouted that there was no way. Does he really want to deceive the sect leader? She said to pretend she didn't hear that. The third master asked how is it to deceive a sect leader? It might be deceiving others, but not him. She asked what does he mean by that? He said the cult leader has no interest in his disciples at all. He just reigns over them. He doesn't dominate. Because that's what being a god is. She knows that. The cult leader isn't the only problem. If someone finds out that the successor candidate has snuck into the shipping department, others will become suspicious of the center of internal enlightenment. The third young master knows that she has the power to destroy such rumors. Un Shim replied that she does have such power. As he knows, this is a different matter than political retribution or covering up malicious rumors. If things go wrong, other cult organizations will also try to interfere with the candidates. Then the divine cult will be destabilized. He asked, what did she expect then? She had never worried about what anyone would ask of her after helping them raise a man from the dead. He doesn't want to discuss the value of life anymore. He doesn't like feeling guilty or anything else. But this was supposed to be a deal. She's the one who wanted this one to be a deal not a favor. The master replied that he was too brazen, but she had no choice. Indeed they had made a deal, and a precious man's life was at stake, so she must keep her end of the bargain. The third young gentleman replied that great. But it would take her some time to figure out a way. It was already stressing her out that she wanted to lead a delivery squad when she wasn't even fully healthy yet. He put even more time on her. The third master asked if her successor wanted to lead the delivery team. The master replied that yes, but she was not in the shape to take on such a role yet. She of course said no, but the girl is very stubborn. The boy asked how about doing it. The third master knocked and asked if he could come in. He looked at the girl and said that she was very strong and could move like that. The girl asked who he was. The third lord replied that he was some sort of doctor. She asked about his identity, not his job. He thought about it and said he could phrase it a little differently. He's the one who helped her break free of the chi blockage. The girl realized that this was the man who gave the martial arts technique. Bowing, she said thank you to him for the favor. The third one asked, does she believe him when she doesn't even know who he is? She replied that bowing is not a problem. Besides, this is a center of inner enlightenment. It is not a place where suspicious people can just walk in. The young lord realized that she was assessing the situation very quickly. He had heard that she was stubborn, but flexible at the same time. The boy replied that it was very good. With a little bit of basic energy recovery in half a day of stretching, it would be safe to set off. Un Shim walked in. The young master replied that the girl was in better condition than he expected. They wouldn't have to worry as long as she was with him. The master said no. She's just come out of bed rest. If she passes out again, commanding the shipping department is her primary responsibility. She'd rather die than be useless. The girl asked to be released with the delivery unit. They are finally leaving. 
It had been almost a year since he woke up in the body of the third young lord of the heavenly demon divine cult. He can finally breathe fresh air after a ten-year hiatus. Besides, if he succeeds, he might be able to escape for good. Their destination is somewhere in the Jiangxi region. That's a pretty good destination. There are two assassination shelters in Jiangxi. Of course, they are both quite far from the neighboring areas of Guangdong province. But with his current abilities, he could get there by running for three days without rest. Zhu Hua apologized to him, after all, she didn't know that he was the third young master. He asked, did the center master tell the girl? The guy replied that it was fine, let him forget about it. It didn't even bother him. He should be the one apologizing for just walking into her room like that. She thanked him for allowing her to be there today. The third young gentleman asked what she meant. If it weren't for him, she would never have gotten free of the chi lock herself. He replied that there was no need to thank him. He had learned this method by accident, and the one who had saved her with this method was a master of the center. Here he felt a familiar energy. It's very heavy and serious. It can't be, really. The deputy commander of the delivery team introduced himself and said his name was Young E. Dongpil said he was the third commander. They, the third squad of court guards, would escort them to and from their destination. The third young master couldn't believe his ears. Why did it have to be Dongpil? Dongpil ordered a third squad of guards to take up positions at the front and rear of the column respectively. The third lord thought that the delivery squad was already made up of experienced cult members, why would they need to export? He asked how the girl was feeling. Is her chi energy cycling? The girl replied that she had practiced in the morning for about two hours. He decided to check it out just in case. They say sleep is the best medicine, just let her sleep for a while. The girl didn't even have time to say anything and fell asleep. That's when Dompel heard that familiar voice. It was definitely the voice of the third young master. He called the boy over to him. Dompel asked what the young master is doing there. Is he part of the delivery room this month? He ordered him to stop talking out loud and communicate with a distant whispering technique. Why are the guys in charge of escorting the delivery squad? Although no, why do the delivery squad need to be escorted at all? Donpo replied that the atmosphere didn't seem quite right as the Mara festival was just around the corner, so they were instructed to accompany the delivery group. They're probably on some kind of secret mission. Perhaps we should consider it as something like that. In any case, he shouldn't tell other people that the third master was there. After all, he knew that things were going too well. To think that the closest person in the sect would be there. Now that things have worked out this way, will he even be able to escape? Why can't his life go the way he wants it to? The squad captain was angry, the more he thought about it, the more it infuriated him. How could he be assigned to such an insignificant mission along with those flawed bastards? The guy told him that they are still a well-trained organization. Please choose your words. Ironblood Fortress, the captain of the Steel Wool Squad, Oh Kengwa asked, how dare a guy tell him to watch his tongue? He'd better remind himself why he made him vice-captain despite his shitty sword skills. Now let him cut the crap and get him his drink. They, the Ironblood Fortress, are still the most powerful. Neither the Righteous Heavenly Alliance nor the Demon Cult will be able to do anything to them. Robbing the Demon Cult's delivery team will be easy. And yet, they have to work with these monstrous bastards? They call themselves the Southern Wild Beast Palace, and they truly live up to their name. They're just beasts, Oh Jianghua said to watch them eat. He didn't understand why anyone would want to work with them. Anyway, it's been about ten years since they last saw people from the Demon Cult. He said he hoped it would be fun. When the third young master woke up, he asked Zhu Hua if she had slept well. She was frightened, the master asked her to be careful, he would get a reprimand from master so if the girl pulled a muscle in her back. The girl replied that it had already happened, as she had slept for half a day. The young gentleman replied that in fact she had slept for a day and a half. It was good that he had put her to bed. The girl's body was exhausted from all the activity right after being released from the qi blockage. Even if she is well trained in assimilating energy and circulating qi, she is still human, and unless she has reached the highest peak level, 
she should rest when necessary. The young gentleman said she was well rested, so it was okay. Throwing her a box he asked her to take it. He was sure she was hungry after two days of sleep. It's rice balls and beef jerky prepared by the delivery team. Let him eat it, but don't fill up on it. Saying thank you to him, the guy replied that it's no problem. She's the reason he's there. The young master called Goldie to him. The girl was frightened and said that it was a fox. He replied that yes, his name was Goldie. Ju Wa was curious, was it his pet? He replied that he just sort of met him by chance. She found that interesting. She had never met a person who had a fox as a pet. The young master told the girl that he was going to get some fresh air, let her rest some more. The young gentleman went outside and asked Donpil if he had called him. Asking for forgiveness, the young man replied that yes, he had called him to the forest, knowing that he could not. The young gentleman replied that there was no need to be so formal with him, he was tense enough as it was. Donpil asked if he had encountered any discomfort in the carriage. The young gentleman replied that everything was fine. The guy said he called him there because he thought he should know about it in advance. The young gentleman asked what it was that he was hiding so carefully. He held out to him the message they had received in the court of the guards before their departure. It was the reason they had been assigned to this mission, he thought. Looking at it, he asked if it was true. The man asked the first elder what the world he had seen was like. Was it beautiful? He replied that the world was full of corruption, but they already knew that. The weather was quite cold, but the further south you go, the warmer it gets. It's certainly cold up north. Even though this fabric is not meant to be worn, these rugs from the west should be useful. The first elder asked how he was doing here in Jiangxi. He replied that the land there has always been good, but that is not all there is to life. Times were hard. The elder asked what was the problem. The man replied that the demon cult festival was just around the corner, but he didn't know what it was called. The elder said that he was probably talking about the Mara festival. For the demon cult, this festival is the greatest event in the world. He heard that they were all over the place, collecting valuable items. Things were pretty chaotic because of those brigand bastards. The man replied to the elder that he would go then. He promised to put in a good word with his superiors when he returned. He has enough experience in running a sect, but since the alliance is a new environment for him, he will be looking for a suitable position for him. The man didn't know who might have heard that his cultivation had reached the enchantment realm, so please let him be careful. He is afraid that the evil demon cult members might do something to them. Laughing, the first elder of the Righteous Heaven Alliance, Zhang Il Riyong, replied that he might be old, but he was still vigorous. Even if the demon cult leader came, he would scold him and tell him to get out of his sight. The young master thought back to Zhang Il Riyong who had killed him in his past life. He asked Zhang Hajin, what was it like for him to be the alliance leader's hunting dog in their days? At that age, he's still doing that kind of work, it impressed him. He replied to Yong Il Riyong that his job was nothing compared to the effort he put into trying to become the leader of the alliance. The man replied that he did indeed have a foul and serpentine tongue befitting an assassin. In any case, it looked like it was time for him to retire. He is no longer as careful about his work as he used to be. Because of this, People talk about him, calling him the world's best martial artist and so on. How stupid is that for an assassin? Chong Hajin asked why, is he upset that some assassin is valued more than the first elder of the Righteous Heaven Alliance? Let him not worry, he doesn't care what the public thinks. The world's best martial artist? Why shouldn't he take that nickname? If he could, of course. Turning to Chong Hajin, the elder gave one piece of advice, let him better be on his guard. In the last moments of his life, that damned bastard had mercilessly just cut off his right leg. Clutching the message in his hands, the young master realized that the bastard was there. His eyes burned red with rage. Yun Hong Ryong entered the courtyard and shouted to the young master that she was there and they could have a drink. Turning to Anhua, she asked where the young master was, why didn't she feel his presence there? The girl said he's not here right now. Hong Riyong replied that she could see. She just told her that she didn't feel his presence. Anhua replied that she didn't know either. He only said that he was going to train. 
The girl thought that he was strong enough, but was he going to train even more? Looking to the side, she saw the young lord's sword. Let them look at this guy, he's going to train but left his sword behind? She smelled a suspicious odor. The young master tried to calm himself down. It didn't matter to him if Zhang Il Ryong was around or not. What was his goal? It's to escape, it's freedom. He will visit all the safe havens he has prepared throughout the neutral plane, regain his martial arts, make some money, and then leave the country. He was determined not to forget his goal in any way. He's going to give up his dream. But he wants to kill him, tear the bastard to pieces. The man was glad that not much could be taken back. Donpo replied that the things they take are really valuable. He asked what kind of daring bastard would try to rob a divine cult. Donpo replied that they still shouldn't let their guard down until they were done. Come to think of it, the patrol team is late. They don't usually like to loiter. Donpo said the terrain is probably slowing them down. Then they appeared. When they saw them, the men began to ask what was wrong. Why did only half the team come? The guy replied that there was a fight going on at the transfer station. Donpil asked who? The guy replied that he didn't know. They are in the midst of their absence, but there is a very experienced martial artist among them. A young gentleman came out abruptly and asked where the bastard was. The man asked, is that all they stole? It's all rare medicinal ingredients. He didn't understand why they were buying it in bulk. Mara's festival is near, but is it really necessary? That's certainly not his concern, though. Walking up to the man, the guy told him that there were no survivors on the enemy side. They had also gathered all their belongings, so all they had to do was set everything on fire before leaving. There were only three people on their side who were lightly wounded and that was it. The man started screaming that they were useless creatures. How strong was the enemy that their men were lightly wounded? How many did he say he let go, intentionally? The guy answered that about four or five, they couldn't be sure because they were too far away. Calling him an incompetent bastard, he ordered him to get the guys to load everything. There was another sign of life. Looking at him, the man said he was a pretty strong man. Isn't he the one who was hurt by his palm strike? Seeing the green robe, the man assumed that the guy was not from the outer cult but from the inner cult? He told him the demon god wouldn't let him go. Saying that it was very funny, the man asked, do they worship a demon god? All of them, the members of the demonic cult, are just crazy. If they like the demon god so much, why don't they die and go to his side? He doesn't have the guts to die. Then the man decided to help him. If the demon god he believes in really exists, then let him go and plead with him in the afterlife. Let him let the stupid demon cult bastards get to know their wonderful demon god. A big man appeared behind him. He asked him what he wanted. The man replied that he needed to feed the children. Tell him to tell his subordinates to bring something. Oh Jiangwa asked if the man was giving him an order right now. The man replied that it was a request. He was told that their squad would be responsible for their meals. Now let him fulfill his promise. Oh Kengwa shouted that he needed to think about what he had already devoured. The man replied that they were making a request, they just needed more food. Are they going to break their promise? Oh Jiangwa replied that it was fine, apparently beasts like him needed to be fed constantly. Why doesn't he eat those demonic cultists? He would soon provide them with more corpses. As he left, the man thought he would soon bury all the beasts as soon as they were done with it. They are filthy creatures from the palace of the southern savages. Donpil said it was horrible. It looks like they destroyed the building to erase any traces that might have been left behind. The man said they did, but it was a little hasty. He feels they could have done better if they wanted to get rid of the traces. Donpil said that they could not have made such a mistake. The girl replied that was correct. This careless work is either a trap, or they must have hidden in a very good place where they cannot find them. She asked if they had sent a message to the branch. The guy replied that yes, given the distance, he should reach them in about a day and a half. She needs time to think it over. She asked them to take care of all the bodies. The guy said okay. She thought it was too late to wait for orders from higher-ups. In this case, it was better to handle things first before making a report. 
In any case, the cult has a strong influence in Jiangxi. They would be able to track down the enemy even if they took their time. Dongpil told Ju Hua that she should rest. He heard that she had only recently recovered from the qi blockage. The girl replied that thanks to the healer who came with her, she had recovered most of her martial arts. He didn't have to treat her as a patient. Dongpil thought that Warden Zhu was indeed trustworthy. If she was a person who was impatient or obsessed with just wanting to succeed, she would never take such actions. To recover from a qi blockage so quickly. Was she referring to the young master when she said healer? Just then Donpil heard in his mind the young gentleman's request to come to the carriage, he had a request for him. This is the very blade he asked for. But why? The young master replied that they could find their trail about 20 kilometers to the northeast. The enemy is quite strong, so let him try to avoid total confrontation as much as possible. Donpil asked what the young master meant. He replied that the initial task of the Court of Guardians was to safely escort the delivery squad to the crop with the goods. Before finding out who the enemy is, have them move as quietly as possible. Donpil asked, what about the young master? He replied that they had better hurry. Before he could answer, the young master's trail disappeared. He thought about the fact that something was wrong. Obviously, the demon cult has a strong influence in Jiangxi, but the first elder of the Righteous Heaven Alliance is there. And the demon cult's delivery team has been looted? The young master needs to find out what's going on. Looking at them, the man said they were very greedy. Anyway, he wondered when the man would come. Zhang Aelryong asked, were they waiting for him? The man told the captain of the Steel Wool Squad that they hadn't seen each other for a long time. The squad captain asked what had kept him so long. Aelryong replied that he had some business to attend to. But he wasn't that late, so don't be too angry. Looking away, he said these are the famous beasts. The squad captain replied that he didn't know about famous, but yes, they were beasts. They made it very annoying. Turning to the man, Zhang Il Ryong asked him his name. The man replied that it was Yul Liang. So he was the favorite disciple of the Beast Palace's master. Unlike the martial arts of the Central Plains, the martial arts of the palace are quite bizarre, and it is said that once an opponent loses their guard, even an experienced martial artist can be defeated. Now when the man looks at him, he realizes. This potential qi energy. Even the most outstanding martial artists of the Central Plains won't be able to withstand ten of his attacks. Oh Jianghua asked why Zhang Il Ryong is being so nice to that savage. The man asked what he meant, he was just making small talk. The man was surprised that he even knew who he was. Of course, each of the four palaces of the Outer Wall is an organization with very experienced martial artists. Right now, they are being rather quiet but it's better to find out more about the organization, will it be an enemy or an ally? Oh Kengwa didn't understand why that was reasonable. If they're allies, let them work together, if not, just kill them, that's all. Zhang Il Ryong replied to the man that he needs to do something about his character. If he wants to rise even higher, that is. He said no, he'll live his life the way he lives it now and then die. Anyway, he thinks that's enough for small talk. Zhang Il Ryong asked if the man had brought the promised goods. The man replied that of course, it wasn't a personal request, but from the top brass. It was an important mission. Thanks to that, he even had to work with that beast. It was the Jade of Calamities. Oh Kengwa asked what it was, did he have to go this far to get it? Zhang Il replied that trash to one is treasure to another. Just let him think of it as something he needs. The man said that was the end of their deal. Oh Jianghua thought Yong Il Ryong was going to stay for a drink, but he was just leaving. The man replied that he would love to stay and chat like old times, but he was very busy. Oh Kengwa asked how about taking this chance to join the Steel Blood Fortress. The man asked, the one offering him to join the fortress? He asked what was wrong with that. After all, it's only natural to poach a talented person into your organization, isn't it? The man thanked him for the offer. Zhang Il Ryong asked, is he even in a position to suggest something like that to him? He's just a squad captain. Oh Jianghua replied that why would he say all that? Before he could finish speaking, a hand pierced his body. 
He repeated his words, if they are allies, let them work together. If not, just kill them. What an invigorating statement. First he needed to figure out who his enemies and allies were. He'd better fix his character in the afterlife. Zhang Aelryong asked, how many minions did he bring? What do they think? Looking at the beasts, he said that they seemed to be full, but would they be willing to eat another portion? Yul Yang replied that of course, he wouldn't say no. The man told the boy to unpack and be ready. He asked him when the first elder was coming. The guy replied that he had gone somewhere far away from there, so maybe about half a day. The guy asked so long, is it normal for him to go so far away by himself? The man asked, does he know where the elder went? The guy said he thinks he's going back to taking bribes. They're near the demon cult base. So he travels alone, unaccompanied. Let him watch what he says. The first elder went to honor his mother's memory. This was what he had to say if the alliance asked why they stayed in Jiangxi. They all depend on the first elder, so let them be careful not to leak information about him. If something goes wrong with the first elder, it will be a problem for them as well. Then the guys on the sidelines saw something. The man said not to change the subject, did they understand what he said? They said no, let him look over there, it was like there was something strange in the forest. Turning around, the man asked what was strange about it. They saw that the trees were being destroyed. From there, a third young master appeared. After striking with his sword, there was a heavy blow. The third lord grabbed the man by the throat. The man said that he had only heard that the elder was going to visit his mother's grave. The guy told him to cut the crap. He would kill him if he didn't tell him the truth. The man replied that he was telling the truth. The young master wondered, the first righteous heaven alliance elder leaving his attendants behind? This was already suspicious enough. Since he's already there, he can kill that bastard young Aelryong before he leaves. At the very least, he'll take his leg. The thought of him, makes the guy feel pain in his right leg, which was cut off in his past life. The elder said that Yol Yang had made a wise choice by making an alliance with him rather than the Steel Blood Fortress. Anyone would rather ally with the side that treats them better, they always look down on them. He asked Yol Yang how Palace Master was doing. The man replied that the medicine he brought them had some effect. He thought that the man would be back on his feet soon. But he asked, what was this thing that the elder had gotten from him? The man asked, is he the one referring to the Calamity Jade? He doesn't need to know. All he needs to know is that this treasure will come in handy in his work. Yol Yang asked, is he going to use it on the leader of the Righteous Heaven Alliance? The elder replied that the wolves he had brought had a great appetite. Beasts capable of defeating swordsmen, that was impressive. He sees all sorts of occult research that he has never heard of. The man said that the Beast King technique is not some kind of occult research. She teaches the beasts to learn the inner perception of power, just as humans do. Does he mean they can understand his orders just by the movements of his hand? He replied that yes, he and the Blood Wolf Squad were connected through their spirits and upper energy cores, so they understood even the most detailed orders. The Elder wondered if such a thing was possible when he learned that he worked with beasts. How amazing! The man thought, if he used these guys to his advantage, he could take over as the leader of the Righteous Heaven Alliance. Seeing that one of them howled, he asked what happened. Yol Yang replied that it seemed like the Blood Wolf Squad leader had smelled the demon cult members. He didn't know the exact number, but it seemed to be around a hundred. The elder asked if they had already tasted the blood of the demon cult members. They ambushed them nearby. They missed a few meals, but it wasn't a bad meal. The elder understands, he knew they would be away because of the approaching Mara festival. And how do they compare to a troop of blood wolves? The man asked, there are a lot of them and some of them are very strong. The elder said well, then will he show him how good his blood wolf squad is? Let him stay out of it. It's fine if it takes some time. Yol Yang replied that it would be over before sunset. Dong Pil told everyone to stop. Ju Hua asked, did he feel it too? The guy replied that yes, it's not demonic energy, but it's very violent. The girl said they were hardly human. And with a strong odor of blood. Donpil was sure that meant a lot of people had died. Looking up, 
Donpil saw them. Who was he, he wondered. Are they the ones who attacked the delivery service earlier? Yul Yang ordered them to tear everyone apart. Dongpil ordered everyone to spread out, let everyone take care of themselves. Looking at them, the boy wondered, were wolves bigger than cows? He didn't understand where such monsters came from. Their skin was like steel. He can easily cut through boulders using only his internal energy, but all he can do is just leave scratches on them. Even if he tried to infuse the sword with his chi, the wolves would move too fast for him to do so. Just attacking in pure form wouldn't work. Zhu Hua asked the third leader to step back to apply the moon demonic art. She ordered the delivery team to stay inside so as not to disturb the members of the Court of Guardians. The girl said that it wasn't a fair fight for them, they'd better retreat. Donpil replied that he thought so too. These are not ordinary wolves, at this rate they will all die. The Court of Guardians would protect the delivery team from the wolves. Donpil shouted to the third squad of the Court of Guardians to stand in a rotating formation. They will spin endlessly at high speeds to make the wolves dizzy and keep them from getting any closer. Looking up at them, the elder replied that it was quite interesting. He didn't even seem to have much combat experience. He has created a defensive formation and, using the features of that formation to his advantage, attacks the wolves. The elder asks if the Blood Wolf troop will be alright? He knows the formation can only stall, but they won't be able to get that close. Yul Yang replied that it was fine. They could easily smash an amateur formation like this. They just don't know how terrifying a troop of blood wolves can be. The elder asked how long they could stand up to the wolves. Quite interesting, because he created a defensive formation and used its features to his advantage to attack the wolves. But how long can they stand up to the wolves? Zhu Hua was shocked at what was happening these were no ordinary wolves. They were predicting her attacks. Meanwhile, Donpil was scattering the wolves' heads to the heavens with his mighty ball. He was tired, the aura of the sword was so powerful, it took away so much of his internal energy. The demonic energy had become so rough, and the breathing was completely unstable. What should they do now? Everyone is tired. Just defending themselves wouldn't accomplish anything. Donpil shouted that we must get out of here quickly. Tell everyone to break formation and run. We need to spread out and run as fast as possible to the branch, there are no other options. After looking at this, the elder asked Yol Yang what he would do now. After all, they were doing much better than they expected, and the wolves had also suffered quite a few injuries. Even if they are injured and exhausted, they are still members of the demon cult. If you let them go back to the cult, there will be consequences. Maybe it's finally time to show them the terror the heir to the palace of the southern wildebeest? Yul Yang flattens Dongpil with his punch. Ju Hua realizes he's a martial artist, but she has to stop him no matter what. However, for Yul Yang, a martial art form like hers was just child's play. She didn't succeed. It is time for pain, he said, and tickled her belly with his strong foot. How can you beat him? She turned her body just in time to avoid hitting the critical point. Very good reaction. Yul Yang said let them listen to him carefully if they didn't want to see their leader eaten alive. And it's best not to even dream of escaping. The man raised his hand and told the troop of blood wolves to stop and stand by. More than ten of them were killed. He turned to the members of the demonic cult, and said they had done very well. Killed quite a few of his wolves. Of course, Yul Yang could have just raised more wolves, but he is not kind enough to just forget about spending a lot of time and effort to raise them. Suddenly, one of the cult members shouted to let Zhu Hua go now. When Yul Yang heard this, he said that some dog was barking and pointed his finger at him. Donpil shouted at the top of his voice to get out of there, but unfortunately it was already too late. This beautiful sound is very much to Yul Yang's liking. He told Zhu Hua to watch carefully as his subordinate was being eaten alive. The evil Donpil decided to give up his last strength and attack him with his mighty sword. But just like the first time, he failed. He only tested the stones with his body. Its destructive power was enough to defeat first-rate martial artists with external arts alone. It was that time, meal time. Zhu Hua shouted for everyone to run and alert the sect of what was happening. Yul Yang said that there was food for them everywhere let them eat as much as they wanted. And he also summoned the beasts in the surrounding area. One may not worry, 
for their bodies will be torn to pieces and they will die an unimaginably agonizing death. Young Il Ryong found this scene interesting. The beasts of the demon cult obey the real beasts. This Jianghu Aozian is just an illusion. A swordsman who saved his family because I can't tolerate injustice, romanticizing drinking together on a sailboat in the name of friendship. But Jianghu is just one facet of the world. It's not something he likes, but the world revolves around the one rule that the demon cult bastards love to chant so much. Only the strongest survive here, eat or be eaten, that's the rule of the beasts. After all, humans are animals too. It doesn't matter if they tear someone to pieces or trick them to death. They kill and are killed to get to the top. Morals and ethics mean nothing in the beast world. Isn't that why they exist in this world, to fight their way to the top? Dongpil groaned and tried to get up, Yo Liang told him that there was no need to exert himself so much, he would still die just like them. But what is he to do? How to save the squad members in this hell and fulfill his duties? Maybe he needs to find a way out of here. He has to think fast, there must be some way. He can't just die like this, Dongpil thought. Suddenly, someone threw their sword and pierced the wolf's head. Ju Hua was saved from certain death. It was the third young master. For some, this news was a joy, but for others it was not. The master saw that there were a lot of beasts here, but it was just nerve-wracking for him. He cut them into pieces. The third young master said he only came here to kill one guy, but there's a whole mountain of garbage he needs to get rid of. Everyone was shocked at how easily he dealt with the beasts. He really didn't have time for that today, but he would kill him too. And then, Jun Il Ryong. Let him wait for a while and he'll make Japanese sashimi from his flesh. Meanwhile, in the demonic cult, a dialogue was going on between the master of the inner enlightenment organ, Seo Young Shim, and the general strategist, Ho Yo Sung. The man had picked up on the fact that one of master Seo Young Shim's virtues was that she was very honest, and had no intention of giving that up. She feels like she said something like that to him before. The interlocutor will be caught off guard if he suddenly changes the subject in this way. Ho Yo Sung said that he was referring to the third young master. After all, they have been seeing him a lot lately. The girl was abruptly thrown into a fever. She couldn't understand how he knew everything, maybe he was spying on her. The man explained that the position of general strategist in a divine cult is a rather lonely position. So he keeps a close eye on what's been happening lately. It's pretty funny. He assures me that he wouldn't have been able to survive in a demonic cult if that were the case. A cold-blooded dictator. One of the cult's top assassins. That's what people called her, but lately she hasn't lived up to her nickname. Seo Youngshim asked, is he very comfortable saying such things to her face? But what's wrong with that, he said. People say it's not a sin to speak ill of someone, even if it's a cult leader, when they're not around. The girl thought that if something went wrong, he could manipulate her. Ho Yo Sung behaves like an impulsive person. He's the most fearsome and picky representative of the divine cult. He's definitely not to be trifled with. The man wonders if the inner enlightenment center is breaking its neutrality and supporting the third young lord. Seo Yangshim once again brought it up, but the center of inner enlightenment would not interfere in the succession struggle. The general strategist says he can't interfere with her choices. The man knows how much she cares and trusts the sect. The girl thanks him for that. She was curious as to why someone so devoted to the cult would send the third young lord outside the cult without saying a word to her. Ho Yo Sung said let her not take it as sarcasm or a threat. He's not going to send her to the criminal law hall. The man is sure she had her reasons. The girl asked with fear in her voice, why was he so interested in the third young lord? The one said that it was just innocent curiosity. All the members of the divine cult focus their attention on the third young lord. People kill others they don't even know, so the third lord thought he would save their lives instead. A successor candidate who is becoming more and more influential and powerful at a very fast pace ever since he removed his chi blockage. Perhaps somewhere deep down, it's true, and she's interested in him too. But what should I say to Ho Yo Song? She can't describe what he's really like. So she suggested that he meet him himself. The man asked, did she mean there was something about him that she couldn't explain? This is turning out to be more interesting than he thought. After all, 
he had never seen her talk about someone in such a manner. The girl said she knew, there was no problem for him and he could meet him whenever he wanted. The one replied that he really intended to meet him. Whenever he gets too bored, something interesting happens. He's thinking of buying him tea as soon as he gets back. Their meeting will be unforgettable. Everyone watched as the third young lord cut the wolves into pieces and didn't understand how such a thing was possible. The elder wondered if he was also from the demon cult. He thought it was strange, after all, the guy had attacked the wolves, but the direction of his bloodlust was directed at him. Looking at the third young master the evil Yo Liang asked him, how dare he kill a troop of blood wolves in front of his eyes? The third young master asked a question, is he the leader of these mongrels? But why does he obey this old geezer? The man said he didn't know where the guy came from, but would kill him if he was also from a demon cult. Clenching his hand into a fist, Yo Liang shouted forward to the leader of the blood wolves. Hearing this, a fox ran out from under the lord's clothes and stood behind him. The third young master realized that he was commanding the wolves, using communication through their energy core. The fox decided to show her power. She shouted so that everything around her was swept away by a powerful energy wave. What kind of beast is this? Yo Liang was surprised, this is not an ordinary beast. Or is it another creature in the skin of a beast? Could it be a mystical being? Divine, but also a demonic being that causes all sorts of mysterious events in legends. He is no match for any beast from the southern wild beast palace. Even the king of tigers looks pitiful in comparison. Did such a mystical creature really exist? The young lord looked at the vixen with a smile and said that it meant he was no ordinary fox. Was he unhurt by that scream? That scream must have struck fear into the minds of all living creatures who heard it. Who was he and why was he walking around with such a monster? Yo Liang asked. He replied that there was no point in him knowing since he was already dead. The enraged Yo Liang shouted that he would rip his throat and headed towards him with his divine southern wolf fist. But it wasn't as easy as he thought it would be. The young lord put up his powerful fist. The man, couldn't believe his divine fist was losing to him. His muscles twisted and his bones shattered into pieces. Now he can forget about his left arm. Because the bones are completely shattered, it wasn't a matter of internal energy or skill. The third young master was simply much stronger than him. Yo Liang had always been confident that he was superior in strength to anyone other than the head bear. But how could he lose to a mere member of a demonic cult? I mean, it's unbelievable. The young master remembers this sect that rules the beasts. A sect that is as strong as the great sects of the Central Plain, Southern Wild Beast Palace, one of the strongest forces in the Outer Wall area. But, it had nothing to do with him, that meant he could kill him. Saying the last word goodbye, he tested his head for strength. Elder Zhang Il Ryong was stunned by what he saw, for the heir of the Southern Wild Beast Palace had been killed by some young demon cult member. Now it was the elder's turn. The young lord rushed towards him with all his fury. He must kill him today. He could have passed it by, but since it was something that happened in his past life. After all, the guy could start a new life now. But his leg continued to hurt, he couldn't forget it. The same leg that the bastard had cut off that day. With words to give him his leg back, the young lord pounced on him with his mighty sword. The elder didn't understand where the demon could have come from, who it was. They hadn't met anywhere before, had they? Maybe the boy misunderstands something. It was that group of beasts that attacked his people, they had nothing to do with him. He's dealt with those wolves, this fight is meaningless now. Although the power triad is feuding with each other, it is to a certain extent political territory. The man asked, is there a need for a pointless fight to the death? Can stop here and now and put his sword away. The third young lord smiled and said that people really never change, still the same wicked tongue of his. The boy asked, was he afraid to engage in battle for the first time in a long time? Young Il Ryung assures me that they've never met before. Did they really know each other before? The young lord answered him that they were not just acquainted. And after those words, he disappeared before his eyes. But it's not possible to say that it is, the trace dispersion rate is too high. Suddenly the guy struck from above, his sword is too heavy and powerful. 
he won't be able to last that long. The third young lord said that if he died from a single blow, he would be too disappointed. Looks like the demon cult has created another obscene demon. The guy is stronger than he expected. However, he can't lose to him. Reflecting the blow the young lord realized that his body's aerodynamics were lower than his, so he would receive internal damage from such an attack. His secret move, white funeral fencing. However, the sword dance may seem beautiful. Hidden bloodlust is as deadly as a snake's fangs. Young Il Ryong, maybe he really doesn't remember him. Nine times the third form's resilient tribulation blade technique. And eight cold infernal blood lotuses filled with cold air. The elder was shocked that the guy had mastered the blade technique. He had definitely seen it before. The most terrifying secret weapon of the righteous heavenly alliance that killed all sorts of masters under the command of the leading powers. Chong Il Ryong realized that this was the blade wielding technique of the king assassin King Chong Hajin. Who on earth was he to use that bastard Chong Hajin's blade technique? The guy asked, did he really remember? In the meantime, people were getting ready to move on. They collected boxes and put them in the wagon. Dongpil offered Governor Zhu a life-sustaining pill. And told him to hurry up and take it. The girl felt embarrassed because the third leader also had serious injuries. Why is he giving this pill to her? The man replied that he would get more when he returned. He will stand guard, so let him circulate his chi. Zhu Hua thanked him for being so helpful. Donpil is sorry he couldn't protect anyone properly at such an important moment. He thinks he can get the young lord's help this time. He would have nothing to say even if he lost his guardian rights after returning to the sect. But, he had never seen the young lord in such a rage before, as if he felt a deep resentment. The girl said it was time for them to go. The search is over and she can ask the demon transportation squad to guard her. Now he can go to the young lord's aid. However, Dongpil doesn't think he'll need his help. The third young master will manage on his own. Ju Hua claims that he is the only person who can help the young lord. Publicly, there is no third lord here. Suddenly Goldie the fox came running to them and looked at them strangely. Dongpil asked what was wrong with her. She turned around and walked away. The elder definitely remembers killing Zhang Hajin properly. He cut off his leg, and he lost his head altogether. Did Zhang Hajin raise the receiver without anyone knowing about it? That bastard is like a half-demon. The elder said he asked him one last time. Who is he? Let him speak while he breathes. The guy replied that if he was interested, let him find out with his sword. The elder seemed to have released his white lotus chi. Magic swords is a masterpiece, the art of white funeral fencing. One of the ten greatest arts of the orthodox sects, which even contains enlightenment. When strength and acuity are lacking, the overflowing inner force will seek power, and enlightenment will revive the acuity. He even has the sword of the white crane. And it's not a body that's going to lose to a half-demon. The guy said did he really think a white funeral sword would work on him like it did back then? It was time to summon demonic energy if he wanted to tear that bastard to shreds. All demonic energy, even that hidden in his veins. He had reached the second stage of the demonic arts. The demonic vision of the higher heavens and the land of Guatemala. But how is that possible? The elder thought. How could he destroy his white burial sword with a single swing of his heavy blade? Is this young bastard's enlightenment beyond him? He completely underestimated him. Suddenly, the elder froze in place. He didn't realize what the combination was. The man felt as if he had fallen into water, his arms and legs heavy and hard to breathe. His senses are fine, but his body is slow. Or maybe the world itself has gotten slower. Those clear eyes. Has he gotten rid of his bloodthirstiness? Did he achieve enlightenment in that brief moment? His burst of strength was so great that the elder became disillusioned with the belief that the world had become slow. This is just absurd. Maybe this guy doesn't know that he is the first elder of the Righteous Heaven Alliance. The man can't hold it back that long. Looks like the sword of the White Crane is about to leave him. It's already a big crack. His large blade was shrouded in monstrous demonic energy, allowing it to swoop down with a force capable of shattering a mountain. He must be in his early twenties, 
so how could he be so superhumanly strong? This is because he knows very well that when they are at this kind of stage, his white funeral fencing art is especially weak to heavy blades. That's what he needed such a huge sword for. Moreover, if the guy was stronger than him in enlightenment, he would be a nobody. The young master scattered his body in all directions. Isn't that a contraction of the nine heavens? If he was the leader of the righteous heavenly alliance, he would know, King Chong Hajin's assassin. The third young master said that after Zhang Riyong changed his path from martial arts to politics and not really fighting for so long, he was very rusty. A year ago, he used the unstoppable network formation as an ambush, it wasn't a fight. Does he think he could push Dam Seong and take on the role of the righteous leader of the Heavenly Alliance with this level of talent? What the hell, said the elder. Is it really that bastard Chong Hajin? The guy replied that he didn't know who he was looking for before, but if he wanted to know who he was, they'd better start by giving him his leg. There are no other options. The third young lord ruthlessly cut off the elder's leg, with his mighty sword. Looks like Zhang Il Riyong had miscalculated. This guy was the first to hurt him like this since he joined the alliance, and even when he was entering martial arts, there are no plans to fight here. To survive, he must escape. Looking at the third young lord, the elder saw that he had lost a lot of energy. The door the guy opened is forcefully trying to close. If he continues to move in this way, he will increase the likelihood of his demonic energy deteriorating. He needs to find a way to replenish it. But, until then, he needs to attack and use his life force without moving too much. The elder was surprised, for the boy's face suddenly turned pale and his breathing became ragged. He seemed to be at the limit of his stamina. This bastard's art is not perfect. He believes that the only reason the young lord succeeded is because of the strange martial art. So they are still in the same state. And he feels more enlightenment in him, so his victory is close. And it's illogical for some demonic cult boy to have more enlightenment than him. Zhang Il Riyong realized that he had to take this opportunity and end it with a single attack. He attacked and shouted that the young lord's luck had just run out. However, no matter how much the elder thought he was strong, he was deeply mistaken. The third young lord swung his sword and cut him in two. The guy said there was no need to chase him. In his previous life, hope was the only thing that got him through hell. That's the hope of a free life. But now, it doesn't matter. The only thing he wanted was to kill him when he got back. But his hatred would never go away. After these words, the young master fainted from excessive energy. But help was already at hand. The fox Goldie led Don Pillion to the scene of the battle. The death toll in the lightning was five, including the temporary captain, and the death toll from the third escort group reached twenty-seven. Ju Hua apologized to the master of the inner enlightenment organ, Seo Young's him, and said that she should have been more vigilant. The woman asked why she was apologizing? After all, they are supposed to prosecute those who attack them. Besides, she said, the girl has completed the task. There was no need to punish her and they praised her instead. Enlightenment master thought that Zhu Hua was most likely tired after traveling and suggested that she share a meal together. The girl agreed. In just ten days, the third young lord had recovered more than half of his martial arts and was able to deal with the monsters attacking the members of the fortress. His way is truly frightening. She must see him and go to him immediately. Meanwhile, Dompil apologized to the leadership. He said that he didn't have enough skills and because of that his team members were killed. The man told Donpil not to doubt his abilities. If he didn't think he had enough ability and responsibility to fulfill his duties, he would never have appointed him to the position. He also said he would personally visit the families of the deceased. However, Donpil assured that they were his men and he was obliged to go alone. The head replied to him that it was an operation that was being done separately, without notifying the master guardian. He need not worry since he had sent them on this mission. And should bear his own responsibility. In their job, protecting means being willing to die for someone. That's the whole point of their job. As the leader of the group, the man said that Donpil should also take responsibility for some things. Therefore, the head should give him an appropriate punishment. Donpil needs to take a leave of absence to fulfill his duties in the guardroom. The third guard of the group will be suspended without time limit. 
however, Danpo will receive a secret order to cooperate with the security station. Until this is accomplished, he will not be able to be elected to the position of warden of the Hall of Keepers again. Indefinite suspension, Danpo has nothing to say, in fact, he even agrees to a full suspension from Hall security because of this mistake. The head said that from now on, Dongpil was chosen as the third young master's personal bodyguard. The disciplinary action against Ma Dongpil's team leader is ready. As a member of their hall, he dare not ask this of the third young master, but he can go and learn much from him. And so he's here again. Could this be some kind of dream? The guy can't believe he's finally passed out, and he's being treated like luggage. The young lord said that he couldn't go on like this any longer. As soon as he heard his name, something inside him stirred. But, what is it now? What kind of freedom is this for him? Does he really want it, or is it retribution? Suddenly the young master's thoughts were disturbed by Donpil. He attended to the young master. Since he's here, the guy offered him something to eat, as he's really hungry and can't take it anymore. However, before that, there was something Donpil wanted to say to the young lord. And what was it, the lad asked. From now on, he wholeheartedly declares that he will protect him as his personal guard. Donpil would give his life to protect him if necessary. The young master was shocked at these words. Who is the personal guard? he asked. The man replied that he would henceforth live and eat with him and act as his bodyguard. Is this a punishment for trying to escape? the young master thought. Anhua set the table and the boys began to feast. As expected her skill is top-notch, said the third young master. Even though the guy made it back safely, the fight with Zhang Aelryong was dangerous for him. There is a difference from the first demonic energy door. The second opening ceremony is a continuous technique of incarnating demonic energy to enhance its power. That's why it will certainly be a great strain on the body. The young lord needs something else until his energy is more successful. Like that old man, it would be nice to have a weapon with good compatibility. The boy asked Dongpil, he had a sword before, right? Where did he get it from? He replied that it was in the lord's arsenal. With that, he turned to the armory. The text Young Shim had given him also mentioned that Demon Heart Armory. A large armory in the outer hall where regular demons can come and go. This is where most of the sect members get their weapons. The Demon Lord's Armory. An indoor warehouse where only weapons made by craftsmen are displayed. Only the commander of the combat unit can enter and leave it, and sometimes there are weapons that can be called unique, and also the arsenal of celestial demons. It's where the cult's weapons are kept. Only the leader and subsequent successors can enter, even ancient demons cannot enter unless they have the leader's permission. The young lord asked Dongpil that they now needed the lord's permission to enter the heavenly demon vault. The man replied that was correct. The guy asked if he knew how to get in there. Dongpil said that student leaders have the right to enter the warehouse once. That means that if he visits that place, that body can be said goodbye to. Suddenly, Yun Hong Ryong intervened in their conversation. She said hello and said that she had prepared an appetizer. How about a glass of good drink? The third young gentleman saw her and was surprised. He asked her why she was not at work. The girl replied that she had come despite her very busy schedule to have a drink with him. Why isn't he happy? The guy said there was a place he was going to visit anyway, so let him come back later if he wanted something to drink. Yun Hong Ryong asked where he was going. The young lord replied that he didn't have to tell her his every move. In the end, the guy did reveal that he was going to the demon lord's warehouse. Is she happy now? However, someone overheard their conversation. The man asked the guy why he went to the demon lord's warehouse and not the heavenly demon's warehouse. It had been seven years since the man had last seen him like this. But it could be eight. The man asked if he was going to the arms depot. Could they pour him a glass of hot tea? The young gentleman was surprised at these strange questions. He said he was seeing it for the first time and it was not a tea house. It's clearly the wrong place, 
it's easy to get lost in this place. Donpol turned to the gentleman and said that this strange man was the general strategist. The man said it had been a long time and he was sorry the gentleman did not remember him. General strategist Ho Yo Sung asked the young master why he was going to the Demon King's weapon storage instead of the Heavenly Demon's weapon storage? Or had already visited this place? The third young lord replied that he was already there. That was why he was going to the Demon King's Weapons Depot. The strategist had heard that he usually used a rather fancy blade technique. Had he really decided to change his primary weapon? It seemed very strange to the young gentleman. Why this man was asking him such questions. Suddenly, strategist Ho Yosung offered his assistance in accessing the Heavenly Demon Weapon Vault. The young gentleman asked if this was really possible. The man replied that he had no reason to lie. The young lord assumed that he would want something in return. The man says he's sorry, but life is a trade-off. And it looks like the young gentleman already has experience with it. The guy wondered, what was the price of this exchange? The general strategist replied that he just wanted to talk to him and have a drink in the evening. The young gentleman apologized and said to wait a bit, he was going to go change his clothes. Guy ordered Dongpil to go to the master of the internal organ of enlightenment right away. Have him ask her if she met with the general strategist while he was away. If they met, what did they talk about? And if she said anything about him? Donpil said it would be done. General strategist Ho Yo Sung is different from anyone he has met in the divine cult. His words seem frivolous, but they all carry meaning. This person appeared after he came to his senses after returning to the divine cult. The young master is sure that he has met the master of the inner organ of enlightenment. He must know that the guy also went outside. The boy's instincts told him to avoid this man. He realized it as soon as he saw his face. For the technique of the six forces of the celestial network to react so acutely to the appearance of a master strategist who hadn't even studied martial arts. He tells the incredible story of how he went to enjoy nature on his first vacation and instead was robbed by bandits. His words oscillate between lies and truth. He is very skillful in hiding his true nature. The general strategist wiped out all those bandits. The young master praised him, saying he was brave. Ho Yo Sung disagreed and said he was the brave one. But why? The young man asked. The general strategist replied that he had earned a vacation to get out of it, but unfortunately the young gentleman managed to sneak out. The guy asked, what was the real reason for his coming to see him? Was it really just to see? He answered him that it was probably because of curiosity. Suddenly the young gentleman stopped. The strategist asked is something wrong? After all, the heavenly demon weapon storage was still quite a long way away. The guy says he has no other choice. He sees that the strategist went on this journey alone. The young lord doesn't feel the presence of an escort of warriors, and it's just not the right atmosphere. And there's only one unresolved question. Is he ready for his head to fly? Ho Yo Sung said that he didn't expect this turn of events. The young lord replied that predictable plots are not enjoyable. The general strategist couldn't understand why the young lord was doing this. He would like to know the reason. The guy said he didn't know the real reason, but after all, he's not here out of curiosity or goodwill. The strategist assures him that he doesn't know what it is, but senses that something is there, and so threatens him to try to find out? The young lord said that it wasn't a simple threat. He's fully prepared to kill him right now. Ho Yo Sung asked, is he going to kill the chief strategist of the cult? There's no escaping those consequences even if he's the third young lord. The boy replied that it was nothing to worry about. The strategist told him to put his sword back where it belonged. This could be seen as a betrayal. The man thought it didn't matter. Whether he dies now or later, from old age or some other way, everyone dies sooner or later anyway. However now, he could feel the determination in his blade, could really die. The guy asks one last time why he decided to visit him. He will kill him if he says it was out of curiosity. But, as he found out, Ho Yo Sung asked. The young lord warned against answering the question with a question. He had already said that this was his last chance. The chief strategist said he would tell him if he also told him how he knew he had other intentions. The young gentleman replied that he didn't know anything, it was intuition, and he had a sixth sense. So when his logic and emotions clash, he acts as those emotions suggest. 
and then the guy knows that at least he won't have any regrets. Sixth Sense The man marveled that he could hear about it here. After all, he was already familiar with it. He was once with a demon lord. He told him to do something. And assured him it was the right thing to do, because his sixth sense told him to, and told me to keep one thing in mind from now on. The world doesn't work on the basis of logic alone. Smart people like strategists often forget that. You have to work on your intuition. Logic may give him answers to questions in the present, but intuition gives him answers to questions in the future. From this springs true wisdom. Hearing those words, the general strategist bowed to him. He didn't even bow when he met the imperial prince, but he couldn't help but bow to the demon lord. Unlike the prince who was just giving orders, he had taught him a great lesson. The third young gentleman said that if he didn't know the answer to some question, he'd better let someone else ask. Who knows, they might know the answer. What does he mean, the strategist asked. He just wanted to see how the guy would react if he put him in an awkward situation. As an example, it would be if a young lord walked into a weapons depot and then said that actually he had no right to send anyone there. The guy asked, so he would put him in there and then claim that he entered without permission? If that happened, even the demon lord's disciples wouldn't be able to avoid disciplinary action. Trespassing into forbidden territory is a serious offense. In truth, the young lord thinks he is a very wicked man. Strategists said he hears that a lot. They call him crazy. What a moron, the guy thought, finding something to brag about. The young master said he was incredible and suggested that we split up. Ho Yo was shocked at what he heard. But what about the heavenly demon weapon now? And what about having a drink with him? The guy replied that he wasn't going to drink with a man who was going to send him to prison just to satisfy his own curiosity. In any case, he didn't need to go to the heavenly demon's weapon storage. Strategists said he thought he was a man of his word. Been partying hard the last few nights for this day. The young lord asked, is there any reason why he should care? Suddenly, the strategist asked him a counter question. He sent his warrior escort to the master of the inner enlightenment organ, right? Ho Yo thinks it was done to warn her. Or maybe to tell her not to say anything about him, to keep her mouth shut. If this retard knows everything, that means he's more than just a nuisance, the young lord thought. The master of the inner organ of enlightenment no longer trusts him. Shouldn't the young master be a bit to him? After all, he had ruined the only relationship he had in the divine cult. He has no other friends here anymore. In the end, the guy decided to have a drink with him to his heart's content. The strategist replied that it was a very wise choice, but they would stop by the weapons depot first. Coming out of the warehouse, the general strategist was shocked that the young gentleman had taken so many weapons. He asked him why not just one weapon. The guy replied that he told him he was only sending him there once so he wouldn't take one thing. He's so hard to deal with, the strategist thought. He certainly seemed to be an immature child. You can't really get to know a person until you meet them face to face. It looked like the master of the inner enlightenment organ was right. It was as if some old martial arts master who had gone through hell and back had taken over his body. The young gentleman asked him, how much longer will he be cowering there? He's a busy man, after all, he needs time to drink. The chief strategist doesn't doubt him since he was able to escape alive from the demonic judgment pavilion. But, he is not someone who would harm the divine cult. And Ho Yo Sung believes that's why the demon lord left him alone. But who knows what changes he'll bring. He'll have to go see the demon lord tomorrow. The young lord and his new swords returned home. At the entrance, Donpol's subordinate was waiting for him with a completed task. The man asked the young lord where he had brought so many weapons from. He replied that these weapons were from the heavenly demon's vault. Donpol was surprised to see so many swords. It looked like the young lord had chosen the best weapons. On his belt hangs a knight's sword made of black demonic flame. A sword that looks ordinary, but is deadly. It was one of the favorite weapons of the seven great demons who had once terrorized the world of Murim. The blue sword and the red sword are twins, they are called demonic weapons due to the reputation of the previous owner. But this item actually deserves the title of divine weapon. What is unusual is that they have never been able to be used together. 
Therefore, this weapon is coveted by all. Donpo praised and said that he had found an unusual weapon. The boy replied that he just liked it, whether it was good or not. He just feels that the sword suits him. This was what the man expected from the young master. He didn't care about the history of the sword, he was just wondering if the sword was right for him. The third young gentleman showed Dongpil a huge sword and asked if he knew its origin. The man replied that he had never seen it before. The boy gave it to Dongpil and said he found it in the corner of the warehouse. The man took it in his hands and felt that the sword was very heavy, at least sixty pounds. For a long battle, it was not an item the young lord could use. But his eyes continued to stare at it. Unlike the other weapons on the rack, it was lying at an angle, so he couldn't determine its name. But judging from the hilt, the guy decided to call it Young Gindo. Dongpil said that the hilt looked more like dragon scales. He doesn't understand the meaning of the name the young master gave. However, what is truly remarkable about the young master and what Dongpil noticed during their stay in the bamboo forest is that he can use various weapons without difficulty. His skills are truly outstanding. The guy gave Dongpil one of the swords and said let him take it no matter how good his eyesight is. The young master doesn't know if it's right for him or not. Nevertheless, he chose it given that Donpil is on such a serious and arduous path in martial arts. One of the five great demonic swords and one of the ten strongest magic swords, the Sword of Muhanji. It is also called the Sword of Silence. This is due to the fact that when the wielder of the sword does not show his skills, it does not produce any effects. However, when its master becomes a worthy man for it, the sword unleashes a terrible power. To pay for this sword, saying thank you ten million times is not enough. Such words would most likely degrade the young master's dignity. However, if Donpil does so, he vows to protect him for the rest of his life. He has no other options. His name is Madonpil and he vows to be the young lord's best protector, for the rest of his days. Suddenly someone knocked on the door and shouted that he had a message from the demon lord. He wants to see the third young master in his palace. The young lord greeted the demon lord. He told him to sit down and poured him his drink. The demon lord said that the guy had practiced well. He heard that the guy is tough on fourth graders. At the heart of the fourth young lord is modification, the art of the red house. He is a stubborn person, but he has good skills and ideas and the ability to create something new even at such a young age, which not everyone can do. Gradually, however, he progressed and in just three years became quite a flamboyant artist. The boy thought that something was wrong. After all, the demon lord is talking a lot about him today. However, he doesn't know what his purpose is. A strategist without power can be called a shrewd man, but hardly a great strategist. The fourth young master had great talent, but he ruined it by plunging into intrigue. Those who don't know and judge his talent are stupid people. And he personally hates stupid people. That's why the demon lord is disappointed with the fourth lord, he shouldn't live like this. But, what the demon lord didn't expect the most was that he fell into the hands of the third young lord. The demon lord knows the fourth lord's ambition and knows from his words that he is not someone who achieves his goal. However, he didn't think that he would lose the battle of succession so quickly. He doesn't like stupid people, but does the third young lord know what kind of people he likes? He likes those who exceed his expectations. And the third young lord is on that list. After all, he does it repeatedly and has been doing it for quite some time. Which is why he admires him. It can't be, thought the third young lord. The demon lord himself admires him. A sense of pride arises, and behind that sense of pride is self-hatred. After a miserable life as a secret alliance weapon and a life as a dog for his leader. Because of this life lesson, he is now recognized and considered the strongest person he can be. He hated himself for admitting it so emotionally. Maybe he needed to wake up, because he dreamed of freedom all his life. But, who in the world is even capable of receiving a compliment from such a monster? If you used to be a dog to him that it's quite normal to feel proud. If this is true, then it turns out that self-hatred is unnecessary because one is only experiencing negative emotions. So emotions come and go naturally. He doesn't need to blame himself for feeling something or really wanting to feel it. After all, 
these feelings are all part of who he is. The demon lord told the guy that he was constantly changing and growing and that's why he thought he was special. But now that the man said this, the third young lord really felt that it was inappropriate for him. After all, he was just an ordinary disciple. The man remembered that the general strategist came yesterday. He said that the young lord had opened a celestial demon weapon storehouse. Also the demon lord asked the guy if he liked swords much, maybe he wasn't very comfortable using them. The man held out his hand and said that the sword of the seven demons and the twin swords were good choices. He would be disappointed if the guy took something that didn't match his predecessor's legacy. Suddenly, all of the young lord's swords fell from the sky. The young lord realized that this void control was a divine ability. Had he really taken his weapon left at the entrance, along with his bag? What level had this man reached? The demon lord said that it would be a reward for the disciple who exceeded his expectations. Let him choose any weapon he likes. The boy didn't understand what he wanted to convey with that ambiguous look. The man said he would teach him a lesson. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Knowledge equals understanding and with it comes the instinct to attack. This will be his only chance to defeat the giant named Li Chion Sang. Judging from the marks, you could tell that the attack was perfect. But, he didn't block the blow or dodge it. Why isn't there a single scratch? The man said the punch was excellent. But, he said he would teach him a lesson, not attack him. The guy seemed to have understood his intentions perfectly. Is this intelligence due to ability? Or is it senses? No ability is that simple. He's like a beast and he has an instinct for danger. The demon lord said he had a question for the guy. He's not going to end their conversation with one punch, is he? And he's ready to keep going, so why stop? The third young lord was shocked by what he heard. How could he read his intentions? Li Qion is right, he has no reason to stop. He has to do it, there's no other choice. And if he continues, he'll hit him right back. Is that an instinct too? The demon lord thought to himself to be prepared. He said he would teach him a lesson. However, still doesn't know what the guy has and what he can show. That's why, the man hasn't given him any clues yet. The demon lord knows the kid's got something else. So this time, let him give it his best shot. The guy realized that this was the moment he should open the gate of the dark shadow demonic art. The young lord shouted that he was using the power of the divine stage. Could it be that this time, he would exceed his expectations? If so, he can surpass them even more. He has already lost one life, now he has nothing left to lose. Meanwhile, Yui Hongryong decided to stop by to visit the young lord. Anhua told her that he had gone to the demon lord's palace. Yui Hong Ryong was angry, why would the young lord meet with a demon lord? How could he even be busier than her? The guy doesn't work anywhere, right? Anhua said that there was no need to be rude to the young master. He was called, so he had to go. Hong Ryong was surprised at the maid's boldness. Had she lost her fear? However, the girl can't hit her because she's too small. So she'll put up with her antics for now. Nearby, Donpil was practicing with his new sword. Hearing their conversation the man came over and said that they didn't know when the young lord would be back. If she had just come for a drink, she could leave. The girl asked why he was playing with his sword here. Let him go back to the guard palace and train there, this isn't his home, is it? Donpil replied that he had been assigned as the young lord's bodyguard. Had no one told her that? She saw his sword and asked where he got it from. The man said the young master had given it to him. The girl didn't understand why the young lord had given him such a relic. Where was her legacy? Why only to him? The man chose to ignore her questions. When will the young master return? He can't handle that woman. At this time, the third young lord was lying down and couldn't move. It was difficult for him to breathe even from such lessons. His strength is half of what it used to be, though he always tries his best. But why does the guy still feel good? He got a lot of use out of it. Fighting a man as powerful as him was a lesson in itself. Despite always making him worry, in the end, it did some good things for him as well. The demon lord said he's had enough. We need to get back to the tower. Half a day is like half a year. 
hopes he's learned something. He wrote something to him with a black brush and told him it was the missing element in his martial arts. The guy's demonic arts are no less great than the ten greatest demonic arts. But, there were some parts that he would have to learn on his own because they had only just opened up. The third young lord wondered how the demon lord was able to see his weaknesses and details that needed to be changed in the dark shadow domain art in just half a day. He'd never gotten anything like this before. And he hadn't even realized that the lord had such a side to him. This is a very good lesson, his mind was shaken again. He was truly grateful to him for such a chance. However, the Lord himself told him not to thank him or think that this was a worthy reward for a student who had surprised his teacher. The young Lord replied that he would try and would not let him down. The man told him that he would look forward to it. The demon Lord got curious. After all, he feels attracted to someone, which means the guy is still in demon territory. It had been quite some time since someone had been able to point their sword at him, even leaving the mark of the supreme sword he managed to wield. Looks like this guy's evolved. The legend of a mythical fox who brought war to different countries. If this legend is true, the person who caused the war will always be on the verge of death. This man understands death better than anyone else. Does that mean it's time? In the Heavenly Demon Cult's martial department, there was another conversation going on about the third young master. The first guard of the Heavenly Demon Palace, Mu Dam heard that general strategist Ho Yo Sung had met with the third young master. What is his impression? The man thought for a long time and said it's hard to know everything about a person from just one meeting. The first guardian assumed that the general strategist is the person who knows the cult best. Ho Yo Sung took his words as a compliment, saying that he was the first guard to say such a thing to him. Mu Dam had heard from people that he was so strange. The general strategist asked why he was asking about him. The one replied that two days ago, the third young master had been summoned by the demon lord to his palace. The demon lord taught him for half a day. While none of the potential successors had received any lessons from him until now. This is unexpected. The man had heard that Ho Yo Song was opening the heavenly demon armory for the third young master. He replied that he was right. But he can't interfere in the battle for the throne. It would be at the demon lord's discretion. Ho Yo Sung doesn't see the internal balance in his cult being disturbed. Nor does he think they should take sides. Did the first guard really come to him to admonish him? The man replied that he didn't have the authority or experience to do so, or even the wisdom to harangue him. He is only here as the head of the palace guard to express concern to the man at the pinnacle of cult politics. The general strategist asked, so when the man asked about the third young master, he meant to say that the guy was the one who was needed to open the heavenly demon arsenal? The man replied that was correct. In this case, the man said he would answer this way. He doesn't need to open a warehouse for him. People who are already superior to others don't need something like a weapon. He can't say with certainty what kind of person this third young master is, but judging from his conversation, one can understand him a little better. The first guardian said that he thought he was on the cusp of cultist politics? The strategist said that wasn't true, he wasn't good enough to accept such an offer. He's just someone who prepares great calculations, understanding and considering the differences between the people in the cult to help the demon lord accurately assess it. Ho Yo Sung believes that what first guardian Mudam is worried about should not happen. The man has always been mistaken about the master strategist. He knew his unique demeanor wasn't the only thing about him, but his sincere devotion to the cult. The strategist himself had not expected to be discussing the future of the celestial cult with the first guardian he had only interacted with a few times. Is it really all thanks to the third young master? The life of the heavenly cult in their days is very interesting. The training process was underway. The young lord told Donpil that he was overreacting to his killing intent. Perhaps it has to do with being a guardian charged with protecting him at all costs. If you look at it positively, it's a responsibility, but if you look at it negatively, the man is still too strict. It limits his potential. Just like that, the guy tells Donpil that he's strong enough, but still not good enough to protect him. He doesn't want the man to die before him just because he wants to protect him. After the young master's words, Dong Pil wondered. Does he not burden himself too much with this responsibility? The guy said that's enough training for today. We should go get something to eat. 
Donpol said yes, and thanked him for practicing. Suddenly, the young master felt a great energy outside the gate. It seemed an interesting guest had come to them. The master of the criminal law hall of the heavenly divine cult of the heavenly demon Gu Guagu. The boy asked what had brought him here. As far as he could remember, they weren't close enough for the man to visit him. The master is sure that the lad knows about the upcoming Mara festival. The young lord replied that he had heard of it, but what did it have to do with him? Guagu said that the guy once talked about how he didn't like to waste time on meaningless conversations. The young lord appreciates that the man remembers that. The master got straight to the point. He was here to ask the third young master to do him a favor. The guy thought about it and asked, why should he help people who don't even like him? His beliefs haven't changed, Gogu still thinks he's a dangerous man. But, he thinks that if they have a common enemy, he can help him. The guy immediately asked, what kind of common enemy are we talking about? As a man in the race for the succession, aren't all the other candidates his enemies? During the Feast of Mara, he arrests and imprisons one of his disciples. The third young lord is surprised, he asks for help catching another apprentice? Put your like on the video if you liked it. That way you increase the chance of a new episode. Mara Festival, is an ancient ritual dedicated to the only god of the divine cult of celestial demons and lord of the sixth heaven of the wishing world, Mara. In the past, they even offered human sacrifices to Mara. It was then that the cult of the divine heavenly demon began to gain notoriety as a demon cult. But the current Mara festival is different. Despite its doctrines and scriptures, the divine cult of heavenly demons is engaged in mundane affairs. After all, today's Mara festival is simply an ancient rite, no different from the Murum festival held by the demon cult. The third young lord had already heard about it from Donpo. However, what was the connection between the request for help and the Mara festival? The man said that during this year's Mara festival, they will arrest one of the heirs to the criminal court jail. The young lord was surprised at this turn of events. However, they wouldn't touch the other six unless they committed a serious crime. He asked if there was any other heir besides the remaining six. Master replied that there was, to be precise, he was nominated as the heir, and would arrive at the Mara festival. He is the eldest son of the demonic sword family, demon sword family. As members of the seven families of the demon cult, they are considered the greatest when it comes to wielding a sword. The guy asked why he wanted to put him in jail. Had he done something bad? Guagu replied that the man had robbed and killed seven cult followers and framed an innocent half-demon for the crime. The cult made a serious mistake. The perpetrator is still alive and well and the innocent half-demon who gave his all to the cult was wrongly executed. It's a disgrace to the cult, and they need to capture the bastard. They need to catch him and deliver him to the grieving family of a half-demon who died unjustly. The young lord inquired as to how they wanted to capture him. He replied that he didn't know, which was why he had come to him. The guy decided he had to start doing something about it. He came to the divine cult of the celestial demon a center of inner enlightenment. The young lord apologized for coming unannounced. He said it was because of an unjust execution. The girl didn't know what he meant. Two years ago, one of the maids working at the inner enlightenment center was murdered. He wants information on the victim. The guy said she probably knew that the real culprit was someone else. Seo Young Shim wondered, how did he know that? The girl asked if it was the criminal law hall that was addressing him. The young lord replied, quickly realizing it all. Has the perpetrator been identified? He can't tell her that. Guy noticed that the pressure of demonic energy emanating from her is very strong. It happened a few years ago, but her rage hasn't diminished. These five scrolls contain all the information about the victim. The young lord thanked her for her cooperation and said he was leaving. Seo Young Shim thought it was strange that the third young lord didn't mention Mara's celebration today. He probably thought that the girl might reveal the identity of the real culprit. If the criminal law department could have solved this with their investigative skills, they would have done it themselves. But they turned to one of the heirs for help. This means only one thing, even the criminal law room staff cannot easily touch the true criminal. However, 
it is likely that the true culprit is a high-ranking demi-demon official who attends the Mara festival. Seo Youngsim ordered her assistant to bring her a list of high-ranking officials participating in this year's Mara festival especially those belonging to the seven families of the demon cult. The guy wanted to read something about the laws, since it has to do with catching a criminal. However, why is it so thick? He can't ignore it. Any other heir could step in and handle it better. Wouldn't that time be better spent finding a way to escape from there, the boy thought. It's more practical to realize his dream. He still wants to break free but it would be wrong to know and ignore it. However, he finds it funny that a former assassin is talking about what's right. The guy isn't going to be a threat, but he has to remain human. When faced with such a request, people should at least share the outrage, even if they can't do anything to help. This is one of those cases. The young lord asked Donpil how he was feeling. He should be as good as new. The man replied that it was amazing. He had never imagined that he had such strength in him. The guy replied that he couldn't believe he was suppressing his potential so hard either. Donpil said he was ashamed to look into his eyes. The young lord replied that he should not be ashamed to look him in the eye. He should be ashamed of the way of thinking that held him captive. What is the point of a strong will if his way of thinking is not flexible? If this continues, he will eventually face a hard blow. The guy shouted that maybe they should quietly head out and finally get a look at the perpetrator's face? The young lord's first impressions are very positive. He said that Anhua was very happy to have the opportunity to go out. The guy is glad that he gave her time off during the festival. Looking at the young lord, Donpil was shocked that he was so happy considering his usual tenseness. As they walked further, they saw a traveling theater. The story of the last surviving member of a dead family overcoming adversity, becoming a hero and being staged in Jianghu. The plot is obvious, but cliched stories are usually enjoyable. The guy suddenly noticed Yui Hong Ryong. He shouted that if someone called her, she should answer. Does she still resent the guy turning down her invitation to go for a drink? Or is she crying over the play? She seems to have a rather sweet side to her. The girl didn't expect to see him in this setting. They announced that the Demon Sword family had arrived. The boy will finally see him. This is the grand entrance of the family to which the criminal belongs. This is the Demon Sword family. Among the seven demon cult families, they are famous for their martial prowess. Divine Heavenly Demon Cult The Lord of the Seven Demon Sword Family, Ji Wun Hui, the Demon Sword family hadn't attended the Mara Festival in three years. This time, both the family's elite squad and honor sword squad had arrived. The young lord had heard that the eldest son of the demon sword family would become the demon lord's apprentice during the Mara festival. Donpil thought that the demon sword family's martial arts up close are really impressive. He studies the master's stern aura, and holds himself with unwavering dignity. He told the young gentleman that he was happy to come to the event with him, but it turned out he was already gone. A guy came out to meet Ji Wun Wan and asked, is he the demon sword family lord? The man asked, who is he? The young gentleman replied that some time ago he had been seriously injured and had lost his memory. Maybe they had met before, but he had no memories. Anyway, nice to meet you. The lord doesn't know who he is. But he thinks the guy is well aware of the disrespect he's showing. The young lord wondered what he had done to disrespect him. Did he eat too much kebab? The man said that the lad was rather profane. The young lord replied that he asked for a reason, and the man called him a curmudgeon. This is the kind of attitude that arrogant old men often show him. Those words hit him deeply. The swordsman he commanded radiated great energy, but a tiger can't be intimidated by wolves. On the other hand, the demon sword family lord remains calm despite the provocation. The man said he didn't know why the guy was being so disrespectful, but for now he would graciously let it pass, so let him get out. Anyway, he has one question for him. As a father, if he witnessed his child committing a heinous crime, what would he do? Is that really hard to answer? The man said his policy is to avoid pointless discussions. This is the first day of the Mara festival. So he's not going to let this disrespect show again. 
Get him out of here now. Donpol knows that this is the technique of the demonic sword family lord's hand movement technique, it's amazing how powerful it is considering he just used the sword energy to enhance the surge of chi in his hand. The young lord said he had had enough of the hand technique. Let him answer quickly, his neck hurts. Ji Wun Hua is shocked, why is the guy perfectly fine? Even despite his sword swinging technique, the boy asked was his question really that difficult? The lord saw that the young master was using martial arts in front of his eyes. What incredible strength and power! Who is this young man? The guy shouted that he had eaten the most delicious kebab of his life today. With such demonic power, the demonic sword family lord's horse was startled and he almost fell down. The man said that the young lord was quite brave since he used his martial arts to attack him. He controls the speed of his fall using only his internal energy. The guy asked why he was wasting his energy. Or is he going to attack? He's the one who started it all in the first place. Ji Wun Hua said he's a little asshole. He's going to change the tiles himself. The young lord said that he was going to repel his attack, but despite that, he still relied on his strength and didn't touch his body. The man was shocked to see that the cracks in the ground stopped right in front of his horse. He would never have believed a guy like him could reach that level. Even though the man didn't use weapons to minimize the damage. Could he be a supreme master? Ji Wun Hua asked who he really was. The guy said let him answer his question first. He said he doesn't have to answer questions from people whose identity is unknown. The young lord said, on second thought, he really was too arrogant. The man asked again, who was he? Suddenly, Donpol came out of the crowd and said let them welcome the demon lord's disciple, the third young master. Everyone was shocked by what they heard. His name is Ma Dongpil and he is here to accompany his master. Meanwhile, in the criminal law hall, a rumor had already spread that the third young master and the demonic sword family had clashed. Hall Master Guo Gu said that this is probably an emergency, let them send the squad members without the guardian's knowledge now. So this was how this guy was going to start. The man knew it was a double-edged sword, but he didn't expect the hilt to have a blade too. Many people say this is the first time they've seen the third young master. He is rumored to be so handsome. The man had seen him after he was chosen as the third young master. But there's a big difference between what he was then and what he is now. The guy's changed a lot. The guy asked, is something wrong? Why is everyone looking at his face? How much longer to wait for their greeting? The head of the sword demon family, Ji Wun Hui in his squad welcomes the third young master. What a short and simple greeting. They don't underestimate their opponents, but they're not too polite already. Ji Wun Hui says he didn't know the guy was the third young master. He admits his mistake of being presumptuous. As a candidate for Demon Lord, the man displayed inappropriate speech and actions. He offers to pretend it never happened. The guy agreed and said that he didn't come here to start a fight. However, the man never answered his question. He replied that he would appreciate it if the young gentleman would remind him what the question was. The guy said sure. He could repeat it anywhere and anytime. And his question, as a father, how would he react if he knew his son had committed a shameful crime? The man thought, what was the purpose of this guy asking this question to him in front of a crowd? There was no point in having a long conversation with a man of his status. Ji Wun Hui replied that he would support that his case be handled according to the law. The guy says it's ambiguous to say it's in accordance with the law. What does he mean when he says he's going to be tried under their family law? The family laws of a demon sword are stricter than other families. If such a time comes, he will be with the law even if it is his son. The young gentleman asked, since it was his son, could he assume that the punishment would be harsher? This guy seems to have subtly expanded his meaning. Since there are a lot of bystanders around, he can't argue with him. The man replied that everything was right. The head of such a big family like him would definitely give his son a solid education. And not just his son. He swears he'll do the same to his entire family. Ji Wun Hua will never do anything to dishonor his family. The young master thinks the man said it because of pride. Even though he was the head of the Sword Dawn family, it sounded sincere. Guy apologized for interrupting their journey. Glad to welcome them to the Mara festival. Ji Wun Hui replied that there was no problem. He and his squad went on their way. 
Ji Kong Hyun's eldest son Ji Kong Hyun and Ji Young Hyun's third son, judging by the expression on their faces, they were not happy about the incident. Dong Pil said that the head of the Black Sword Demon family is indeed extraordinary. It is said that his eldest son's skills are not inferior to his skills. The young lord replied that he was right, but that bloodlust was not the kind of blood one could get on the battlefield. Unless he paid for it with someone else's life. Judging by his energy, he killed at least one person in a day, maybe two. Without giving the man a chance to fight back. Donpil was surprised, because it's kind of crazy to kill one person every day. The boy thinks the heads of their families don't seem to know anything. But what's worse is the third son, Ji Young Hyun. He is the youngest and harbors power beyond reason. Even after his senses were sharpened thanks to the demon lord, he could barely see the power this guy was hiding. At least, Ji Yong Hyun has an even or greater strength than himself. This is getting more and more interesting. The third young master must outdo himself. Meanwhile, Yui Hong Ryong sang her drink and complained to the guys why she wasn't given a single sword. Why was Donpil the only one to receive the sword from the young master? What had he done for him that was so wrong? Donpil said, don't be so over the top. Besides, this is an unusual sword, and one of the five most powerful magic swords in the cult. It's a pity for her that this sword would fall into the hands of a big frog like him. This sword must recognize who is truly worthy of being its wielder. Even if he trained for a lifetime, a person like Dongpil would never be able to prove the true worth of this sword. Anhua said she fainted. Donpil saw that it was one o'clock and he must return before the city gates closed. The girl woke up and asked why Dongpil had left. Could it be angry because she called him a frog? Even in the scabbard the sword looked fine, she was very tired. Suddenly, Yu Hong Ryong felt that this person had released a huge amount of energy. The young master is not happy, why are they sending him from one place to another? He has somewhere to go soon, so he hopes Guo Gu will be brief. The man asked, why did the guy do this today? Why did he make a scene in front of the demonic sword family procession? The young master replied, didn't he hear that it ended peacefully? Master Guagu states that just because a guy is unharmed doesn't mean it will end peacefully. He asked, doesn't he like it? The man said that the young master was jumping to conclusions too hastily. What was the meaning of this ambiguous question? Because of his words, the real culprit would surely hide even more now. The guy replied that if he was a person who hides just because of that, there wouldn't be so many victims. This criminal will not stop killing because of such a trifle. But one thing is certain. The head of their family loudly declared in front of everyone that he would not let the criminal go, even if it was his own son. His words as head of the family are very influential. Now he won't be able to intervene or at least make a big move, because in this case he will lose his face as the head of the family. Image in society is the key to determining the rise or fall of power. Guy isn't sure if the head of the demonic sword family is a fool who is willing to destroy the family just to save his son. Master Guagu said, understanding his opinion now. However, it would only make sense when they caught the real culprit. If they continued without proof, the angry demon family's magic sword would strike them down. The guy replied that he would have to accept it if it really happened. The man said he had another question for him. What is his true purpose? The young master said, why is he suddenly asking him this? Since their first meeting, he believes that the third young master has never been loyal to the cult. Master Guagu finds it strange. How does a person chosen by the Lord as a disciple not show any ambition? The guy replied that he overestimated him. He thinks his ambitions are too big. Guogu said that the third young master was talking like a politician. The guy asked, isn't ambition and the desire for power the essence of a demonic cult? If he has ambition, life becomes difficult. The best things in life are being able to eat well, feel comfortable and sleep well. The man asked, then why didn't he deny his request? Wouldn't that create problems in his life? He understood it all now, though. He realized why he kept thinking that the third young master was dangerous and made him feel uncomfortable. The third young master is not someone who deserves to be in their demonic cult. It's time for a change. Master Guagu doesn't know if the boy is aware that tomorrow, the highest officials of the Murim will swear an oath to the demon lord. 
And after the ceremony, there will be a contest that will determine the future of the entire cult. But what does it have to do with him? The boy asked. The man said that all reports of recent unpleasant events would be discussed there. For example, the incident with the death of the Alliance leader. The young gentleman asked, if he knew, why didn't he lock him behind bars sooner? Isn't it a crime to go outside without permission? Master Guo Gu replied that it was because the leader didn't want that. He didn't want third young master to get into trouble with the criminal law halls at a time like this. The boy asked that the leader didn't ask to be released, did he? The man replied that it was true, even though he was aware of the third young master's crime. Master Guo Gu ignored him. The guy said it turns out a man can ignore his offense. Master Guo Gu replied that it wasn't about what he had already done, but what he was going to do now. Suddenly, he started attacking the guy. However, the young master managed to draw his sword and repel his blow. The guy noticed that his attack became stronger and faster. It's different from before. He had made up his mind and so he showed his martial art. The young master asked why all this time the man had been hiding such a good sword. However, why didn't the guy show his true martial art? He said that the man needlessly kept talking as if he knew something about him. He really doesn't like that. This is the wind of the six realms of hell. The man said that the guy immediately displayed swordsmanship arts. After releasing energy, he attacked, repelling his blow. What an incredible pressure. The guy asked why he suddenly decided to attack him. Or is he testing him? He stated that they should end this fight right now. Master Guo Gu replied that he now understood why the demon lord was interested in him. The young gentleman said he didn't care. He will ignore it as the man asked. Guo Gu warned the guy to be careful of the leader as he plunged into endless darkness. He had reached such a pinnacle that he was completely invisible to human eyes. Having reached an extreme degree of anger and hatred, his senses died. However, these feelings can explode like a volcano any way he wants. The demon lord thinks everything in this world is ridiculous. And at the same time, he's afraid of everything in the world. A man who looks up to heaven may be considered to have his feet already in hell. But before he realizes it, the man has ascended to the clouds and is now looking at hell. That's what a cult leader is all about. The boy said that he didn't know what he was talking about. Master Guo Gu replied that he didn't expect him to understand, but when the time came, he hoped the young master would remember his words. When that time comes, the guy has to take the lead and lead them. The guy thinks he's definitely a no-brainer. Suddenly jumped him and now he's talking nonsense. Just as Donpil had suspected, the third young master turned out to be right. Obviously, it was the same one, Ji Yun Hyung, the third son of the Demon Sword family. Looks like he drinks a little more alcohol than Yui Hong Ryong. After being hit by Dongpil, he remained unharmed despite taking on all of his power. The man yelled for Ji Yun Hyun to wake up. This guy looked nothing like the one he'd seen this afternoon. He looked like a calm and peaceful young man before, but now it was like he had been drinking all week. He yelled for the man to give him his sword. Donpil thinks the guy now looks like he's completely lost his mind or needs to get some sleep. He's still demanding to give him the sword. His skill is amazing. It's very difficult, because not only his hands, but his whole body, makes his chi as sharp as a steel sword. But compared to his chi, Dongpil's capabilities were much lower. It was as if he only trained his demonic and internal energy. It looked like this was the end of him. But suddenly, someone shouted at the top of their voice for the yellow frog to move away. Yui Hong Ryong came to Dong Pil's rescue. While she doesn't like attacking someone in a mob, she thinks it doesn't matter if the opponent is someone like him. The girl asked Dong Pil if he was okay. The man replied that he was fine and thanked her. Hong Ryong said let him not thank her yet. They have to get out of this situation first. She can only judge it from one attack. This person had spent years training her body to be as hard as steel. How could she reach that level? And it looks like he's in desperate need of Donpil's sword. He's coming for them. Damn. I wonder if his mouth smells the same, Donpil thought. He's absorbing the energy of his sword. He seems to like the taste of energy very much. 
but the man won't just give it away. This sword was given to him by a young master and he won't let him touch it again. Such lunatics don't deserve such a sword. The girl is shocked, do monsters like him really exist? He yelled for Hong Ryong to leave him alone. His strength already exceeds the level of enlightenment, if she comes under this attack, she will have to say goodbye to her life. Hong Ryong doesn't understand how he got so much strength. Dongpil said she doesn't know either, but will she be able to hold out until the young master arrives? Another attack by Ji Young Hyun is coming. A third young lord suddenly appeared and repelled his blow that would have destroyed his comrades. The guy said Dongpil was his bodyguard, but to protect him anyway. The man asked for forgiveness. The young gentleman replied that it was just a joke. He apologized for being late. He was held up by that annoying man who always likes to talk. The young master noticed that his energy is strong, but his abilities are like a child wielding a wooden sword. And the movements are very simple. His strength and mobility had reached the limit, but even so, as long as he had energy, he could fight and release sword chi. But the young master will beat him until one of them runs out of strength. He has great skills too. The guy will be attacking him, so let him defend himself as best he can. A blow from the mountain fist. Isn't he living too quietly? Is it emotion or is it a sense of freedom? It feels so good. The third young master feels so alive. Dongpil shouted for him to stop. The guy has already lost consciousness. The third young gentleman asks why everyone is looking at him like that. The guys don't understand why he beat the bastard so badly. What happened to his face? He can't even open his mouth. The guy replied that it was a little damaged but still recognizable. Master Go Gu said that the culprit was the older brother, but why was Ji Young Hyun's third son Ji Young Hyun hurt? The young master replied that it still needs to be found out. As everyone already knows, this is quite difficult because the perpetrator left no evidence. It's a clean sweep, without any evidence. A thoroughness that avoids the look of a witty father listening to the king of swords. Does everyone really think he could do this on his own? The guy assumed there must be some accomplice. And when he saw them in person, he realized that's exactly what it was. The older brother is full of magical murders that can only be accomplished with a one-sided assassination. And the younger brother is hiding incredible and suspicious magical energy. This means that they are the real culprits and accomplices of the incident. Master Guagu said that the real culprits would deny their guilt. It's a fantastic herb. He was able to get it from Joxajai with great difficulty. Regardless of the type of herb containing hallucinogenic components, it weakens the will. With Wang Gikko's help, he confesses to his older brother Ji Konghyun's crime. The young master thinks he needs to get him to confess to his suspicious magical abilities as well. The demonic energy overflowing this guy's body must have been killing and kidnapping people. This became even more obvious when the guy saw him running towards him with bulging eyes, driven by the demonic energy of the Sword King. But no matter how many confessions they get from these two and take them to criminal court, it's useless unless they convince at least one person. Now the young gentleman needs to meet the last person who can definitely solve this problem. The alcohol they drink in Shinjio is definitely different. Is it because today is the first day of school? Or is it because tomorrow his son will become a disciple of a religious leader? Even under the pleasant night breeze and fragrant tea, Jae Woon Hui can't calm down. A third young lord came to him. He asked the man, are these three Confuciuses? Why does he drink tea instead of alcohol? Or is a man of righteous living? The young lord asked if the man would mind disturbing his rest a bit. He replied that of course not. The guy said he knows he's the head of the family anyway, doesn't like to be inconvenienced, so he'll tell you right away why he came. The young lord said that they arrested his third son, Ji Young Hyun. The man didn't understand what the arrest of his third soldier meant. The guy would like to do the same for his eldest son, Ji Kong Hyun, what does he think about it? This is the personal information of the believers killed by the eldest son, Ji Kong Hyun. And the confession records of the third son, Ji Yun Hyung. Father couldn't believe his eyes. How could it be, did Kong Hyun really do that? The young lord says it's all true. If he doesn't believe him, he can call the head of the criminal justice department right now. Ji Woon Hwa says he still can't believe it. 
Is the guy planning schemes to reduce competition by any chance? The fourth had already been defeated. Now he is stuck in his house, unable to live or die, and is undergoing treatment. The battle for the throne began long ago. This is only his son, and the young lord can kill him whenever he feels like it, so don't let him have any unnecessary doubts. This guy doesn't understand why Ji Wunhua wants his son to be his disciple. What will he do if his son becomes a disciple of a religious leader and turns into an unprincipled man who once again murders the faithful members of their church? And does he want his family's name dishonored because of it? He needs to think hard about that. To prove what he said during the day, something will have to be sacrificed. The young lord shouted for the man to calm down. He hadn't come to him to fight a demonic swordsman. It won't be hard to cover up the son's sin with the power of the demonic sword family lord. He knows the man is not that kind of person. The young lord has a suggestion. Have him report the sins of his son, Ji Kong Hyun, directly to the religious leader during the Pasanj New Year ceremony. Maybe a confession in front of many people will protect the pride of the demon sword family. Let him choose because the fate of the demon sword family for hundreds of years depends on his conscience. Is his conscience more important than his face? Than the honor of a demonic sword family? Let everyone worship the demon lord. Let the divine heavenly demon live. That was it, he wanted to see his son honored as a god in a place he couldn't get to. His son that the man was so proud of and never doubted him. How is this possible? How the hell could he commit such an outrageous act? The third young lord watched what was happening and didn't understand why the demonic sword head was still hesitating with his decision. The demonic cult lord saw Goldie on the roof with the third young lord. Looks like he knows this woodsy. She has such a childlike body. Is she trying to say that she's very strong? Vladika said that this committee does not like bulky things. We can end their meeting with a brief introduction. Ji Wunhua wondered, can't we just leave it as it is? Did he really need to criticize his son and ruin his family's reputation? The young lord still watched and realized this was his only chance to tell all. Li Jongsan said that he accepts Ji Kong Hyun, the eldest son of the demon sword family as his disciple. However, Ji Wunhua's father shouted for him to wait. He has something to tell and it's a matter of life and death. It is with great regret that the man must inform him that his son has committed a very great crime. The demon lord shouted for him to shut up and summoned him to his palace. The third young lord was shocked to hear that Li Chong San wanted to take his son as an apprentice. However, the demon lord summoned them both, and the first thing he did was offer them a drink. The guy immediately gave up on this idea. Ji Wun Hui was surprised. How dare he refuse the demon lord? Li Jiangsan said that Ji Wun had shown courage. It must not have been easy for him to do such an act in front of so many people. He thanked the lord. The man asked what he had decided. What would he do with his son? Ji Wun Hua replied that even though it was his son, he feels that it's not in his power since he has become the demon lord's disciple. Li Chongsan said to the head of the demonic sword family, is he going to make him ask the same question twice? The man apologized, but the demon lord was still waiting for his answer. Ji Wun was father pondered, what decision to make? And even if one tried to reveal the leader's intentions, nothing would come of it. The man said he realized his great sin. But the boy is still his son. Parents are the only ones who can forgive their children. And as the head of the demonic sword family, he feels that they should treat them more strictly. So he wants to give him a punishment that fits his crime. The demon lord asked, did he really think so? He replied that he did. This child has become his disciple, however, he does not want to ignore his sincerity. He has eight disciples and he will personally deal with it without prying eyes. The man told him to take a bottle of his drink and thanked him for the glory of being a demon lord. Ji Wun Hui bowed and thanked him. Li Chongsan stood up from his throne and told the third young lord to follow him. The man asked him why he had personally visited the head of the demon sword? And why had he taken on this task? The young lord replied that there was no reason. It just had to be done. His heart made him do it. The demon lord said he liked that answer. He would be disappointed if the answer was filled with unnecessary rhetoric and reasons. There was another question that interested him. How on earth did the guy know? He was surprised by such a question. After all, it turns out that the Lord himself knew everything, 
but why kept it a secret? Li Chongsan replied that the man died with a stigma attached to him. And even until his death, this man prayed for his leader and humbly ended his life. The guy asked, if he knew who the real culprit was, why didn't he try to solve it? The Lord replied that this was true, but the answer lay in what the young Lord had just told him. He was surprised, for he understood nothing. Before, the boy had said that his heart had made him do it. On the whole, it doesn't matter. The man is not the type to try to please anyone. And it was the same that time. The man who died unjustly prayed for him until the day he died. Was he hoping for something by praying to him? Did this man want to clear his name? And did he even pray for a peaceful life in the afterlife? Probably not in that way. He just did it for him. All this man wanted was the well-being of the one God he believed in and followed all his life. And there can be no other intentions. Loyalty and faith expecting something in return is impure. The demon cares little for his own reputation. It was simply meant for him from the bottom of his heart. Anger for a man unjustly killed would rather tarnish his faith. That's why they call him God. God is not a being who delivers from injustice. It is enough just to know and understand. He may be human, but he is called a God. In this case, he has no choice but to strive to become a God. The boy was surprised, because Li Chong San was making the same effort as him. But he thinks that after he dies, he will be the same as he was when he was born. The young lord doesn't understand why the man accepted the eldest son of the demonic sword family's master as an apprentice. The demon lord replied that it was needed as basic school material, it was necessary. But, what does that mean? He said he'll explain everything now because the guy is in on it too. The man opened the boxes with his demonic energy, and asked him if he recognized them. He probably did, since the guy was there too. These are the boxes that were stolen by John I. L. Ryung when they were sent out with the transportation team. However, the transportation team took them back to express their anger. How did he know the young lord had left the school, and what was he doing? These herbs were not gathered to make elixirs. They are aimed at eliminating, weaponizing, and killing any element. He will experiment with these herbs. The concentration of true energy, the degree of mental clarity, and the threshold of desire. Taking all of these into consideration will destroy his humanity. And in the event of some failure, he will become a highly targeted departure. The young lord asked if he had said from the beginning that he would take him on as an apprentice specifically for this purpose. He replied that it was what the demon sword matriarch wanted. If he were asked to take his child as an apprentice, he would experiment on his own body. But, since that guy is a criminal deserving of punishment, there would be no harm in using him as experimental material. The guy asked what he would do after the experiment was over. The man replied that he would only find out then. However, he doesn't think the cooked fish can swim in the sea again. The young lord doesn't know if the eldest son will receive the punishment he deserves for the crime he committed, but what it will be is a horrible end. It's something a man shouldn't do, it's inhumane and he hopes that this experiment will fail. Perhaps it would be much better if he fought in endless despair. There's only one hope left in this swamp, and that's death. It's getting closer and closer. When Li Chongsan first brought the third child into the demonic cult, all he could feel was death. The boy instinctively understood the concept of death. After decades in the cult, the guy started to move away from even the concept. Who would have thought something like this would exist in reality? And it doesn't matter at all why he got angry. What matters is that this guy is even more violent and rude than before. When you gradually approach the devil, the reasons cease to matter. He gets violent and rude for no reason. But most likely, this guy is just a regular demon, just a strong one. The young lord said that he must have been rude for no reason. Li Jiangsan replied that he wasn't. The demon swordsman should be grateful to him. After all, they were able to preserve the family's legacy because of it. Soon the demon lord will give him his orders. He thinks the four of them are hungry enough, they should go outside and get some fresh air, and without even reporting it. It's perfect for clearing your nose. It sounds sloppy, but that's how it ended up, the young lord said to Master Guagu. The man thanked him, for a job well done. He doesn't know how the leader will deal with the real culprit, but it could be much better. After all, 
the real culprit will be fighting in a place worse than hell. He doesn't die and he doesn't live. Anyway, the guy says let him take care of the third son, Ji Young Hyun. He thinks it's time for him to leave. The man replied that regardless of the outcome, he was indebted to him. He would never forget that debt. It's a Wasin gem, a red-faced symbol. The man asked, is it still in Gango? When the right situation is created, the Avatar gem manifests its powerful absorption power, stealing a person's life force and expeditionary spirit. The magical power that Ji Kong Hyun uses to harm people has the same principle as the Waisian gem, but her power is far from her. The side effects were also deadly, so no one could hurriedly learn and use it. Therefore, Ji Kong Hyun asked his younger brother Ju Yong Hyun to learn it all together. Ji Yong Hyug had planned to immediately turn the demonic energy he absorbed into his own. However, due to the side effects of the magic attack, control was lost. In the end, he even targeted the Ink King Sword to absorb the demonic energy. In many ways, the Demon Lord sees the third young lord's advantage. The guy thought that he had almost lost his mind when he fought against Jiyo Yong Hyun. He seemed to be becoming rude and cruel himself. Then the young lord felt anger that would not subside. Isn't that what the color red is all about? Demon power, we have to do something about it. Li Jong San, this man is truly beyond imagination. There are about 200 characters in this text. Even without knowing the true nature of magic, he could see through the gaps in the martial arts using only the Baljan magical energy he had studied. Not only was it awesome, he even created a few tricks to complement his martial arts skills. Because of that, he was almost able to complete a Myung Jinmagong. It could not be said that it would be completed by combining it into one. Nothing can be added or taken away from it. If you are a great martial artist capable of opening even the illusory gates of hell, then you should have a corresponding dignity. The last four letters are Gai Zhizhang. From now on, this martial arts skill will be referred to as such. Gumagong plus Bonesetter 5 Early in the morning, the demon lord decided to do some art. General strategist Ho Yo Sung asked the lord why he was painting orchids today. The man ignored his question and asked if he was ready? The strategist replied that all he had to do was catch and eat him. When a tiger targets prey, it is sure to be followed by hunting cats eager for scraps. Li Jongseong said that these are not ordinary wild cats. Moreover, they can counterattack him. The general strategist replied that all he needed to do was to send a tiger that could kill all those wild cats. Who would be a match for that? Ho Yosung said that of course it would be better if the Senate itself took action, but they would say it was impossible. Or should we send three of the 408 commanders with him? For example, those in the top 10. The Lord replied that that was also impossible. They have a lot of work to do. He plans to select a few and send them to the Northern Sea soon. The general strategist asked, does he want to touch it? He didn't expect it to be this far. It takes one talent that is perfect for him. Isn't there a master who has clearly demonstrated his abilities despite having an accident recently? Li Jongseong gave him the assignment. Ho Yo Song said he would leave the matter to the three dukes. 